Hello, everybody, and welcome to day number one of the finals for AWC. My name is Aya. I am your host here with Zico, Venruki, and Supertees. If you missed yesterday's games, Ven, how did those Gauntlets game, games go? I mean, we had EU, we had NA, we had some Red Paladin, some Fist Weavers. It was a crazy day of games. It definitely was. I, I would say the meta changed a lot from the initial kind of cup stages of the tournament, and we're seeing a lot more Retribution Paladins and kind of the early stages of the Gauntlet. You saw more matchups like this, a lot of rogues, um, resto shamans, stuff like that. But as we kind of progressed through the bracket, it was kind of the rise of the Ret Paladin, the Demonology Warlock, and it made for some really exciting games. Um, I, I feel like the, the performance that we saw from some of these teams um, you know, in North America from Liquid uh, was absolutely stellar. I mean, you could tell these guys have practiced uh, in this meta and done a really, really phenomenal job shaping up on all their different classes, all the different compositions to really bring like a stellar performance uh, for the finals. And then, of course, for Admiral Esports, they also managed to make it through the gauntlet in Europe. We'll be seeing them uh, more today, uh, bringing in some really strong cleave compositions with Lizzo and Swapsy. Uh, I'm really curious to see how far they can take this comp today. Yeah. As am I, but here's just like some of those moments that we saw from yesterday. Only two teams did make it out from each region, one from each region. We got Admirals Esports representing EU and Team Liquid representing NA, and now they're going to be fighting against the rest of the pool, Sid, today. Yeah, I mean, Admirals Esports was really impressive. Like, Dragonlands Roulette, we watched some games there just a second ago. Uh, they had 3-0, 3-0, looking like they were dominating. Thought that there was going to be some opportunities with that mage composition that we just saw, but they just got absolutely destroyed by Admirals Esports. Then they were faced up against Team Hoo Hoo. Uh, we saw that Demonology Warlock uh, brought in here with the Evoker, and Vanost had a lot of really interesting plays on the Evoker. You know, those resets on mobility cooldowns, like the portal for the Warlock, moving the Warlock around with Rescue, knocking the enemies away that actually made me wonder if any teams will be utilizing an evoker healer in these types of matchups when there's a warrior or a rep paladin together something like echo which is the first series of the day meh x has spent a lot of time on the preservation evoker and i honestly think that it looked really strong against a melee cleave composition like this uh, and unlike um that team, they will be able to play Mage Warlock with a dragon. So Mage Warlock with the added mobility that Preservation could add to the team uh, might you know, become an answer for the Rep Paladins that were becoming more and more meta. The first series of NA was Silver Sentinels uh, and Ascension, uh, and Silver Sentinels still stuck to their guns. They played their Rogue Mage Priest. And they were able to take this series. I believe it was 3-0 overall. Whaler really put up a really good game on this hook point match where he was like out of mana for so long, trying to give his team a couple more seconds in the match. Uh, to get them going and keep them going through. You could tell that they really wanted it, um, but ultimately Silver Sentinels was able to overpower them uh, and win with their Rogue Mage Priest. Absolutely. I just can only hope that we're going to get some of those types of plays today. And, you know, Zico, we saw some interesting developments as well yesterday in terms of like some of the racials that we saw people playing, some, some different builds maybe coming into the mix. Was there anything in particular that stood out to you yesterday along those lines? Uh, I mean, yesterday we saw our first uh, Volpera, which was pretty interesting. And uh, I mean, uh, Volpera is a pretty good counter to uh, Demo Warlocks. So um, I think that's the line of play. So we might see that more today. Um, more picks. We saw some interesting gear choices as well. Um, on some of the Red Paladins, we saw some differences between like Calvish Red and Maz. Um, I think Maz was uh, using some uh, a PvE gear that we don't typically see. He was using a pair of legs. Um, I forget the name of them, but uh, when you attack a player, uh, you get a haste buff, and then when you swap targets, it keeps stacking. So uh, he was using that to kind of min-max his damage, and I really feel like that's a cool thing. Uh, you know, a lot of these teams, especially the ones that didn't play yesterday in the gauntlet, they've just had all of this time to kind of prepare. So for them, it's going to be really key uh, to kind of come up with some strategies, come up with some different gear choices, builds, uh, and all that good stuff uh, to make sure that they can actually get the wins today, man. Yeah, I think it's interesting you bring up like some of the gear choices that teams are using, some of the racial choices. I feel like if you were a team that had already kind of solidified your position in that top three and you're just watching the gauntlet, you kind of get the added benefit of just seeing what all of these teams are doing. Uh, maybe there's some strategies that they're implementing that you can kind of pick up, some gearing choices that you can pick up. And I feel like it was a bit of an edge there for those teams that got to just kind of enjoy the games and see how everyone kind of evolved and came up with different strategies um, over the coming weeks for that gauntlet. 
Yeah, if you want to check it out Pretty yourself, basic. you can go to awc.gcd.tv and they kind of update as we do go into those games. But our first one, speaking of, it's we're just starting right off the bat with a pretty big one. It's Echo versus Admirals Esports, Sid. Yeah, and this is one that could either maybe dispel the Red Paladin meta um, or just kind of more solidify its position in terms of its strength because uh, Echo is not a team that I would say is like been like a Red Paladin focused team. I think they're much more focused on how can we counter it uh, and how can we deal with it? And they have unique tools to deal with it. The Evoker Healer, like I just spoke about earlier, I think could be one key component. Uh, the fact that they have uh, Raikou for Mage, and they can also bring in Chanimal on Warlock. Like, uh, I mean, we know how much experience Chanimal has with Mage Warlock and, and Dragon Melee DPS around. So if there was a team that could beat these Rep Paladins and, and kite them and drag them out, I, I would think that it would be them. But at the same time, Admirals Esports, they don't have to only play Rep Paladin comps. Like, they, they can flex off of that. So this first series should be very intriguing to see, like, what types of compositions each side is feeling are more potent and where do they adjust, move Moving forward in the series if it's not working for their side uh, it's gonna be a very this series could like decide maybe even the whole day like this could set a precedent for other teams in other regions like i'm thinking where's gordy they can play similar comps to echo and if those comps work into the rep paladins then maybe where's gordy starts tearing it up uh, in north america as a result Absolutely. And Echo is the team formerly known as Pogger. So it's a bit of a change here. But Admirals Esports, that's the EU team that came out of the gauntlet. We saw them play that Red Warrior Warlock or Warrior, excuse me, composition. Is that not something that you expect them to play in the blind side? Um, sorry, Echo is playing Red Warrior? No, Admirals. Admirals Esports, uh, they could, but if they're expecting Mage Lock, then maybe they mind games them and play something else. This first series, the first blind pick, it, it's kind of just like everything is up in the air we might see ellie lock versus mage lock we could see maybe waz locks in a rogue expecting an ellie shaman on the other team or something um to deal with their mage lock so like really almost any combination could come out of this first game i'm expecting with the confidence that admirals esports had off of the gauntlet that they'll probably play ret warrior unless something else has been going on in war games uh, just because it looked so good in situations where i wasn't really even expecting it to look as good as it did all right, well, let's check it out. This is going to be a big one. Sounds like there's lots of mind games going on behind the scenes. It's game number one. Both of these teams also starting off on a clean slate. We're in the upper bracket here. So double elimination today. It's Admirals Esports versus Echo, game number one. All right, let's see here. The, the blind pick is going to be a huge deal here. What are they going to go with? You know, Echo, they've kind of been keeping their cards close to their chest so far. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if they decide to go with that mage lock. They're going to go with the rogue lock, actually. And look at that. Admiral Esports expecting that mage lock that Super Tease was talking about. Uh, getting that, uh, you know, good matchup here for Echo, I would say. This is what they wanted. They wanted to lock in that rogue against that Ellie Shaman. All right, so they're respecting uh, the possibilities that they were going to counter their mage lock. So in, in our minds here, Echo getting the edge here. Interesting that Next is also playing a Preservation Evoker uh, healer. We're not seeing any Shamans or Mistweavers, despite how prevalent they were before. Uh, Waz at the moment struggling to connect to a target, just taking a lot of damage and just sitting at the pillar with his team, waiting for Channel maybe to get some Immolates out before making a push, but he's immediately intercepted in midfield. He's just going to die? He's at 10% max, struggling to keep him going. Time dilation cloak and trinket and despite you know maybe getting the theoretical edge here a rogue into an elemental shaman is typically not a great matchup with an evoker to move that ellie shaman around the map with the demonic gateway to kite on the map the rogue is going to get exposed quite a lot yeah, it's going to be tough for Waz here now as well to get aggressive without having that safety of the cloak. And you can already see next here, lifting Jamie to the safety of that pillar. Swaps it all getting coiled. So is Jamie here. And Waz will manage to reconnect. They're using that shadow mouth, getting the cheap shot onto next. Can they find the sleep there? Matt pushing in for it, but not able to land it just yet. And, uh, you know, a lot of aggression coming out here from Echo. And that's kind of the name of the game. They get the gouge there. Can they follow it up? They do it land a fear. But Jamie, Jamie is there with the tremor totem as well. Channel now loading up a lot of damage there on that destruction warlock and Swapsy uh, on that demo warlock is going to be able to kind of have a lot of the uh Peels, a lot of shutdown, a lot of disruption uh, with that spec. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of how these Warlocks uh, fare against each other. I actually think Chan might have reflected the fear of Swapsy right there. Waz now once again back on target, but he gets caught up in a stun. Could be danger time for Waz here. Caught up in the lightning lasso as well. Fear onto Chanimal, but man, not in crowd control right now, man. Just to keep him alive. Another gouge coming out here. Another kidney shot, smoke bomb, big damage onto Jamie. He will respect it and trade out the Astro Shift as well as his Trinket. 
Uh, now, the main problem with Preservation Evoker is your mana bar. Look at Met X. He's almost 30% mana at the two-minute mark here, and Ellie Warlock damage is not going to slow down. We can see Jamie pulled away with that rescue. Waz knocked up in the air. Now, Met X is trying to move Waz to his target, so they do have mirrored Evoker mobility, oh. so maybe if they can keep utilizing this to reconnect, Rewind comes out, but a stun onto Waz. Is Met X ready for the hit? It looks like he's picking him up so far. So good. Channel just not able to get enough damage out during this kidney shot, it looks like. It, Jamie's just easily sitting through that. They don't even have to time dilate. Now they're trying to ramp up some damage, gets sheared on the incinerate, and looking for a fear, not able to find it. Chaos Bolt, not able to find it. Spell locked and just shut down. So many interrupts on the Channel, so many mobility spells to kite Waz and stun him. They're doing a great job of controlling Echo so far. Max Trinkets of Fear, Waz cloaks at the same time. A bit of a panic moment. Waz is still dying through cloak. Channel Trinkets out of the stun, trying to get some aggressive support here, but Waz is just simply dying at this point. He's forced to wrap around the corner on the pillar with Met X. Max looking for a sleepwalk, trying to fake an interrupt. Doesn't find the fake. You can see Earthquakes coming down onto the pillar to cleave the team. Triple Shadow Fury out from Swapsy. Everybody getting destroyed at the moment. They're trying to push out. Met X wants to bring Waz, but he just can't. He's just dead behind the pillar. He's just literally it's just dying to a pet behind the pillar right now. Max finally gets him back into the fight. Waz is going to shadow step in. Gets knocked on the kidney shot. Met, now next pulls Jamie away. Met, Met pulls Waz into Jamie. Gouging up next. Just immediate reactions. There's a big window right now to kill Jamie. There's no trinket on next there's no wall for jamie for 30 seconds this next kidney shot could win the game but if it doesn't i think it might be lights out for waz yeah waz well, gonna be in a lot of trouble here he's got no cloak of shadows no vanish for a little bit here but jamie also doesn't have any cooldowns next mana is not looking too good meh still has a little bit of a mana edge right now but waz can he stay on target here can he get aggressive he gets the kidney shot onto jamie a lot of damage coming in here from meh as well with those disintegrate shanimal as well free casting right now trying to land some crowd control jamie dropping to about 50 percent hp he has the astral shift in just one second but next has no mana left he might need to just use it right here onto the damage of waz and he will trade out the astral shift is it going to be enough echo push Pushing for the win here. Can they take down Waz though? Waz catching one final heal. Man, now with no mana left, Jamie Gates to the opposite side of the map. Can Jamie stay alive here and recover? Waz now dropping to 50%. It's going to be a bit of a race here. Jamie caught up in the kidney shot. The death mark is ready as well, but Waz just can't get offensive. He's dying behind the pillar. Man has nothing to keep him alive with. And right now, it's going to have to be Channel putting the team on his shoulders and trying to carry this game. Number one is going to be a very, very important game here. Oh. Jamie crossing the map once again, dropping super low. Next is just waddling after him. Jamie forced to heal himself here. Last Finally one. does manage to top himself. The lightning last comes out. Was trinketing. They get the gouge on. Five seconds. Well. Four Waz, seconds. One second, away, one second away from the cloak, but it's not going to be enough. Waz going down there behind the pillar, and it is going to be Admiral Esports straight out of the gauntlet all the way to 1-0 here in the grand finals. Oh man, if they can win this matchup, like this is what Echo wanted. They wanted the rogue into the elemental shaman. This was supposed to be the answer for this wizard cleave. So if it doesn't work, like Admiral's Esports could just play LED Demo the whole round then. Uh, and Because I can't think of another comp other than maybe Met X plays a healer that has a bit more mana efficiency and they can out mana the other evoker. But I mean, this was so close towards the end of the match, like these coils into Waz, the control they had on Channel, like Channel, having played against him myself and uh, like older tournaments in Warlords of Draenor, I never even got a cast off against him. He would just shut me out. But in this matchup, he was the one that would get like shut out completely. He just couldn't get anything going. Jamie and Swapsy just look at it. Channel tries to make a move here. He spell locks Jamie. Jamie line of sights his scales bolt on the pillar, stuns Channel, prevents him from hitting him. Jamie repositions away and just Channel is getting feared. He's not able to get anything going for his team because he's under so much control. Th uh, this matchup was played really well on the side of Admirals Esports, considering it looked like they invested all their time into Ret Paladin. The fact that they can also play the Spell Cleave uh, at this level as well is, is going to work wonders for them overall in the tournament. Um, a very impressive showing for a Game 1 on their part. Yeah, certainly so. And uh, we're going to head into the next one very soon, but... Echo, I mean, how, how close would you say that was to for Echo being able to get that win? Do you think that it's going to be kind of a, a difficult series for them for the rest of this series, Sid? Uh, I mean, I maybe the small map, if they get a like a hook point, this is you know more winnable match. But I feel like they'll just play Ret Warrior on a small map. And then it won't matter. They'll have to play Mage Lock. And yeah. I don't know if Mage Lock will guaranteed win on a small map. So Admirals Esports could actually 3-0 this um, if, if they navigate those small maps and switch their comp and adapt appropriately. Yeah, I mean, I could see. I don't know who you guys predicted for this, but uh, I, I feel like Admirals Esports, I mean, especially with how they played yesterday, how they sort of adapted to, uh, you know, the current state of the game. This team is, to me, kind of going to go very far, I feel like. 
I'm are we re- are we revealing our predictions or are we saving that for I don't later? Know, are we allowed? Are I, we allowed I mean, to? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna commentate or curse it. I'm not gonna jinx it. We'll, okay. we'll hold okay. it. We'll hold it off until later. But I think I'm feeling pretty yeah. good about mine so far. Um, okay. Admirals <laughs> Esports <laughs> up one zero in this series. We're going to a big map. So Echo are trying to set up either for a Rogue Lock or maybe a Wizard Mirror. Maybe what about a Demon Hunter into a Warlock Ellie instead of a Rogue like like a Warlock Demon Hunter. Would that not for, work into Demo for Ellie what? for Echo? Like Raikou comes in on yeah. a Demon Hunter. Yeah, what do they? What would that? How would that work against them then? Um, I mean, Demon Hunter Warlock is just really tanky into spell cleave mm-hmm. in my, in my mind. So it depends on how much time they've invested. I don't feel like a lot of teams have invested, even though I think Demon Hunter is actually pretty good. I, I don't think that a lot of teams have really invested into it at the moment. Admirals Esports, they're taking their time here. I'm imagining they blind lock Ellie. Yeah, there's no way because they won yeah. on the grand. There's no way they wouldn't just do it again here on Ashamane's Fall. And so Echo are the ones that it's like, okay, what are you going to play? Because you could yeah. play a ret comp. Would they play a ret comp? They could play like I, Waz has been playing red. I think. I think we're either seeing rogue merge or rogue lock again from uh, from Echo. Uh, I feel like this is kind of the matchup that they wanted. They, so, in my mind, Echo wanted to lock in or uh, kind of threatening to lock in mage lock into the red cleave. Admiral Esports doesn't want that matchup, at least not on the larger map. So they lock in the Ellie lock to kind of beat the mage lock with that. And then Echo kind of anticipates that they're not going to lock in. Yeah, we're just going to see the same thing. Uh, and uh, that's why that's why I said in the first game as well, I think this is the matchup that Echo actually wanted because they don't want to play Wizard Mirror with mage into Ellie lock. Like you just can't really play the game as the mage too much there. Uh, it's going to be really hard to actually get, you know, your damage off, get your frost bolts off, etc. with so many interrupts and so much durability on Admiral Esports side. So for them, it's either Rogue Mage and kill the Ellie Shaman or Rogue Lock and kill the Ellie Shaman. And right now, Rogue Mage, I mean, we saw it a bunch yesterday as well. It just didn't look too good um, in the current meta. I think it's hard as well if you're playing Arcane Mage to actually get your damage off and to be effective in the match. So I think this makes sense. This is just the Echo saying, okay, we're going to do the same thing and we're going to just do it better. Uh, they have a b- bigger map to work with. But I feel like Jamie in that last game did such a great job as well. Like we, I feel like we don't talk enough about Jamie uh, because there's so many good allies as well in Europe that we, you know, we're always talking about Zipai, etc. But I really feel like Jamie had a great game last game, constantly crossing the map, really never overlapping anything with Next. Next always as well, uh, carrying him with that rescue me from that dragon and making sure that he's constantly building that distance. And every time they cross the map like that, it allows Swapsy to do that shutdown that we saw uh, to get those fears out, to disrupt the team while they're crossing the map. And it just uh, makes them have that crazy pressure that we saw. Here we go. Ashman's fall. I'm really excited. If Echo can't win here, I think it's a 3 0 for Admirals Esports. Um, and that was so close. Like, I mean, what are the little things that they can improve? It's just they need to get Channel able to be casting during Kidney Shot. I, I feel like if they don't have Warlock support on the stun, then the target's just going to line a sight. It's going to ground. It's going to shear. And Channel's not going to be able to get uh, enough damage out. And on this big map, it's going to be tough to stay on target. Jamie's running that Gust of Wind Elemental Shaman. Next, pre deep breath to Ooh. immune getting sapped. And he gets combat. So he keeps his little shroud. So he's going to be able to avoid crowd control for a bit. But Waz actually just double cheap shots off the shroud, goes for the full blind, gets the clean opener. Next, immediately trinkets the blind. Maybe killing the evoker could be an option. That's something we saw in the past, with, at least with subtlety rogues. I'm not sure if assassination could do the same here. But the evoker having no trinket on the side of Admiral's esports could be a big move for a swap in the future. Absolutely. Or they could get another long CC chain, but uh, they're going to need to cross crowd control Jamie. He has that tremor totem available. So if they can kidney shot Jamie and get a fear onto Nax or a sleep, then uh, all of a sudden it's going to be a really, really nice situation for them to be. And they're starting up the chain here. There's a gouge into the fear onto Nax. What is Jamie going to do? Jamie's on the outside. They're swapping. Big damage coming out here. Nax actually kind of wasting his Emerald Communion there a little bit. Swapsy actually had him. Uh, with that Shadow Fury, he made sure to shut down that Chaos Bolt, but this is a high pressure situation, this is the Grand Finals, you know, there's $300,000 on the line, and all of a sudden, you know, you can make those kind of misplays there, next now, not going to have that Emerald Community, so I would say that was a very successful swap, actually, for Echo, they, really, they didn't really invest much, and here we go, Smoke Bomb coming out, they don't want to pull the trigger on that Death Mark, though, next now, they're in a sleep, they might go for the late Death Mark, next actually getting tremored out of that one from Jamie, so now they're getting, working through the checklist, they did not get Jamie's trinket however on that smoke bomb so if they had jamie's trinket plus the tremor totem then all of a sudden jamie would be in a lot of trouble because they can go for that kind of safe kidney shot and death mark and actually get a little bit of value out of that one sid 
Oh, they're swapping damage to X here, but Death Mark's available. No trinket on next. Kidney shot onto Jamie. Are they going to ship it here? Waz is getting blasted, knocked away on the kidney shot. Next gets Dream Projection up for a big heal over time effect. Gets gouged on his Spirit Bloom, but Emerald Communion's coming out from X. His team is stable. They're pushing for the kill on Jamie. Can they kill him? He's still got Astral Shift to sleepwalk onto next. No Tremor Totem. Stone Form comes out before the Death Mark. He walls on top of it. He's still just dying. Next is really struggling. Now there's no Stone Form and there's no Astral Shift and there's Death Mark. That used to be an auto kill as an assassination. But Waz needs to be careful and not die before getting to that point. He's stunned up for one more second. He's got Cloak of Shadows. He's rooted up, and Jamie needs to start avoiding Waz at all costs here. If he just Waz just cloaks offensively with the next kidney, I think it's game over. Does he know that he doesn't have Stone Form? He should ship Death Mark. They have to crowd control the Evoker. Oh, they don't crowd control next. He cauterizing flames the Death Mark and totally shuts it out on that push. Now Waz is getting blasted once again. Is he going to go down? Cloak at 30%. Overlapped with Time Dilation. Next has a slight mana advantage, and Waz is still dying through Cloak and Time Dilation. Man, it's into a full fear. Waz is trying to run away, but those pets are all over him at the moment. That time dilation stacking up. Max is going to pull Waz back to the pillar. Gets feared again. He's got that rescue shield. Manages to recover. Channel repositioning, but now they're getting Earthquake aoe They're getting Felguard aoe and this is just going to cost them more mana. And next, I think he's trying to sit for a drink. Waz Shadow steps over to the Fel Obelisk. Kills it off. Stuns up Jamie. Jamie gets pulled back to the pillar with the rescue. Met is locked on his fire breath. There's going to be no purge on the hots. Next is reloading a shroud to immune the blind. Waz needs to figure out a way to get rid of the shroud. I think it's Channel with spam fear is really the only thing that can get rid of it because he can't blind next is just immune to cc for so long right now which means his team can play so freely yeah they can play very aggressively Wes is no cloak as well they're swapping over to swapsy right now but he's just gonna death pack that and be completely fine now they're going back over onto jamie here with the shadow man they're getting a decent amount of pressure onto jamie still doesn't have his astral shift he doesn't have his stone blood, fire blood ratio either and you can see Waz now once again uh, on the back foot taking a little bit of damage but he gets topped off jamie now once again as well uh, around 50 percent hp here next with no mana left man has a huge mana lead and that can actually be the way that they decide to win this one on the side of echo if they can just stop next from drink uh, from drinking keep up the pressure onto jamie that could actually be the win here big damage coming in onto jamie once again and next has really no mana to actually keep him alive the pressure is slowly but surely sinking in right now emerald community comes out and that's going to give him a little bit of mana to work with but was gets blasted here he goes for the defensive blind there onto swapsy should be enough to keep him alive but man also starting to struggle in the mana department here i don't know who's going to take this one sid it's just as close as game number one 20 seconds to cloak of shadows was was four seconds away from it when he died in game one is he going to meet the same fate in game number two? Time dilation activates. He's evasion. He's dodging the pet attacks, but Jamie's dying. Jamie's going to gate across the field. Next is chasing after him, but next is zero mana. Manages to top him off here in this moment. Now Waz is stunned. Four seconds away from Cloak. Is this going to be a replay of game one? Cloak comes up in one second. He's got death mark. There's no trinket for Jamie. If they can crowd control next and stop his cauterizing flame, they could kill Jamie, but Jamie's just kiting. He's letting Swapsy carry the game. If Jamie just can prevent Waz from connecting, Swapsy will kill his target. Jamie knocks Waz away with that unleashed shield and now gets him rooted up. Max pulls him back into the fight. Jamie thunderstorms, but he actually thunderstorms, thunderstorms him into the hill. Waz might be able to reconnect. The lightning lasso, are they oh. going to kill him through Emerald Communion? Lava Bursts are flying in in game two. Cloak of Shadows is forced, and they're going for the kill. Kidney shot onto Jamie. They need to get crowd control on next, but he's immune. He's got his shroud up. They can't get any crowd control. He's going to easily heal through mm -hmm. that kidney shot once again. Tyrant is out from Swapsy. He's got a mortal coil. He could send that at any point. Waz is already down at half. Matt has absolutely zero mana. He's dying to the pets behind the pillar, but Swapsy is getting swapped to Channel soloing Swapsy right now channel hard carrying is he going to be able to finish him swapsy line of sights was his line of sighting they're just trying to stay alive right now on both sides channel has to 1v2 and it looks like the fell guard of swapsy has to 1v2 was and met at this point was is charging in this is a brave point to charge in he gets knocked back with the unleashed shield he's oh. stunned on a shadow step he's getting totally shut down time dilation activates they need to win with this time dilation they need to kill jamie right now max knows that he's charging in to go for the kill oh. was he's not safe he will go down and this is a 2-0 lead for Admirals Esports. From the gauntlet to match point right now, Admiral Esports really showcasing, you know, yesterday we saw their melee cleaves and today we are seeing Jamie tagged in. He is looking hot. Entire Admiral Esports is looking absolutely devastating to play against. Those final moments, we're going to need to rewatch that because that was so scary. Swapsy uh, having kind of a mind game with Channel there at the end, uh, trying to get that tyrant out. And when he finally does, Waz is just kind of trapped at the pillar. Channel trying to go in for the hero play trying to go for the 1v2 at the end there but not able to uh, close the game out and all of a sudden 
and Waz kind of makes a last ditch effort with that Emerald Communion. And this is the moment right here where the Tyrant is out and Chanimo pushes in, trying to 1v2 on one side, but look at the Demonic Tyrant on, on, on the other side, actually just despawn there. And as soon as it despawns, Waz goes back in there, tries to get aggressive, but as soon as he does, another Feldstun coming in there from Swapsy uh, on his former teammate. They connect with the Kidney Shot and look at Next there as well. As soon, he doesn't have mana, but he goes for that deep breath right there, trying to uh, just kind of shut down the situation, trying to disrupt there and just peel for his team and kind of counter aggress because, you know, at that point, it's just offense is your best defense, really. And uh, all of a sudden, we're going to see Echo down 2 0 here to Admiral Esports. Whew. This is, this is, uh, the rough game right now for Echo, but Admirals Esports really coming on top of this series here. Um, you know, Ellie Shaman, that's not a class that we've really talked about too much. I mean, what what has happened to the spec recently, Zika, that has made it so strong? Or is it just because it's Jamie right now? I feel like Ellie, ever since Dragonflight has, uh, has came out, it's been considered really strong uh, overall in Europe. Um, the reason why I think uh, it, the, the thing that kind of made it weaker or the thing that kind of kept Elemental Shaman in check was the fact that uh, Asa Rogue and especially you know Rogue Mage in the previous uh, meta was very, very popular. And that was one of the few things that actually could shut it down. Uh, you know, a, a Kidney Shot plus a Mage with, you know, Kleptomania and doing, uh, you know, a lot of burst damage was one of the few ways to actually shut that spike down. Then moving into 10.07, uh, Red Paladins with their Judgment of the Pure basically deleted Ellie Shamas from the game. Uh, and what Judgment of the Pure does is, well, it got nerfed recently, but what it did before the nerf was um, when you judge, you dispel everyone's uh, flame shocks, essentially. So Ellie Shaman had really tough time to actually get their damage out. Uh, but now that Judgment of the Pure got nerfed and uh, rogues are a little bit more dialed back, we're starting to see Ellie Shaman maybe come back uh, a little bit here. I mean, this is the first one we've seen so far uh, this weekend, but Jamie's making it look very, very good. And I don't think this is the matchup that Admiral Esports wanted. This is They wanted to just get a quick win into Mage Lock and then maybe play the counterpicking game, but all of a sudden they find themselves in this situation where they're just looking super good on this Ellie Lock and they can just confidently uh, lock it in blind. And for Echo, I feel like there's only one more line of play that they can go for, and that is to lock in, either, well, I was going to say to lock in the same thing, or to bring in Raikou and try Rogue Mage. Uh, they're going to go for the same thing here, and uh, again, you know, the maps have been good for Echo, I would say. Last map was pretty solid, uh, you know, large map, a lot of reset potential. They had a mana lead, but uh, on Tiger's Peak, it's going to be kind of similar size to Nagrand. Uh, and on Nagrand, it was a very close game, so I would still not count them out. Both of the games that they lost were really close, but Admiral Esports, you know, coming in fourth, like actually coming in, uh, what were they? They were fifth, actually, right, were, in, the, yeah. in the official ranking. Uh, so coming in here now and potentially beating first seed, going to the semis immediately if they win here, that's huge. Yeah. Well, Echo, I mean, some, you know, from an audience pers perspective, Supertease, some may wonder, like, oh, you know, Echo, they've lost with the same comp twice in a row. Now they're locking it in once again when Admirals is on match point. What would you say to that? I mean, they're getting really close, but I, I, I don't know if close is close enough, right? Um, I, I would have liked to have seen the series played out of Wazoo's subtlety. Because that's what they were doing before into preservation evokers was just swapping them as subtlety road, just hundred owing them over and over. And I think that that could be really effective um, in this particular matchup. So I wonder if they lose this, if they rematch them later on in the tournament, that if they do try subtlety rogue instead of assassination. Right now, Jamie is just utilizing so many mobility tools. He has gust of wind to jump away from the rogue. He has thunderstorm to knock the rogue away. He's running unleash shield to knock and root the rogue away. He's getting stuns on Waz. He's getting moved away by red. Rescue, Waz is getting rooted, Waz is getting feared. They're using everything in their toolkit. He's got Frost Shock root. Like they're just aiming everything on don't let Waz connect to his target. Um, and it's making it really tough for him to get there. And eventually Swapsy's damage will take Waz out uh, if they can make the gauntlet long enough for them to connect. They get a kidney shot here, but Waz is immediately thunderstormed. He's stunned. He can't get any pressure. He's trying to bone spike. He shadow steps, but now Jamie could use gateway or get rescued and pulled away. He gets coiled at the moment. Next needs to get ready for the damage here. Time dilation is going to come out. Now this is a coil on a Waz. Jamie gates. Next is going to gate. Channel's on the other side of it. Meets him with a double infernal stun. Waz shadow steps in again. 
Is Next going to use the rescue to pull Jamie away here on the next kidney shot is what I'm wondering. Next is repositioning with the hover, getting into midfield. X is right on top of him. They're playing really aggressive on the side of Echo right now, just trying to dogpile the enhance the elemental shaman, looking for a sleepwalk, finds the sleepwalk onto Next with no trinket. Jamie's in a kidney shot. We can see damage coming out from Max with those disintegrates as well. Max is playing a really offensive game, but this is going to expose him. He's going to get crowd controlled in that full fear. He trades out Emerald Communion to heal up his allies during that fear. Now repositioning again, still playing aggressive. This is confidence when you're on match point. Goes for the sleepwalk. Unfortunately, it's on diminishing return. Is it going to be long enough, though, to execute a kill? They have good pressure from Chanimal right now on both Swapsy and Jamie. Jamie getting rescued back to this side of the gateway. And look at Waz. It's just all about Waz, and is he able to connect to his target? Now he's kidney shot. Jamie, he's stunned. He gets knocked. Fortunately, that knock wasn't too far away. He positioned himself against the wall. He didn't get knocked the full distance. Stormkeeper's coming out from Jamie, but Swapsy and Jamie, they're getting cut down right now. Chanimal is doing so much more damage right now, but at the same time, Swapsy is turning it around with Met X, struggling to heal both himself and Waz. Yeah, still a lot of pressure here, and you can see Man of Max getting a little bit taxed right now. Uh, somewhat even still with Max X. Jamie's still doing a good job here, Kyrie, but Waz does once again connect with that rescue kidney shot combo. Max is there again with the disintegrate gouge coming out onto next. Swapsy looking for the fear gets shut down though by uh, oh sorry, Chanimal going for the fear gets shut down by Swapsy. Swapsy now getting the fear onto Chanimal. Swapsy winning uh, that little exchange right there, and now once again it's going to be the lightning lasso into the coil combo there onto Waz. Still has his cloak of shadows, still not in a lot of trouble just yet, and. Uh, so far, I think both teams are holding on to their defensives a lot better. But as I say that, Waz immediately has to use his Cloak of Shadows there. The commentator curse coming in. But now Kidney Shot onto Jamie. Gouge onto Next. It breaks though. Full blind onto Next. He's going to trink it out there. And that's going to be Channel once again in an Axe Toss stun. Waz now in an Axe Toss as well. So obviously providing a lot of control so far on that Warlock. And uh, so far, it's still looking pretty decent here for Admiral Esports. They got the Cloak of Shadows there. They didn't have to trade any of Jamie's defensive. They didn't have to trade anything from Swapsy. Uh, Jamie actually did use his Fireblood Racial. Next also did Trink at the blind. So potential there to maybe see another swap onto Next. But they go for the Vanish Cheap Shot for Setup. And then they go for the Gouge into the Sleepwalk here. Big damage onto Jamie. What are they going to do? Was actually oh. might just get blasted here. He trinkets out. He's stuck behind the pillar. He gets uh, Smoke Bomb comes out. Gets the DR stun there from the pet as well. And Waz once again uh, survives by the skin of his teeth. You do not want to use that Smoke Bomb defensively. But he might have died if he didn't. And Admiral Esports looking more and more comfortable so far in the match. Another kidney show. Waz is the one taking the brunt end of it as Max is struggling. His Emerald Communion 40 seconds away. Cloak 58 seconds away. There's not a lot of defense for Waz here and it's match point. The pressure is on. You cannot afford any mistakes. Waz is retreating away but now they're stacking up. The pet is cleaving them down. Jamie's on the right side. Swapsy's on the left. There's nowhere they can hide. Chanimal is trying to solo Swapsy at the moment. Is he going to be able to take him down? Waz is still struggling. Big Living Flames coming up from Meh. Waz gets knocked away with that Unleashed Shield into the root. Not able to connect. And a big Earth Shock. Half of his health gone there. Knocks him on the kidney shot. Shadow steps back. Do they have any mobility to pull him away. Waz is actually the one just retreating, wants to wait until they have a safety net. They don't want to make a big push with no trinket, which is a wise move by Echo, but the longer they wait, the more damage they're going to take. And now Swapsy down low, trades out the dark pack, trying to reposition, pull Waz out in the open. Lava burst lottery right now from Jamie as he's procking on Waz. He's going to have to duck around the corner to the left here. And Dream Projection comes out for next. Big Hots onto his team. He still has Emerald Communion, but now so does Met X. They're going to feel confident. They're rescuing Waz in on top of Jamie onto the high ground of the balcony. Jamie trying to get a Stormkeeper and go for pressure onto Waz. And it could be answered with the time dilate. Met X is going to wall and renewing Blaze as he expects himself to be the target in this position. Next has absolutely zero mana. This is the opportunity for Echo. They need to swarm. They need to stay on top of Jamie and finish this match before they run out of defensive. They've got so many to trade. Next is forced to use his Emerald Communion during that kidney shot. Keeps his team stabilized. Who is Admiral's Esports going to attack? I think going after Met X it might be better than Whoa. Waz. They get Cloak immediately, and he's dying through it to the pet damage. Met X is really struggling here, even despite having the mana advantage. Now caught into a stun. Is Waz going to fall here on match point? Is Echo going to the lower bracket? He's ducking for cover, moving towards the bottom side of the balcony, but he's still getting cleaved. Channel's getting cleaved. This could be a cross kill from either side at this point. Channel will force to wall through the passive pressure of Admiral's Esports, but next has no cooldowns left. Jamie's Trinket comes up in one second. He's going to Astral Shift immediately. Fire Breath Exchanging. Waz, no click of shadows. Meg gets wind sheared on his cast. Waz vanishes from the fight. Is it going to be enough? Jamie's still struggling to stay alive. Channel, can he finish the match for his team? He's actually ducked for cover on the bottom side. Waz is mounting up. Waz is just abandoning the push. <laughs> Restealth and Channel.
Chanimal is carrying the day right now. Chanimal is owning them at the moment. Port's on top of him, but he almost goes down at the same time trying to make that power play. Next gate's away. Waz is now finally back on top of Jamie. No trinket, no wall. Next kidney shot could win the game. There's no cauterizing flame. He can send the death mark. Just ship the death mark. There's no way to remove it. There's no stover. There's nothing. Jamie is oh. going to go down. And Echo managed to bring it back. Swapsy still going to play this out. Met X at 40% with no mana. If they can get the pets on him here, maybe they can take him out. Doesn't look like it. Swapsy will fall. And Admiral's Esports will finally be challenged in this series. Echo get a moment of reprieve. But man, like that is close. You can see when he's touching his head with his arm that that's not, <laughs> that is not a clean and easy win by any means. Yeah, Ooh, especially now because... Go ahead. Uh, that was just an insane game. When it, when it, when the game comes down to the rogue kind of disengaging from the fight, mounting up on his like little tiger and running around trying to just buy some extra time to survive there, you know, it's a it's about as close as it can get possibly there. And uh, just so much pressure coming out uh, from Echo in this one. And uh, you know, th that was the, one of the big things that we saw here. Channel actually able to just get a lot more damage out. Ooming next, but this was such a close call right here. Was almost dying. It kind of very early on in the match still when both healers still had a lot of mana to work with and uh, you know meh having that extra mana is really i think what sealed the deal for them that allowed them to actually get the win and continue to stay aggressive next at this point that really doesn't have much to work with you can see meh still has just a little bit to keep going there whereas next is like basically tapped at this point jamie you know, taking a lot of damage uh, in that situation. And uh, I really like what Jamie did. Uh, at one point, they forced out the cloak uh, prior to this uh, with the, you know, the fire blood ratio. He just kind of popped it and just sent a, a big, big lava burst onto Waz. And uh, that was uh, when he kind of mounted up and ran away. But in the end, uh, we saw here, meh, with a little bit of mana left, doing a lot more damage as well in the match compared to next, uh, playing very, very aggressively. And uh, I would say the fact that Matt was able to kind of conserve his mana so good uh, is a big reason to why they actually were able to win this one because, uh, you know, looking earlier on, it was not looking too good right there. Am I missing something or is Waz like holding Deathmark a lot? Well, it, there's multiple things that can yeah. remove it. So the Evoker has Cauterizing Flame yeah. that can remove it, and Jamie is playing Dwarf, so you can Stone Form to remove it. But at the end of that game, I don't know if Waz has an add-on to track that Cauterize, because he had to Cauterize just random bleeds because it was so high into dampening. So there was no Cauterize that could remove it, and there was no Stone Form. But it can be really tough to see that moment because not normal, you normally don't get it, right? I think yeah. the game doesn't go that long where you actually force Cauterizing Flame outside of that window. Uh, but that game did go long enough, so it, they killed him anyways without it. It's not really like a huge deal. Uh, but oh, it's hope. But we're seeing Rhett Warrior. There's no way that we're not. Oh my Ooh. God, Echo is about to get slammed. Like after they just played their hearts out in that last game, and they are just gonna get meat grinded <laughs> <laughs> on hook point by Admirals Esports. Like maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Destro Rogue. This is like the most fragile classes I've ever seen for a Rhett Warrior to just go smack. Uh, maybe they can win, but I think this might be the most brutal game we see uh, of the series. Yeah, I mean, if you guys didn't see yesterday's games, Admirals Esports, this is basically the comp that got them out of the gauntlet and to today's games, and they definitely crushed some uh, some similar comps as Echo is running yesterday. Uh, you know, especially on Hook Point, very tight quarters here, and uh, this 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 might be the end here for Echo in the upper bracket. Zika, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it's possibly looking that way, but we haven't seen this matchup, you know, so we, we can't count Echo out just yet. But I would say if you look at this matchup kind of logically, I will say Admiral Esports, they have the edge in kind of every sense of the word. Uh, they have the mana lead on next. They're going to probably have the pressure lead with the Red Warrior, you know, having two squishy targets to go after. And uh, I think they're going to be more durable as well. Uh, with, you know, Swapsy being able to provide so much utility and also just being very tanky. So uh, not to mention the fact that we are on hook point. This is the smallest map, the most aggressive map uh, that exists. So uh, really everything is working against Echo in this one. And that's, you know, credit to Admiral Esports. That's because they played, uh, you know, with that LA lock and they played that matchup so well. They got themselves two wins. That put them in this situation, you know, where they can potentially go for this. And let's just say, let's just play with the idea that Echo is just insane in this matchup. They yeah. played so many times. They know how to, how to dismantle Red Warrior perfectly, even on hook point. Even then... Admiral Esports can always just say, okay, well, let's just play the same matchup, but this time we go into to, to Tolvir. 
you know so they really have the option to just shut it down here and i think that's their highest percentage play but if that somehow doesn't work they can tweak go to another small map or just go to a large map and play another le uh, warlock wizard so in the entire series right now admiral esports they definitely kind of have a chokehold on this series and uh, echo there this is I would say the hardest game for them to win in this series, for sure. If they win this one, they might get that extra momentum that they need. They might, you know, sort of believe that, okay, we can we can bring it back. But this one, for sure, I would say the team spirits are probably a little bit demoralized. Uh, and, uh, you know, matchup-wise, map-wise, it's not going to be too easy for them. But we can never count them out as well. These guys are absolute veterans, BlizzCon winners, you know, absolute kings of the game. So let's see what they can do here. The gates are open here on Hookpoint. Blizzo is going to be sapped right now, Sid. He just leaps right in, breaks that, goes for the Avatar almost immediately. Now it looks like they're targeting Swapsy with the Groat, Sleepwalk onto the Warrior. They're going after the Ret Paladin with the full blind, but if they don't get a trinket with that blind, man, this is a devastating start for them. They don't even get a trinket. Now next is going to be able to get the Life Cocoon out, start getting that fist weaving going. It's going to basically be triple DPS on Channel. How is he going to do with the pressure? He ports away immediately. Now they swap the Wasp potentially. No, nope, they're still chasing Channel. Is he going to be able to avoid them on hook point long enough to cut through the Dark Pack? Met is struggling. Look at his team there getting shredded at the moment. This could be everything from their side. Big heals come up from Met as he pulls him away from Swapsy. Just keeping the Rep Paladin at a distance is going to be key. They gouge up the healer. They kidney shot Swapsy. Finally, a moment of reprieve. They actually get Divine Shield from Swapsy. That is honestly a miracle, in my opinion, at this point in time. That is a super important cooldown if there was going to be a possibility for them to win this game. Yeah, big, big cooldown trade there for Swapsy. And now he's going to be a bit of a target as well here moving forward in the match. Channel still has his defensive. As I say that, has to use the unending resolve. Swapsy actually pushing in. They do get the gouge into fear. They're going after Swapsy. Swapsy's going to be in a lot of trouble, but a beautiful war banner by Blizzard. Next, he's actually, what did trade his trinket? He might just go down anyway. Beautiful place there by Next. Actually trinketing out of that cheap shot. Manages to stay uh, to stabilize Swapsy uh, at the end of that one. And that is because he sat through that blind, but that blind is coming back in 50 seconds. Swapsy's going to be in a world world of trouble the death mark is active and that will be the life cocoon coming out there for next as well swapsy feeling the pressure in this one trades out the, the sacrifice there as well but was getting cut down getting deleted here by just the mist weaver everybody else is just kind of covering behind the pillar swapsy still not feeling super confident to push in here he's waiting he pre stone bloods or pre fire bloods that kidney shot right there and that should be enough defense here to keep swapsy alive he gets feared now channel still with no unending result with no trigger as well if they can connect on channel that could be lights up but they legs sweep was going after Waz. Waz is nothing as well. Waz could easily go down here. He drops the 10% HP. How is he going to stay alive? He kites. He trades out the feint. He gets caught up in the Hammer of Justice. Matt dispels it immediately. And Matt will be able to stabilize him. And now Swapsy again in trouble. Next gets feared into a sleep. Swapsy trades out the Blessing of Protection. Can he stay alive here? So much damage coming up. Next with a beautiful heal right there. Manages to get him, but he's still dropping low to about 50% HP. Next with the Fist Weaving right now. Trying to stabilize with the offense. But there it is. Full Blind actually is available for Waz. And I think if he survives this, he's going to be able to win, but how is he going to stay alive? The Emerald Community comes out for meh, and now they have them in checkmate here, Sid. There's no Blessing of Protection either, oh, but this blind, there cocoon. it is. Full blind comes out with pre-life cocoon, pre-disarm. Blizzle, I think, has a Waz war banner as well. They're cutting down. Waz, they drop the war banner. They break the chain. Waz, she death procs, but he also stabilizes. This is still anybody's game. Nobody has anything left in this match. Who's going to fall first, Waz or Swapsy? A big leg sweep onto Waz. What's Matt going to do? He's just trying to heal. He rescues Waz back to the other side of the map. Swapsy's trying to reconnect and closes, but Chaos Bolts are incoming from Chanimal from downtown. Oh. And Chanimal does it. Echo tied no up two way. to two. We're going to game five on their hardest map. Wow, that was insane. Look at Waz. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, they got to be feeling themselves after that. That was a hard-fought victory. Was uh, just moments before they got that win, they got the sheet death, and there's so many small plays that are, you know, happening in the game. Both of these teams really playing so well, but you can see, I think this was in the opener. No, this is after they got the Divine Shield, so this is when they get the Unending Resolve, and then here is where Swapsy almost dies. They get the Kidney Shot, they, they get the Gouge into full fear, and then they get a DR Cheap Shot there, and look at next here. Trinkets out immediately to try to stabilize Swapsy there, and he does get slapped there also on his Trinket, but he managed to get one heal through. Here's another close call on the Swapsy. He gets a Blessing of Protection. Next gets feared. He gets slapped into a fear. Then he gets uh, some Rising Sun Kicks there to heal him up with the Fist Weaving, and then here is that uh, pre setup here like there's so much things happening right here ne uh, next pre life cocoons swapsy and look at that war banner by blizzo but that war banner gets killed off immediately right there so many like small plays blizzo as well with the disarm there and 
uh, here. Waz almost goes down as well. He's got no sheet death. He's leg swept, you know, man, with a beautiful rescue right there to uh, actually stabilize him. And then here, Channel gets the Chaos Bolts, gets the damage off, and boom goes the Dynamite. Echo going to tie it up two to two. And uh, our first series is going to be going all the way to game five here. Goodness. Wow, Echo, one game away from pulling off that reverse sweep, a situation that we thought, many thought was impossible, and they're so close to doing it now. They won their hardest game. I mean, they must be feeling kind of on top of the world right now, Sid. Look at the spikes of damage. We got like the damage meters. The game is going on. Look how back and forth it is. Like Echo, Admiral's Esports spikes, and Echo immediately spikes after them, and then they're really close, neck and neck. Like, look, at they're so similar if you ran the lines. Uh, on top of each other look at the healing done for met x as well like that purple line on the bottom to have to match that peak that admiral's esports yeah. hit in the middle <laughs> of that game i wonder if they maybe it's such a risky game because i feel like the rogue is easier to kill but if you don't attack the lock you might die so yeah. i, I kind of want to see a game where they only go rogue because they they only really switch to the rogue halfway through and then at that point they ran out of cooldowns to trade if they just been going rogue start to finish maybe waz is dead way before that point Hmm. Well, one thing is for sure, we're getting that draft process started. Oh, they're not doing Red Warrior. There's no way. Is the map? Yeah, I, I'm surprised. I mean, Echo they managed to make a team swap off of that composition. That's that's for sure making a, a huge statement. I feel like so. So in your mindset, they're going back to that first composition. I, I think we're seeing Ellie Warlock from Admirals Esports, which means Echo yeah. forced them off of Red Paladin, the first team to do it. And it's that synergy of the the evoker healer of being able to move your ally around. Like if Max was actually a priest could pull him too, but uh, the rescue looks cool. <laughs> the rescue looks cooler than the life grip, and the dragon's more mobile. You can't train the dragon. That's that's basically yeah. the main reason it works into that ret warrior. Ret warrior can't attack the evoker. He'll just kite them infinitely, and he can move his allies around the maps that they also can't get connected to. So it's been really an important component uh, for Echo in this series throughout. And they're staying with the rogue warlock and Empyrean, which means. I think Zipai is actually coming in on Ellie um, again for the side of Admirals Esports, which means they're Jamie. actually, or sorry, Jamie is coming in on Elemental Shaman and they're favoring that comp over a Rep Paladin, which yeah. I, I didn't think anybody was going to do uh, throughout the tournament today. And maybe Echo is revealing some secrets possibly for other teams uh, in the competition that might have Preservation Evoker as an, op as an option. Maybe. May I mean, we're certainly making history today, and it's only uh, the first game of the day as well, and we're already headed to uh, a game number five with two powerhouse teams here in the EU region uh, completely tied up. So the winner of this one will be going on in the upper bracket. Loser will be knocked down to the lower. And, I mean, both of these teams just playing incredibly well. Admirals Esports dominating the first and second game, and now Echo following closely behind, making that reverse sweep almost happen, and it's all coming to a head in this next game, Zico. Yeah, we're going to end it the way we started it here. Same matchups, Imperial Domain, and uh, I don't know, Admiral Esports, you know, after that game on hook point, they, you know, they had, like we said, they had two options, basically. Take it again to a small map or go back to that LE lock and take it to a big map. They favored that LE lock, and I think they looked good on it. You know, they're two and one on this composition, so I don't think it's, it's a bad move here for them. And uh, it's going to be up to Echo here uh, to kind of bring the pace again because I feel like in the last time uh, these two comps faced each other, it was all about that pressure. If they got a lot of pressure, they got the mana lead, and that's eventually what actually got them the win. So for Echo, it's going to be aggression, aggression, aggression. It's going to be all about getting Waz on top of Jamie. We're going to see, you know, both of these dragons kind of mirroring each other on Meh and next. Uh, you know, pulling Jamie away and Meh pulling Waz to Jamie. And whoever can kind of build more distance and, you know, if Jamie can get away better and, you know, kind of just shoot damage while he's running, then most likely Admiral Esports are going to be winning this one. However, if Waz can stay on target and not have to trade, then all of a sudden Echo is going to be able to complete the reverse sweep. Uh, reverse sweep.
Here. This is also the best Demo Ellie map because you got the toothpick pillars. These angels, the angels <laughs> might be big, but the pillars are small uh, and narrow, which means that the pets can cleave and you can surround your opponent. So those moments where Waz is running away and mounting up, those are really unlikely to happen. So they're going to need to play aggressive and win fast. And already Max is pulling Waz on top of Jamie, trying to keep him in the engagement. They really want to stay on this upper side of the bracket, avoid the other teams in the tournament because who knows how their comps will match up against them. It's such a wide variety of comps that you'd, you'd rather just avoid that case altogether but Waz is really struggling gets knocked back by the Unleashed Shield Met X is trying to get on top of him but he can't pull Waz with him and Waz is trying to slowly march his way over but he's taking so much damage on his way over Met X has to use Emerald Communion that's going to be a big heal Waz goes back up to full but Jamie cracks him with an Earth Shock down to half again kidney shot onto Jamie they need to gouge they gouge next they get the crowd control they need to get a sleepwalk out of this gouge they're not finding it that thunderstorm prevented Met X from finding it Channel is soloing Swapsy right now trying to find a kill onto him while Waz is going onto Jamie just Splitting their pressure, maximizing their damage, and I think trying to run next out of mana it seems to be the aim for Echo right now. Yeah, and that's uh, what got them the win last time when they played this. So I think it's a good strategy here. Just don't try to tunnel too much on Jamie, but still go for these setups. And there it is, a sleepwalk out of that gouge. Kidney shot onto Jamie. Emerald Communion trades out there for next. So good trades here. Waz, though, dropping to about 50% HP. Can they buy themselves a Cloak of Shadows on the way back there? It doesn't look like it. Ne Meh is out of crowd control. That gets the Dream Projection out. Gets big healing over time effects there onto Waz. Waz feeling very confident here to push behind the pillar. Next now as well with the Nullifying Shroud. is going to be immune to that next gouge gonna be immune to some of that cc so it's gonna be very tricky to actually get some pressure right now onto jamie Jamie sitting through that kidney shot they're actually bleeding up next as well they're just trying to cleave as much as possible here do as much damage as possible and try to run next out of mana but next so far is actually tied up with Mac x on that mana bar so so far it's not looking too bad here for admiral esports both of these teams i would say are evenly matched so far they're we'll actually swap. swapping over to next here huge it's damage point. no drink yet. they might just kill him here do that follow up cc they have to stop do they have a coin as well? They don't need it. And Echo, all of a sudden, manages to flip a switch here and win. Waz is excited about that one. They were down 0-2 against their former teammate Swapsy. But here we go. They're able to find that win. And what an interesting development there in the strategy. So they get the trinket on the blind. You know, a standard trade that Next has been doing every single game. But this time around, you know, they're bleeding up uh, the Warlock. They're bleeding up Next. They're bleeding up everyone. And they managed to get him to that. Like 70% or so before that swap managed to soften him up a little bit and then go for that kidney shot smoke bomb into the vanished cheap shot Garrett and they managed to just lock him down in place and kill him. That was an insane swap there by Echo. Oh, they catch him. I cannot believe it. I was counting them out. I thought it was going to be 3 0 when Echo had lost to this Ellie Warlock twice in a row, but they found an opportunity next with no trinket. They make that swap with the kidney shot, and I'm pretty sure Waz soloed him because there was a grounding totem from Jamie. Watch. Jamie's so far away. He's on the pillar. Waz stuns next, and Jamie puts a grounding totem behind the pillar. So Chaos Bolt goes straight into a grounding totem. Chanimal hasn't done any damage to next at all. He gets windshared on his Chaos Bolt. He might have con flagged here or something, but he gets, he gets killed by Met and Waz. Chanimal, look, Chanimal's doing nothing. Chanimal's is X and stunned <laughs> channel didn't do anything on that kill <laughs> Matt x and was just soloed him yeah but look at Matt. can we see one more time here Matt actually the channel's a full fire breath they're a full power fire breath and i want to know how does Matt uh, next actually drop so much on hp here i think it's channel actually he does uh, he does the work here to get him low so he actually gets you know the emulate he gets some damage off and then jamie shuts him down when he's already done a little bit of damage look at Matt. there fire breath disintegrate he actually Matt has, you know, <laughs> he has ice in his veins to go for a full channel on that fire breath. He knows either you're shutting down my warlock or you're shutting down me. One of us is going to be doing some big dam right here. And uh, Matt on that dragon, uh, you know, he's a, he's a phenomenal disc priest player, but he kind of has that same mentality of just doing a lot of damage, even when he's not on that discipline priest. It's great to see it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, for Echo, it's this is the situation you want to be in. You know, Ben was talking about it earlier on during the day. You just want to be in that situation where you're already qualified for this event, and then you can just sit back, watch the gauntlet, watch everybody reveal their strategies, their gear, all of their secrets, while you just get to hold on to your Destrolock Rogue pick, you know, in your back pocket. And then all of a sudden, you play. You win today, and now you're in that same position. You don't have to play any more games. You already made it uh, to the semis, and uh, you can just kind of relax and uh, just enjoy the situation uh, and watch everybody else kind of crumble. So uh, our next series is going to be um, my way uh, going up against the agents, and we're going to see uh, whoever uh, w uh, loses that as well play. I think we're playing the lower bracket after that, so uh, we still have plenty more games, and then obviously we still have North America as well. Uh, but what do you think about that game, Sid? I mean, that that was way more confidence, I feel like. It, it felt like they were just warming up, getting more and more games uh, with this Warlock Rogue composition. I feel like maybe Admirals Esports sold out on the Rep Paladin a little bit earlier, uh, a little bit early. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't blame them because like that map is so good for Demo Lock Ellie. Um, maybe Jamie just went too far away. But he, again, he was in such a good spot to stop the lock as well. Like... Uh, I don't know. It's such a weird situation to be in. Maybe maybe the stun instead of on Channel should have been on Waz or like there's so many different locations they could have put some crowd control at the end of that game that maybe it stops more important things. Um, spread it a little bit more evenly as opposed to all of it on Channel at that last second could have decided that game. So I don't know. May, I, I would have liked to have seen maybe Ret Warrior on a smaller map again um, and have them going after the Rogue uh, as opposed to the to the Warlock so much. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe see how that plays out. At least maybe we'll see it the next time uh, that they go against each other. In the meantime, it's the agents versus my way. Um, and both of these teams have <laughs> some interesting compositions. I'm, I'm kind of expecting the agents to be playing some type of warlock setup here uh, on their part uh, with Mercy and Zpi. Like maybe they're also going to run a, a demo Ellie. Mm -hmm. And then on the side of my way, like is, are they going to play jungle? Is, is Tony going to play a ret paladin? Because he played a rogue when rogues were meta yeah. instead of a feral. Is, are they going to play ret hunter? <laughs> Are they playing Demo Warlock Red? Because they got Aerytross as well. Yeah, well, they've actually been practicing uh, Red Hunter for sure. I've seen them, you know, on, uh, on their streams a little bit. So they have that in their back pocket, but I'm not entirely sure if we're going to see that or if they're going to go for their standard patented jungle or if they have, you know, any, uh, any other crazy surprises, you know, in their back pocket. So uh, definitely a bit of a question mark there on my way. But the agents, definitely one of those teams that is very, very similar, I would say, to Admiral Esports. They have the Lock Ellie. They have the Warrior Red as well because Zipa is a phenomenal Red player as well as Mercy on that warrior is really really you know de devastating to go up against so uh they have you know very similar comps to what we just saw and uh you know they have a lot of flexibility the agents i would say uh, at least during the cup season as well was like one step above admiral esports as well uh, just in terms of how they how well they played those comps so agents definitely uh, kind of the the team to beat in this matchup in my mind all right well Let's see if, uh, let's see. I mean, we'll have to find out soon. We're going to head to a break. When we come back, Agents versus My Way.
Welcome back, everyone. We are heading straight into game number two for the EU region. It's Agents versus My Way. Ooh, some interesting picks coming in here. The Agents going full on meta. They are going with that Mistweaver Warrior Retribution Paladin. But for My Way, bringing in Luxia on that Evoker. And I think that's been the big surprise for me today is just how prevalent um, these evokers have been. The preservation evoker isn't something that I expected to see so much of in the finals, but a lot of teams are utilizing that. Yeah, it's uh, been interesting to see here, but we're going to see it go up against the Mistweaver here. So we're going to see is Control King or is Damage King. It's going to go uh, big damage already actually onto Kasu. And uh, Tony is going to be making his debut here on Tony Rat. So Gonna see him as well on that class, and already Cash getting pinned down here by the Spear of Mercy. Deepai and Mercy both connecting here, doing a lot of damage there onto Kasu, but so far Luxia not having too many issues, kind of deflecting that. Hammer of Justice coming in into a freezing trap there onto Asgrath. It does, however, get dispelled or eaten. I'm not actually sure how he got out of that one, but he does get out of that one. And now Luxia in crowd control, big damage coming out onto Kasu, and that will be the Paralyze, uh, as well as the Trinket on that Blinding Light now onto Luxia, already trading out his Trinket and his Emerald Communion right there in that push. Uh, Kasu is having a really difficult time getting away here. He's trying to get freedoms here from Tony to back him up and making it a little bit easier to kite, but it is not easy. Zipai Mercy are, is all over him in this match. The full trap onto Asgath. He's going to decide to trinket and keep up the aggression. Does not want his team to fall behind. Lexi in a grip Kasu across the entire map, giving him just a moment to breathe and actually getting some decent pressure here onto Zipai, who trades out a lot of his defensive cooldowns. That's the Divine Protection, as well as the Shield of Vengeance. So Zipai could be a little bit vulnerable, and they are struggling. That freedom Ooh. coming in from Tony onto Kasu is allowing him to actually kite, get away, avoid Ooh. some damage. And those are the moments where they can really start getting some pressure out and give Kasu a moment to breathe. Well, they had such a nice CC chain there uh, onto Asgarath. They got a sleepwalk into a freezing trap, but it somehow oh. broke Zipai, dropping super low. It doesn't even matter. They actually swap over to Tony here, and they get his Divine Shield as well. So both threats down uh, Divine Shield right now. Kasu, though, also caught up in a stun here into a leg sweep, into a spear. Here comes the damage of Mercy and Zipai, but so far, looks actually deflecting it very nicely. He gets another sleepwalk onto Asgarath, but Kasu taking a lot of damage. Zipai is going to be the one on the back foot. Do they have a freezing trap? And they do. That is going to be it. My way coming in here leading the series 1-0 with the red hunter man that is just it's really really nice to see i mean luxia on that evoker is going to be able to provide some additional mobility and i think the biggest thing here was they just had such a difficult time actually chasing the hunter and i think a big part of that is because of the preservation evoker as well as the rep paladin able to mm -hmm. back him up with the rescue with the freedoms and also luxia being able to use sleepwalk is also very strong. So using those sleepwalks uh, onto Asgrath on that Mistweaver Monk, uh, Zipai can only use the Blessing of Sanctuary on so many. And I don't, is he, he might not even be, oh, he is. Yeah, he can only use the Blessing of Sanctuary on so many. If he's using it on stuns, then he's not going to have it available for the sleepwalk. And Asgrath's actually going to sit that crowd control and it's going to allow uh, these moments where they can actually burst down Zipai. I actually wonder at the start of this replay what actually broke that freezing trap because uh, something broke it for sure which was a little bit unfortunate they still got the cooldown trade and you got to give a big shout out to, to Luxia again again and again landing these sleepwalks he's really the one like right here so he gets a sleepwalk on the Asgrath then they uh, then they get a freezing trap out of that one and he doesn't have trinket here Asgrath so I actually don't know how it breaks maybe some cleave damage or something breaks it there not exactly sure uh, what uh, that was but uh, he breaks out of the trap right there otherwise Tony wouldn't even have needed to bubble here. They would have had so much, uh, you know, overwhelming pressure. Looks like would have just been able to free heal right there. And then again, you know, when they get the kill as well, it's off of the back of Luxia sleepwalks. So uh, Luxia, you know, coming in, he hasn't played in, you know, uh, since the cops, but he's looking hot. Yeah, I mean, looking really good. And like I said, that's been a huge surprise to me today. I think going into this tournament, a lot of people kind of anticipated that the best healers were going to be the Restoration Shaman as well as uh, Mistweaver Monks um, playing mm -hmm. that, you know, Punch Monk build. But Preservation Evoker has kind of stepped up in a big way, provides a lot in terms of damage and crowd control, and that extra mobility seems to be really useful also. So it's crazy to see a lot of these European teams implement that specialization and uh, i'm wondering how far they can take this you know the cupid cleave with the uh the hunter ret uh, and the preservation evoker obviously we're going to be going to hook point so that kind of tells me that the agents are going to be going with that cleave composition once again
I actually love Cupid Cleave as a name. It's so it's it's so good. It's my favorite like wow comp name because of the wings of the rat and then the the bow and arrow on the hunter. That's yeah, good, it's, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, the, the rat rogue. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like they just, uh, you know, they're, they're easy to understand, you know, like why they're named like that. And just, uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, you know. Uh, but uh, the agents, obviously, they have a little, it, they don't think it's as cute as we do, uh, the agents here, uh, down 0 and 1 already. And uh, I actually wonder, are they going to lock in the same thing here? What do you guys think? Uh, are we going to see something new maybe from the agents? Ah. Uh. It, it, it's difficult to say, honestly. I, f I feel like the map pick kind of reveals that maybe they do want to go with that cleave because it's going to mm -hmm. provide a lot less space for Kasu to actually kite. I think one thing that I want to see from the agents a little bit more is just hit what they can, right? Like go after the hunter if they need to. Um, and if they can't actually hit Kasu because he's got freedom, I think they should not be afraid to switch over to Tony a little bit earlier on in the match. Although I think Tony's trying to play from range also. And that's one of the things you can do on a Retribution Paladin, uh, which is strong, is especially against these Fist Weaver monks, you can play at like a 20 yard range and still be like 90% effective on the Rep Paladin while also avoiding uh, Asgrath. Uh, and if you can avoid him, he's not going to be able to get out any heals. So it's a nice thing that we're seeing uh, My Way do, basically just using a lot of distance to make it really difficult for Asgrath to actually heal. Yeah, uh, so the agents, they are going to go to the same thing right there, and we're going to see Zipai, Mercy, and Azgrath uh, just rolling with the same thing. Uh, and uh, I, I'm interested to see you know, what they decide to do here. Also, some of our competitors are streaming, guys, so please make sure to go over to twitch.tv slash Luxia and uh, go show some love to My Way. He is live right now streaming their games. So if you play you know, a Preservation Evoker, you play a healer, uh, you know, Luxia he doesn't only play his Preservation Evoker as well. He plays other healers. Make sure to go over there and give him a follow and uh, go and support the team if uh, this is a team that you're cheering for. So... Uh, definitely uh, check that out. You know, I'm going to be checking that out as well. See, you know, mm. if there's anything I can do on my dragon later or my little lizard. Uh, but uh, the agents right now, maybe uh, not feeling too confident here. You know, it's interesting because we saw the first series as well kind of start off with the high seed losing to the low seed. But then obviously Echo did kind of reverse sweep that and, and come back. So the agents uh, being seed number two, my way coming in and seed number three, uh, you know, the agents... And might also be able to repeat that that we saw in uh, our first series between Echo and Admiral Esports. So very evenly matched teams, uh, even when the, the last seed can make it such a close game against the first seed. And no doubt here, my way, been practicing their Cupid Cleave as well. And uh, so far looking good, but the agents can never really count these guys out. They have so much experience. They're so good at what they do. And they're just going to run it back here. Yep, here we go. Gates about to open game number two between the agents and my way. The winner of this series will advance to go and battle it out with Echo. So here's to see who can pull it off. Are we going to be able to see my way actually kite once again? They're going after Tony Farrell very early on in the match, making a swap over onto Cassio. No, just an intimidating shot. Unfortunately, it breaks one of those judgments. That is super unfortunate. He's not going to have to sit that crowd control. They're just going to tab target. And this small map should make it a lot easier for the side of agents to actually sit on a target. z taking quite a bit of damage. That's going to be a life cocoon. Nicely done there by Asgrath, trading out that life cocoon right before he goes into that sleep block. And those sleep blocks from Luxia have really been paying their weight in gold for that additional crowd control onto Asgrath. It's been looking good. Both these teams are looking stable at this point. Asgrath, though, might get trapped here. They shut it down by stunning Castle right there, so really nicely done onto Castle, but he still has that freezing trap in his back pocket. If they can land something onto Asgrath, they might potentially be able to trap him out of it. They do get a blinding light right there, but it does break, unfortunately, and there's a scatter shot into a trap. But look at Tony, meanwhile, taking a lot of damage here. They're going after the red a lot more here uh, on the side of the agents, but Zipai now also taking a lot of damage. It's going to be Luxia, though, in a blind here, and that will be the Emerald Communion coming out there for Luxia, keeping his team nice and healthy. And now, once 
again, it's going to be Zipai on the back foot. Can they get some crowd control? They do get a storm bolt there onto Luxia into a paralyzed. So good micro CCs there as they go after Tony. But here comes the Intim stun onto Asgarath. Can they follow it up with anything? Tony actually forced to trade out his divine shield. Zipai holding on to it. They do get a sleep into a freezing trap. And that might be Zipai's divine shield as well coming out. Asgarath actually manages to break out there with his trinket, I do believe. Not sure exactly. Oh, he went off the Forsaken, I think, and dodged the um, the trap right there. So uh, Asgarath actually playing an undead um, uh, fist weaver or uh, undead monk. It's pretty interesting to see, but he's going to be able to break out of those sleepwalks a little bit more frequently. And as I said, I think it's caught up in another one. Zipai in a hammer of justice could easily be his defensive cooldowns here, but they're also going after Tony. Tony's got nothing left here. He gets rescued back to safety for now, though. Yep, he will get rescued. Full trap here on Asgrath. Mm, looks like Zipai's just going to play it safe. Just playing at the pillar, trying to line a sight. Needs to connect to his target. The one thing with the agents you have going oh. for them as Zipai trades out his Divine Shield is that Asgrath has a slight mana lead. Only a slight mana lead. They'll paralyze right now into Lexi. He immediately uses his medallion to break out of that crowd control and make a swap here onto Tony. Nice Divine Protection, slowing down some of that damage, but... It looks like Ooh. the agents are just trying to go after who they can. Kasu is doing such an excellent job kiting in this match. That's a hammer of justice on Luxia. Tony could be in trouble. Blessing and protection trades. And now the agents are really starting to get a lot of pressure here onto the rep paladin of Tony Farrell. Making a swap on Luxia too. I like this. Just really mix it up. Go after everyone. Luxia is going to be using that deep breath to escape. Big fire breath as well, helping out with a little bit of offense. Can he get the sleepwalk? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to, as they just make a full uh -oh. swap to Luxia. Luxia could be in a lot of trouble, but he's doing a great job kiting so far, maneuvering away. Full trap on Asgrath. He trinkets, trades out the life cocoon. Luxia could go down. Looks like he will get sanctuaried and rescue to get that shield, but this pressure on Luxia is immense. Yeah, that was the lay, of hand, lay on hands of Tony as well. So Tony's really got nothing left. Cassio now, though, in the leg sweep. Triple blind coming out from Tony. Can they find follow-up CC here? Doesn't look like it. Zipai is going to trade out the Blessing of Protection. But they could purge it here. Cassio's trying to go for it. Doesn't manage to find the purge there, unfortunately. Tony now in a lot of trouble. Shield of Vengeance trades. But I don't think it's going to be enough here. Luxia has a lot of catch-up to do here in the back line. And he does manage to stabilize Tony for now. There's the double stun coming out. Zipai trinkets and trades out the Sanctuary there to free his healer. But he gets caught up in a sleepwalk. Can they follow it up? Castro's in a full fear. Mercy doing what he can here to try to take the game into his own hands. Tony dropping dangerously low. Full freeze jab on the Asgraf, but Tony will fall there. Mercy and Zipai chop him up and tie this one up one to one apiece. Yeah, I mean, uh, I love the way the agents played this one. Just go after who they can in the match. Obviously, going after the hunter is is ideal, but it can be really difficult when you're fighting a good hunter who's getting those blessing of freedoms, who's getting the rescues. It's just really easy for him to create space. So the agents, I think, just going after the rep paladin more, making the healer swaps, like really making it uncomfortable. Because at the end of the day, I feel like as long as Asgrath, Mercy, and Zipai can hit anything, they're going to be inevitably burning through the mana of Luxia, right? And they're going to be getting that yeah. late game advantage of having that mana lead. So just put the pressure where you can. You don't need to only one hit, you don't need to only hit one target. Um, and that's gonna give you uh, a little bit better of a strategy. So I kind of wonder if we are gonna see my way be able to mix it up and kind of avoid this strategy on a much larger map. Like I, I wonder how much hook point uh, helped them out here in this particular match, or if it's really just like a strategy change coming in from the agents. Well, I feel like all this pressure that they got onto Luxia when they swapped to him, uh, obviously before this, this is right at the end where Tony goes down. Um, I feel like that really did force a lot of cooldowns. They got the Sanctuary, they got the Lay on Hands. Tony might have had Lay on Hands because he wasn't on Forbidden, I don't think, towards the end right there. So uh, if Tony actually had that available, uh, he might have survived that go. And they did get Zipai's bubble. So there was, you know, a lot of back and forth there. So I, I definitely think that the map uh, did help them out quite a bit. But I also feel like a lot of these freezing traps are breaking. You know, there's a lot of cleave damage in general in the game, you know. So it is hard to get those uh, full freezing traps actually sit you know a lot of the uh, things here uh, are just doing cleave damage and kind of going on multiple targets so uh, i feel like for especially the rat he needs to be very careful with not breaking those i'm not actually sure if it is tony breaking them but just in general you know for my way their bread and butter is going to be getting that sleepwalk into that freezing trap or getting you know the hammer of justice uh, and in Timson at the same time between the rat and the healer and then following it up with a sleepwalk or a freezing trap and once those cc's land you gotta make sure that you're not breaking them uh because that's when we saw you know in game number one they were just able to kind of run away with the match so i feel like if they can do that 
and continue their pressure, continue uh, you know doing what they do. They're going to be in a great a great shape, and obviously uh, going to a larger map is definitely going to help them. But the agents could also swap if we if they go to, to a really large map. The agents, you know, they have Zipai. He is a great rat, but he's an even greater Ali Shaman. They also have Mercy. He's a great warrior, but he's an even greater warlock. So we could see a bit of a repeat from uh, game number one or series number one. I would like that, honestly. I feel like they can mix it up and get away from this cleave composition and bring in some of these alternate um, comps depending on what map we go to. So, uh, yeah, for my way, I think they want to avoid these small maps because obviously going against this cleave um, isn't ideal, even though they're kind of tied up here 1-1. One, one. Uh, but if they go too big, like Tolveron, ah, okay. Oh. Uh, all right, well, we were wrong with that one. <laughs> they're just going <laughs> for it. They're going with the Rat Warrior uh, Fist Weaver once again. And I kind I don't know, like I get the feeling that this is a matchup that they really should win. I think they maybe kind of tunnel vision on the hunter a little bit too much in game number one. And that's why it didn't go uh, necessarily the, the way perhaps it should have. Um, but my way, I, I wonder if they have any other options here. It seems like the red hunter is probably their best bet from how we've seen this. I, I really like the sleepwalks into the traps. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're 100% you're right. They need to focus on not being able to break out um not not cleaving to break those traps early because i think that additional crowd control is really what hurts um the fist weaver monk like, if you can get crowd control it's going marks okay yeah now uh, this this is interesting because if you remember towards the uh end of the cups we saw you know marksmanship started to get played a little bit you know castle brought it out a couple of times and we also saw jelly beans over in north america uh, going for those uh, kind of a wall hack plays uh, with uh, with you know the arrow that allows them to shoot through walls and then getting you know kicks getting uh, aim shots getting damage off uh, like that so uh, having all of this extra space is going to allow the marksman hunter to really you know rain terror on that rep pile and so they're going to have even more damage but i kind of like the bm hunter personally because i feel like the bm hunter is always effective you know you're just running the whole game and your pets are constantly applying pressure you know with the marksman hunter there is situations where you can completely avoid his damage whereas with the bm hunter it's like you know the, it's like my friend ps hero he always says a bm hunter is just like a dot you just you just have a permanent dot on you the whole game <laughs> uh, until you either lose to it or you know kill uh, the hunter before the dots kind of kills you so um the it's going to be different they're going to have more more you know big burst but also uh, you know some windows where maybe they're not doing any damage at all yeah what's interesting though is i think it's kind of like playing to the weakness of the enemy healer. So Asgarath, I think he actually likes healing through dots. <laughs> he likes healing through permanent <laughs> dots, like consistent damage as that Fist Weaver Monk. What you don't like is when you're in a sleepwalk and you know the rapid fire aim shots come in from Castle and he's just one-shotting someone. So I, in general, I think the spiky damage is a lot better um, against Mist Weaver Monks uh, instead of more like overall DPS, cleave damage uh, type of thing. So I'm curious to see if it works out. One thing I will say is I kind of wonder if they're going to go after Asgrath a little bit more here because Marksmanship Hunters are one of the few specs, uh, similar to like Windwalker Monk, where high armor targets really limit your overall damage. So attacking a Rep Paladin and an Arms Warrior as a Marks Hunter, your, your damage to those targets is significantly reduced, first of all, because of their high armor. Um, but against the monk, you can uh, you can make those swaps. So I kind of wonder if they might try to like bait out the sanctuary with the sleepwalk. And if that does happen, then they can go for like a hammer of justice, you know, one shot with rapid fire and aim shot and just blow the misweaver monk out of the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we saw in uh, that last game uh, with the Echo. Uh, that's kind of how they managed to close out that series was with a healer swap like that. Uh, so we can definitely see something like that happen again. Of course, the transcendence. Uh, you know, being usable in stuns is going to be big for Asgarath, but if they can catch him in a bad spot, especially when he goes in for that fist weaving, and they can kind of drag him back out of port range as well. He can definitely be a target, so he needs to be careful with that, especially also uh, playing that undead, you know. Uh, so if he wills one of those fears, all of a sudden there could be a window there where they can actually just take him down. So we're going to see how that marksmanship hunter works. I like my way so far, though. They seem very prepared, you know, bringing in a nice strategy, bringing in a nice comp here. That kind of plays to their strengths as well. There's not too much multi-classing, too much alting going on here. 
Uh, they keep two, uh, you know, of the players on their mains. And then Tony has been doing great on the red so far. And here we go. Look at Castle already lining up the sniper shot here from Stealth. Could be big damage. They're going after the Monk actually right now. Sleepwalk onto Asgard, but it breaks immediately. Mercy getting scatter shot here, and that's going to be the name of the game. They're actually going after the healer a lot, and they're just running uh, CC onto Mercy, trying to build distance between Mercy and Kasu. So we've kind of seen them use a similar strategy in the past where it's all about avoiding Mercy as much as possible. The more uptime Mercy can get, the more scared Kasu is going to be. But the more Kasu can kite Mercy, the more uh, you know he's going to be able to actually delete somebody, most likely Asgarath here, man. Yeah, Hammer of Justice on Luxia. He's going to trade out the Emerald Communion, and Luxia is trading out a lot of healing. Like, he's burning through his cooldowns really quick to stay ahead of the damage and make sure that his team is topped off and they don't fall behind. And look at Tony's positioning. So he's actually playing as a ranged Rat Paladin. <laughs> he doesn't want to play anywhere near Asgoth, <laughs> making it really difficult for him to actually connect those heals. Big Rising Sun Kick tops off Asgoth, but still, look, he just cannot oh. con connect to a target. And that is going to be the Life Cocoon from Asgrath, a bit of a panic situation. I think he did get some healing right before then. Caster right now actually playing the Void Elf Hunter for additional kiting. This is something we do not often see, but you can tell they just want to play keep away from this Mistweaver Monarch to really limit his healing. So far though, I will say the agents are looking pretty good. Asgrath has burned through a decent amount of his mana, but not many cooldowns left though. He's very susceptible to getting attacked. He's going to need some backup here by Zipai. To stay alive he still has his fortifying brew his restoral now they're making a big push onto cassie luxie's gonna grip him to the other side of the map but look mercy is still just all over him and this pressure on cassie is unrelenting but a big setup here oh that storm oh. from mercy was so clutch i think asgard could have actually gone down there really beautiful feels by mercy yeah, but they did get the Blissing of Protection there, though, but Cassie needs to be careful. He already traded out his Aspect of the Turtle, and uh, Cassie now stuck in this Storm Ball. Oh. Gets Blessing of Protection himself there. Very, very close call there. Very spiky damage, but Asgarath could be in a lot of trouble here. They get the kick, they get the aim shot. Big damage coming out there, but Asgarath realizing the situation. He's going to duck for cover right there, not allowing him to get that Fist Weaving off, and now trying to push in here. There's the Fae Line Stomp. Here comes the Fist Weaver, and he's going to be able to do a lot of heals, but there's a Storm Ball, the Hammer of Justice, getting a lot of pressure. Oh. Oh, he find out in a freezing trap, but Kasu just gets absolutely erased from the map. What just happened? We need a death log. We need a death log of that one. I mean, <laughs> that was... I don't even know if there's crowd control and Luxia there, but yeah, that's the thing, right? Hunters are very vulnerable to these kind of like... A, this amount of burst damage that can happen in the game. You can kite, you can avoid damage, but once they actually hit you, your health is just spiking. And I commented at the beginning of the game, Luxia was doing such a good job, just kind of preemptively healing. He wanted Cassie to just stay topped off in the match to avoid a situation like this. That was a beautiful storm bolt, but they did manage to get the blessing and protection like you called out. So a bit of a win there for the side of my way, but uh, you well, just look at what happened to Cassie's health. So he's 100%, he's 50%, he's 100%, he's 50%, he's 100%, he's 20%. He gets a blessing and protection. His health is just all over the place. Asgrath uh, ducks out of line of sight here, I do believe, rolls away. Doesn't want to get one shot here by Kasu. Uh, and and this is just where they're able to get it done. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be paying attention to see if there was any crowd control on Luxier here or exactly how this burst damage did come in. Uh, you can see right now, Zipai, he's got a lot of damage available. And yeah, he just kind of dies. There's no crowd control. That's just big amounts of damage coming in from the agents. and. That's one of the scary things about playing that Hunter in this matchup. Yeah, and that, that was in ultra slow motion as well. So uh, he actually died so fast right there. Uh, Kasu, you know, that's, that's the scary thing, right? If Mercy can connect. And uh, Mercy did a great job, you know, just deflecting a lot of these situations. You know, we saw it with that Trinket Stormbolt uh, earlier on and uh, just able to connect. I also really like that Mercy is opting for that uh, spear, uh, that spear of Bastion that's on the ground right there. Every single time he connects, he drops it. He's always getting cooldowns. You know, they got the turtle earlier. They got the Blessing of Protection right here, and uh, they got the Exil heal as well at one point with that. So really getting a lot of value, I feel like, from that. And even though the map is, like, very large and allows Kasu to kind of run around a lot, uh, you know, being able to just connect. I mean, look at that. That's the normal speed how fast he actually does go down. <laughs> <laughs> and we can see the death log here as well. So it's a, a wake of ashes, 86k, 60k, moral strike, rising sun kick, wake of ashes again. Um, yeah, basically just turned Caster into ashes there. A lot of wake of ashes, yeah. Big damn. Yep. 
we'll see what they could do. Uh, my way right now, they do select Ash Remains Fall, so going with that large map once again, and uh, we'll see uh, what composition they decide to lock in. The agents Ooh. are going to be sticking to their guns. Ah, ah, I don't know how I feel about this. I think it could work. Actually, I guess in North America yesterday, we kind of saw this matchup play out, right? The Warrior Retribution Paladin going up against the Demo Warlock Retribution Paladin. Now, I think there's a few things um about this matchup I, I feel like either side could win for my way what it's going to come down to is big setups right you need to get mm -hmm. crowd control on asgarath at the same time as you do on zipai you can either swap onto the mistweaver monk or you can go after the rep paladin but you need cross um because if asgarath can punch and kick no one's gonna die but if zipai can actually back up asgarath as well i, I don't think asgarath's really gonna go down so you, you have to isolate a target get crowd control on everyone and one of the things one of the key adaptations I'm seeing a lot of Warlocks pull off, especially Demonology Warlocks, is running that Howl of Terror. So the Howl of Terror isn't something Demonology Warlocks normally play, but into Ret Mistweaver in particular, it's really strong. because You get the double Howl of Terror, then you can get you know more crowd control on Asgrath out of that um, with like a stun on Zipa and just allows you to get these consistent setups in the match. Yeah, that's a great point because, you know, they're both most likely Asgard's going to be playing fist weaving. He's going to be in there uh, in the middle of the fray, you know, going after the warlock, going after the rat uh, together with his healer. So you can get those kind of double howls uh, set up pretty easily. Now, the big question here, though, is are we going to see any Volpiras coming out here from the agents? I think that's a, that's a valid <laughs> question right now. <laughs> Who, who would play the Volpira? Can you be a Volpira and rep Paladin? I don't even know. Uh, you, I think, I don't know about the Paladin, but the Warrior can for <laughs> sure. I think, I think we can see a Volpira Warrior, right? What about Monk? Can you be a Volpira and Monk? I don't think, I, maybe Monk's got some new races that they could use in 1007, <laughs> so that would be like some new tech. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, it's not a race we see a lot, so who knows, honestly, but... It would be cool to see it uh, being brought out here from the agents, you know, taking some of that NA tech that we saw yesterday. The NA yep. tech. We'll you, see. And, and uh, go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> I I was gonna say you can go to you can go to the companion app too and just copy their entire build. So. Oh, that's nice. If you want to just you know completely copy their tech, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> but there you go. Go ahead, Ben. That's all I wanted to say. I just I think this is an interesting one because I think a lot of people going into this weekend kind of thought that these are like the main two compositions, right? Like the Ret Warrior and the Ret Demo. This is going to be like these are the comps that you need to beat um, if you want to win. So uh, now that they're going head to head, it makes me feel like my way maybe doesn't have the most confidence in this composition just because if they legitimately felt like it was like a good answer, I think they would have locked it in for game number one, game number two, game number three. Um, as I think it was pretty obvious that the agents was going to be running this Rat Warrior. So I think this is kind of like a second option for them. Like, hey, our first game plan isn't working out so well. Uh, let's kind of see how this does. So I'm curious if they can pull it off. Yeah, it's it's always interesting kind of looking at the teams in terms of the sort of the philosophy of how they approach games like this. It's like, you know, even if we have a large amount of comps that we could play do we want to stick with the one that we think is going to work or do we want to switch it up that's got to be a really difficult decision i imagine to make under this sort of pressure especially when you're on match point but we're heading into game number four asha mains fall agents super close to closing this one out three to one yeah, and I mean, this is still the upper bracket. So whoever loses here will drop down to a play against Admiral Esports. Not, you know, a pretty scary team to go up against, I would say. So it's not a situation either of these teams want to find themselves in. But if you are going to experiment a little bit, this is, you know, where you should do it. Um, so for uh, my way, bringing in the Warlock, this could be, you know, something that works really well for them, um, uh, you know, moving forward. So it's good to have that kind of experiment already done. And we'll see Aritros here is coming off cold from the bench, but he's going to need to be hot because the agents are on match point right now. If they win this one, they're going to move forward. And there it is, Hall of Terror coming out. They're going after Mercy immediately here. Big pressure coming out, and that will actually not be too many cooldowns being forced, though, from Asgarath. And now it's going to be Aritros on the back foot, trying to kind of wait, trying to escape here. 
and uh, he does use beautiful mobility right there actually i think that was a void no he did not avoid elf racial there so he used his teleport used his gateway there to make uh, you know some distance here and it is going to be a sleepwalk now coming on onto asgarath asgarath will will have to forsaken out of that one next sweep connects here onto aratros looks here with a beautiful rescue crossing the map once again and they're most likely going to swap over onto Tony here, but a lot of pressure coming out onto Mercy. In the meantime, Deepai trading out his Sanctuary there as well as as, as Aritros continues to kite. They do a really good job so far, avoiding damage at all costs. And now they're going to be going after Tony, who's trying to avoid damage as much as possible, playing that kind of 20-yard range paladin. There's the triple Halotair. Big setup here on Mercy, and I like that. Get the Halotair on the red. Get the Halotair on Asgrath, and just go after the Warrior in those Hammer of Justice. Looking really, really solid here in this game so far. Eritros with, you know, his freedoms, with rescues. He is just not getting targeted very much in this match. They can't actually connect to him. Finally, all three members are going to get there, and this is where Eritros could just explode in this match, and Mana might be a factor in this matchup as well. Lexia potentially go for a drink at some point in the match. We'll have to wait and see. I think it's very unlikely, but uh, that could be one of the win conditions here for the agents as well, as they finally have that uptime on Eritros, trying desperately to get away using that Void Elf Racial. He's caught into a Storm Bolt. There is going to be the Demonic Circle still trying to get away with Freedom, but they are all over him. And after this gateway, there's really no mobility left. I feel like this is where, if Azgoth, Mercy, and Zipai can get there, uh, they're going to be able to potentially take down Eritros. I just actually just ran back in there to the middle of the map to try to get some damage out, and that's going to be the Feyline Storm coming out. Big damage onto Aratros here. They're also cleaving his pets right there, and Aratros so far is being effective here. They go for the Hammer of Justice into a Sleepwalk there by Luxia. They stand up Mercy. They get good pressure here onto Mercy. They stand up Zipai now. A lot of trouble here for Mercy, and he will trade the die by the sword right there. Beautiful setup there coming out from my way, but now Aratros on the back foot. He's going to trink it out. He's going to get the freedom, and he will uh, teleport behind that pillar, trying to build uh, some distance between himself and the melee cleave. Tony, though, also getting swapped here. They need to be careful. Tony might have to use something here. Uses a divine protection, catches a big heal from Luxia. That should be enough to stabilize Tony for now as they continue their onslaught here. Onto Aratros. Full hammer of justice. They connect onto Aratros. That will be the health stone, I believe, coming out there for Aratros as he does manage to recover there from another dangerous moment while coming out double stuns are out here as well one onto tony one onto asgar out there and Aris Tross again and again just trying to kite trying to buy himself some time here and trying to just continue getting these hall of terror setups onto mercy last time they did it they got the they got the die by the sword the next time they do it they need to get something more potentially a big cooldown like asgraf's trinket here demonic tyrant now is out for my way this is a situation where they can get a lot of pressure but as i say that aritros on one percent hp gets rescued but is it going to be enough the trinkets out there looks yeah trinketing out of that paralyzed trying to save his warlock there aritros gateways away as well but still so much damage coming out they're swapping over onto tony now looks yeah still in crowd control in that blinding light but he will survive the swapping to asgraf there but he gets sanctuary out of the stun and now once again connecting back onto aritros i don't know how he's going to be able to survive this one it's going to be with offense he gets another double howl of terror but no pressure and they're connecting again and again but i don't think As aritros is going to be able to survive for much longer yeah, and this is match point the loser of this will go down to the lower bracket um agents they're just one away from closing it out Eritros doing whatever he can to kite and trying to get away avoid damage at all costs but that last amount of damage i mean you could tell what happens they finally do have that uptime we're seeing a little bit of trouble here potentially going to the middle of the map a nice rescue onto Eritros once again bringing him across the map but mercy is there in hot pursuit they smell blood in the water dampening is ramping up here in this match asgrath mercy zipai they're all looking safe they're all looking healthy beautiful howl of terror but Looks like they're going to be able to get out of that one. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what broke that, but that howl is not going to last. Uh, but still, uh, Tony now getting swapped too. So I really like that the agents, they aren't just over committing here on Eritros. They're going after multiple members. Tony, if he is left behind, do not be afraid to go after him as he is really vulnerable in this match as well. That's going to be the blessing of protection. Just getting cooldowns for free here. At the same time, though, Zipai is forced to make a trade with his Divine Shield. So. Both these teams still getting pressure, but you can see it is Luxia who is behind on mana. I don't know if he's going to be able to get a drink. I feel like this game is going to go to its inevitable conclusion here shortly. Big setup here on Tony once again. There's really no defensives left. That's going to be the Emerald Communion. The last little bit of healing here from Luxia. Tony in desperation trying to survive with his gateway, but Mercy is in hot pursuit there all over him. Eritros is going to have to carry in terms of damage. Can he get the pressure out? He's finally able to free cast in this match, but Tony is just so far behind. They are taking him down. 
Nice life grip there by Luxia, using that rescue to keep him alive and bring him to safety once again. Tony does manage to hold on. Now they're making a swap here on Eritros, but I feel like my way, their time is running out. Yeah, my way, the, it, it is do or die for them right now. They will be dropping to the lower bracket if they lose this one. Aritros, you know, once again, teleporting away to safety. They actually get a repentance there onto Asgarath into a full fear. This could be the setup that they need. Zipai has no bubble. Can they take down Zipai? But Tony, at the same time, also with nothing left. Tony, how are you going to stay alive right now? The pain train is on. Big damage coming up. But at the same time, Zipai getting blasted there by the imps of Aritros. Now they're swapping over onto Aritros. He teleports away. Can they connect? They leap over. They get the ring of peace. Can they connect onto Aritros? The leg sweep is there, and that will be it. Mercy and Zipai will be able to chop him up. The agents continue to move on into the semifinals to go up against Echo, and we are going to see my way drop down to that lower bracket to face off against Admiral Esports. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be set. Both those series just are going to be absolutely amazing. I can't wait for this next one, but... Got to talk about the agents. They really stuck to their guns in this one. Even the matchups they were losing, uh, I feel like they were just improving as this match went on, just making sure they were hitting at target, right? Like if Eritros, even though Eritros did such a good job kiting and avoiding the fight, when you were playing that far away, you leave your team members behind, right? Like, I think as long as they can get Eritros out of the fight and force him to kite like that, which he kind of needs to, that's when they can make those really safe swaps onto Tony. And Eritros really doesn't have a lot of time to actually like get anything set up. And as he tries to, they just swap back over onto him. So just putting out lots of effective damage in the match. And I mean, this one basically came down to Alexi just having no mana left. There's a moment in this game where Tony, he's barely holding on. He doesn't get stabilized. Look at it. He runs to the pillar. And at this point, you just know the game's over, right? Like Tony, his health is not going to, he's not going to recover in this situation. And while he's trying to, Eritros is just getting swapped to and dropped. So uh, it's just, if you don't have good offense against uh, the setup the agents is running, you're not going to be able to win the game. And if you're constantly just trying to, you know, recover um, and stay alive, that kind of plays into the advantage of the agents because their damage just never really stops at a matchup like this. You have to get good offense. And unfortunately, they weren't really able to find it in this final game. Well, now we're going to be seeing agents move on for Echo Then, How do you feel like this tactic is going to work against them? So this is where I think it gets really interesting because um, what we saw uh, today, um, a little bit earlier on, if you remember the first matchup of the day, is the agents, they actually have very similar compositions to Admiral Esports. So I think we could see uh, very similar matchups to what we saw uh, in that game number one between Echo and Admiral Esports. They could run this Rat Warrior, but... At the same time, Echo, I know they've been practicing a lot of Mage Warlock, and that Mage Warlock Evoker, I think, is strong into these Rec Cleaves. So I think there's going to be a little bit of a meta. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a mix-up in the meta. I think both teams have you know, the, the capability of running lots of different styles of compositions, and I think this could be a matchup that comes down to the blind pick. So depending on who gets kind of the, the mental edge, the advantage in that game one on the Grand Arena, uh, could end up winning the series if it goes to that uh, best of five, as I think both teams have... Lots of different compositions that are capable of kind of countering each other. All right. Well, we're going to find out. It's going to be uh, an intense one. It's going to be the last EU match of the day as well. We can take a look at how we got here. Started off with four teams. No one's been eliminated just yet. Those elimination rounds are coming tomorrow for both of these regions. Uh, but Admirals and Agents, they're going to be dropping down to the lower bracket or uh, my way, excuse me. So we're going to be seeing them play against each other tomorrow and the loser of that one will be out agents and echo are up next in the semifinals winner of that will move on to the finals and we'll find out who they're going to be up against tomorrow but i mean an incredible pool of teams that we even started off with admirals esports of course eco having moved up from that gauntlet yesterday um and how do you feel like these teams have been playing so far any big surprises to you I mean, Admiral Esports was just one game away from, honestly, 3 0 Echo. So, uh, you know, they got reverse sweep. They got a little bit figured out in that matchup. But I do feel like that was just a nail biter. It's about as close as it can possibly get. And, you know, according to the standings, that is their toughest competition. So uh, I feel like Admiral Esports, they're not going to be too happy about the, the result there. But uh, I think they have been uh, kind of impressive so far. 
uh, you know, showcasing their Wizards because we knew they had it, but we didn't know how good it was. Uh, so it's nice to actually see them play that. And obviously the agents, uh, we kind of knew, okay, they've been playing a lot of Red Warrior. They're really good at it. And we did see it kind of live up to the hype. I like that even though when they lost with that comp, they just continued to lock it in and make small adaptations. And, uh, you know, we're able to turn around that entire series. Now they are going to go up against the Echo. And this is kind of a classical here in Europe, you know, z versus Waz. Uh, tail as old as time at this point and uh, it's gonna you know it's always an exciting match so it's gonna be very exciting to see yep i am excited as well here is a look at the schedule just a sneak peek also for the na games that we're going to be seeing coming up but the one that zico did just mention echo versus agent so we're gonna have to head to a quick break before we do see those games play out but you can bet that it is going to be a very good one so we'll see you guys in just a sec. Echo versus Agents up next.
Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on the last EU game of the day. We're still in the upper bracket. This game will determine who moves on to the grand finals in the EU region. It's Echo facing off against the Agent Sid. Yep, and I mean, this could be a similar matchup, right? Like Echo won with Destro, Warlock. The agents can play the same types of comps. We've seen that Mistweaver or Rat Warrior just come out of them. Um, they can also run with the demo Ellie. Uh, we got a tweet here. We dropped to the loser's bracket after losing 3 2 to Echo. GG's well played. Got a bit unlucky oh in goodness. game four, but it doesn't matter. Tomorrow we come back stronger. 1%. One, percent, health. one oh. health. Is that oh, a world one, first? I know Echo's, Echo's all about world first, but I think that might be a world first 1 HP. Imagine. Like, actually, that. 1 HP. We say that's 1 less HP. Than one person. Yeah, no, that's literally 1 HP. Oh, my goodness. Tough. A bit of <laughs> Like, that's yeah. tough. Yeah. So. But he seems to have a positive attitude about it, right? Yeah, uh, he's going to come back stronger uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So, I'm excited to see it. Off. And maybe they can gain. Yeah, like I kind of mentioned, there's a lot of parallels between the agents and Admiral Esports. They play a lot of similar compositions, so maybe perhaps get some insight in this matchup if the agents can somehow manage to beat Echo. Um, so yeah, I feel like Echo, their, their last series was not an easy one. Um, so I, I think they still, they, they can't be too comfortable after winning that first series. It was such a close call, you know, obviously coming back with the reverse sweep and every single game that they did uh, manage to win, it was still exceptionally close. So. I think mm -hmm. the agents are going to be a difficult matchup for them. I kind of wonder what they're going to lock in on the blind pick because they also have that Rat Warrior Cleave like we just saw. But you also have Zipai who uh, happens to be one of the best LE shamans in the entire world. So, Yeah, and you know, we kind of saw it with Jamie earlier, like how good that class is with a, a, a someone that's been playing it for so long. You know, obviously didn't quite work out for Jamie um, for those last couple of games, but we'll see what they can do with it here in this series. Here's a Echo. I'm assuming some of them are streaming at the moment. I know a lot of these guys uh, like to do that. So for sure, go support them. It's also it's also cool that, uh, you know, Echo, they, they just picked up echo the org picked up this arena team and you know they won race world first they won mdi and now they're here to try and win another wow esport competition here with their their new team of poggers so uh, we'll see if that's like a, a good luck charm for them sid yeah well we will have to wait and see one of the biggest difference i think for the agents though um as opposed to admiral's esports is what healers has asgrath prepared does he have an evoker because uh, that's a really important component if he can't play evoker mm -hmm. i don't think warlock Ellie is going to be nearly as good as it was uh, for Jamie's team. So this game one maybe might just be Rhett Warrior straight from the gate. And then what is Echo? Are they going to blind lock Mage Lock? I could see that, honestly. Echo going with a Mage Lock. Agents going with a Rhett Warrior in game number one. There's a lot of variables uh, both teams are considering here for this matchup. And it oh. looks like Asgrath has prepared the Evoker. That's really important for his team. I'm still, I, I keep saying it, I can't believe how many evokers we're seeing. Uh, this is a total surprise to me. It seems like every single healer in Europe has prepared, prepared a preservation evoker. I think into the assassination rogue, it's particularly strong, obviously with that cauterizing flame. Um, but yeah, Waz had a really difficult time in this matchup when we saw it a little bit earlier today. There's just so much disruption from the demonology warlock, tons of mobility coming in um, and kind of anti-mobility with all the knocks that Zipa and Asgrath have available. Zipa's just running in and wants to get in combat, but he does get sapped. Let's see who they decide to open on. What is Waz going to do here? Sap now on a Mercy. Beautifully done here by Echo, getting a clean opener onto Zipa. Oh, they got the Shroud off, full blind onto Asgrath, but they don't get a sap. No sap gonna be found onto Asgrath. So he sits through the blind without trinketing. We saw the last team, uh, the Evoker next would just trinket blind instantly and that would leave him open. So in this position, they stop the crowd control chain and Asgrath holds onto his trinket. That opening is not gonna be there, but it's really coming down to Zipai and Asgrath. How can they synergize together to prevent Waz from connecting for as much time as possible? Right now, Waz is getting uptime on Zipai, so this could be a bit dangerous. See the Frost Shock route come out, gets dispelled immediately here was still getting up time knock back on the kidney shot met x lining up that fire breath huge hit yeah, and it. that is a ko was can't believe it i can't believe it nobody can believe it that damage <laughs> came out of nowhere from meh there just i saw him lining it up and i'm like maybe that hits hard i don't know well i want to i want a details breakdown for that how hard was that fire breath is that like a 200k fire breath like what what I is going really on was face <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to be so happy if you're... I mean, think about the stakes for this series, right? Like, you get to go to the Grand Finals and 
uh, with two teams as evenly matched as this, with as many compositions as they have, winning that game number one on the grand is so important. But I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of these players and a lot of these teams are opting to go with that preservation evoker is you have a lot of burst damage. If Channel and Meh kind of line up their damage at the same time, you, you kind of see what happens here. Yeah, it was insane. Like, so what is this? He knocks the kidney, Chaos Bolt, one, Chaos Bolt, two, Fire Breath, boom. <sighs> There's two Chaos Bolts and a Fire Breath, just no shutdown. I think Channel got precognition there, so he faked an interrupt, or did he wall? I, honestly, I need to see it again to make sure, but he, I think he was immune to interrupt, so he either walled for that or he got precognition and faked an interrupt and just went absolutely bonkers with it. So yeah, right here, we get the replay again. Did Channel fake an interrupt? He goes for Nether Ward, so he can't be interrupted, and they kick into Nether Ward, which gives him precog. So he can't be CC'd. He can't be CC'd and he can't be kicked, and he just goes crazy at that one moment in time. So really big opening. Nice punish there uh, from Channel uh, on that push. And like th this just goes to show how like narrow this matchup is for both sides. Like you have to play perfectly. Uh, to be able to keep the game going as long as we saw Admiral Esports was able to make it go. Uh, and right now, Echo just seems like they're getting stronger and stronger. That's a good point. You know, I mean, the way that they started off today, we thought they were going to go 0 and 3 down to the lower bracket. And, and, you know, here they are potentially moving up to the grand final in a position where they could move up to the grand finals and they have that just explosive first game. So, agents. Uh, definitely didn't want that to happen. So, I mean, what do we do next time the gates open, uh, Ven? Mm, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you just can't, I guess you can't underreact to when uh, channels can be casting three, four Chaos Bolts in a row. So uh, I think that's going to be the really scary moment of the match. I think that's actually one thing Jamie did really well is just being out of line of sight, right? Like you basically have to have perfect disruption on channel. He's going to be the playmaker in this match. He's going to be the one with kind of lethal damage with those Chaos Bolts. Uh, being slung together, so I think the agents, they just need to do a really good job shutting down Channel. Constant curse of tongues on him, constant interrupts and fears and groundings and uh, just everything you can to avoid uh, Channel in this match. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a scary, scary couple of people to go up against, so we'll see if Agent is up to the task. We are heading into Tolveron, so Subatiz, what do you think? No comp changes for them? I don't think they're changing comp. If they were going to play Rat Warrior, they'd go hook point um mm -hmm. which maybe is a respect thing because i feel like ret warrior should win this matchup on small map at least um should be able to win this matchup and we saw that that tweet from blizzard like one hp like <laughs> i feel like it should be capable so if they lose here on the biggest map then i definitely think they're going to shift um directions uh, for at least the third game essentially for the entire series they're taking their time here I'm curious what they're really considering do they have some sort of secret hidden comp that they're they, they haven't shown just yet I, um, nope, Demo, Ellie, Preservation Evoke are going to be sticking with the same. I think it's really important that Mercy holds on to the Axe Toss because that's like the main crowd control you can guarantee during Kidney Shot. Um, and it'll go through Nether Ward. So that way they don't have to worry about like, oh no, we have to purge off Nether Ward and then interrupt his cast. And what if it's too fast and we miss? And then now he's got precognition. Uh, I think just sitting on the Axe Toss and using that during every Nether Ward Kidney Shot uh, is probably going to be ideal. Uh, to be able to survive this and probably just using their mobility more frequently. It felt like Zpi for a while was just kind of just trying to run while the rogue was on him. Um, whereas in the last year's Admiral's Esports, they were just pulling uh, Jamie around the map. Just if they had mobility, they were using it uh, and just making sure that Waz wasn't connecting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from Waz. Stay away from Chan. Seems easy enough, right? Yeah, not super easy, but it's what you got to do, right? I mean, these are the best teams. They got to figure it out. <laughs> Tolveron, I think, is going to help. It's a really large map here. It's got big pillars as well. So hopefully we're going to see Zipai actually like cross the map consistently here and be able to get good knocks on Waz and avoid Channel. Because I think if they can do that, it can be really difficult for Waz to actually get on target like we saw in the first series of the day. So um, the agents obviously taken here uh, just a moment to maybe discuss what went wrong, uh, but I think their primary objective in this match needs to not be giving Channel Precog, because when he has that, uh, it's uh, it's quite quite deadly, that's for sure. Yeah, certainly is, and 
Uh, you know, if agents do end up winning this one, I, I kind of wonder where the game takes us. Like, if we end up eventually going to a smaller map, like you kind of mentioned, said going to hook win or something. You know, Echo has shown that they are capable of also winning on those maps with this composition. So they're, they've certainly turned into an, a lethal team in this meta uh, today. They've they've really shown up today. It's it's great to see them kind of make those adjustments. So let's see what they can do here in this following game. The agents looking to make a comeback here in Tolveron. I do wonder, you know, a non-Resto Shaman, non-Misweaver, non-Ret team, if they can manage to win, then I would have like been totally off base on what I was expecting to be able to take this entire tournament. If they could just play one comp too, the whole way through, uh, with Destro, Assassination, Rogue Preservation, Evoker would be very impressive. They've got a really big map here, though, to navigate. Demonic Gateway is going to be really effective. Rescue is going to be really effective. Really want to see those Unleashed Shields. I'm curious if Zipai was running that. He is. So the Unleashed Shield knockback route is a really important component uh, to the Elemental Shaman's ability to escape the Rogue because there's two charges of Shadow Step. So if you Thunderstorm, that's a Shadow Step. If you Unleash Shield, that's a Shadow Step. Then you got to use Gateway. Then you've got to use Rescue, and you've got to get away um, during that time and just limit the uptime of the rogue as much as possible. We can see Mercy just sending his pet in to get combat while Zipai is sapped. They do get the sap on Asgrath. This could be a scary start. We've not seen this started with the sap onto the healer uh, just yet. Kidney shot onto Zipai pre walls uh, here during the blind. So, really valuing the evoker trinkets. Will he die through wall is now the question. Living flames are coming in. Waz gets another garrote. Emerald communion gets smoke bombed. And Zipai, is he just going to die in the opener? It would be terrible for them to go down so rapidly in the series. Big heels come out from Asgrath at the last possible second. They still hold onto the medallion despite that push from Echo, but now they've got to get Waz off of Zipai's back. They've axe-tossed him. They've held him at, uh, at bay, but now that axe-toss won't be there to deny the kidney shot. Yeah, Tyrant, unfortunately, getting no value right now. You can just see it standing in the middle, trying to go for a cast. Does get one on Channimal, but uh, it looks like it will only get one cast off, and that's basically the main burst that Mercy has available. At the same time, though, Channimal kind of getting blasted right now behind the pillar. Really surprising how much damage he's taking. Waz gets feared away. Beautiful peels here by Mercy. And this is exactly what you want to do if you are a Zipai. You want to run the enemy team through your Warlock so he can spam out fears, he can spam out damage, and just get as much disruption as possible. Big kidney shot here onto Zipai with the gouge on Asgrath. Do they have the damage? Animal, what is he going to be able to do? A nice knock there by Zipai, but a Shadow Step Garrote comes in from Waz. He's still just all over Zipai. I don't know if Zipai is going to be able to recover. It looks like Asgrath will be able to uh, keep him alive, keep him stable in the match. Waz now down to 50% health as he's getting blasted, but continuing his damage here on the Zipai. And this is all that mobility that the Preservation Voker has available. Waz now getting caught into a Lightning Lasso. Just really, really good denial of damage here on the side of the Agents. Oh, they got Zipai at half health here. Not a lot of cooldowns. Big Verdant Embrace, Fears onto Waz, trying to get distance for Zipai here as he's ducking in the Ghost. So Frost Shock Root onto Waz. Trying to keep him off target. Shadow Step, Kidney Shot, knocks the Shadow Step. Really good Thunderstorm here on the Kidney Shot, preventing some uptime. Channel Fear during it. Really good control and denial of damage. But Asgrath, his mana is not good right now. Mercy is massively ahead. If they can't win with some sort of burst damage here, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to win the attrition fight at this rate. Zipai is just getting swarmed. The decent damage onto Waz, but Chaos Bolts are flying in onto Zipai. Who will fall first? Time dilation onto Waz. He's going to be okay. Now it's Zipai. How will he survive? Asgrath trying to reposition at the pillar. Gets interrupted by Waz on the Living Flame. Mercy is feared out of the fight feared again by channel really far away and waz is still continuing to push forward looks like he got knocked back frost shock root immediately out of that reconnects oh rescue lightning lasso trying to keep waz uh, back here but they need to make sure that he's snared every time they're using those mobilities if he's running at full speed there's a high likelihood he's going to reconnect here coil on a z pi nice knock back with that unleashed shield onto waz keep waz away it's just all about a keep away you don't want waz touching you at all meh big swap on the meh they get his medallion and obsidian scales on that push and rewind that was a huge value swap onto meh definitely keeping themselves in the game if they can look to find more of those in the future yeah, Mez Mana is doing surprisingly well in this matchup compared to the one we saw earlier today. I feel like Echo is only getting better in this matchup from what we've seen. Kitty Shot now onto Zipai. Beautiful Mortal Coil onto Wads as they continue the damage onto him. He needs to continue the pressure. Asgrath, I don't think he's ever going to have a moment to really breathe in this matchup. Mez is going to be using that deep breath. That was a bit peculiar, but maybe a bit of a misplay there from Meh. But using that Nullifying Shroud now to keep himself out of crowd control as they look to continue this offense here on the by Really never making it comfortable for him. Done. He did a kidney shot, interrupt on Asgarath. Beautiful setup there by Echo. And I really don't know if the agents are going to be able to reliably play this composition because from what we've seen today, Echo is only getting better and better in this matchup. 
they like this is really one-sided like i mean other than that kind of swap to met like they didn't even get cloak i, I feel like before was was like pretty scared in this matchup and consistently having to like consider maybe pulling away from the engagement and in this matchup now he's just totally unafraid just running down z start to finish forcing tons of cooldowns really high pressure and seems like they're getting better and better i do think the agents need to bring in the ret warrior here in game number three um and possibly for the rest of the series and find a way to beat that mage lock like are you more afraid of mage lock as ret warrior or are you more afraid of rogue lock as ellie lock because those are the two debates that they're going to need to be having that was that deep breath maybe he's trying to immune a cc i don't i don't think any cc was being casted on him right at that moment but um goes for the nullifying shroud this is going to solidify that he's immune to crowd control and can play aggressive with his team gets in position to go for a sleepwalk gets the sleepwalk no tremor because kidney shot can't break it uh, and they go for the 100 oh fire breath and while shadow steps the knockbacks so they all connect with the fire breath and it's lights out so really good coordinated push there um on the side of echo and looking better and better like mercy is getting out good damage i, I feel like in the last series channel was actually out damaging swapsy i think uh on the warlocks but zpi is just not able to get out any pressure it seems like in this game i want do we have like a recount for how many dispels are happening is he just getting destroyed on his flame shocks or something uh because it, it just seems like he's really struggling to get pressure going i really what i what i'm so curious about in this matchup is i i, I can't help but feel like ret warrior can win this matchup like if we, i feel like they should really try the small map go go to hook point once again and play ret warrior you know mistweaver uh, and see how that one plays out. Um, I, I'm really, really curious to see if they can mix it up because uh, I feel like they shouldn't be that afraid. And I honestly feel like Admiral Esports made a few mistakes uh, when they were playing against this comp. I think Chanimal was left free a little bit too much, but okay, they're going with the large map. This is really surprising to me because I, I don't feel like this is going to work for the agents. Maybe they're just not mm. practiced enough. I, uh, but they just won with Threat Warrior. It seems like they'd be decently practiced <laughs> like on, on that composition. It seems really strange that they wouldn't try it, at least given how miserable, honestly, it looked for these last two games. Like there yeah. was one moment where it's like, okay, Matt took some damage, and then like that's it. Um, I, they didn't, I don't think they've got Cloak from Waz in any of the games either. So like they, mm, I, I don't know if I like this from the side of the agents, unless this is them just thinking like they can beat everybody else and they want to full run this um for the rest of the strings they do take away the big maps by doing this at least so if they have to revert back to ret warrior but they're still what empyrean or not empyrean sorry uh ashamanes and that's it is There's that the lot. last big map maybe like robodrome robodrome would Robodrum. probably be really hard um, yeah. with an evoker pulling people up top uh, maybe an underrated map honestly kind of maybe fun. yeah that, i mean that actually might be a really good map for the agents too just evoker warlock synergy i feel like robodrome is a really good location to go to but they're taking their full time they they could blind they could lock rat warrior on big map maybe it doesn't really matter and then they take a big map away from echo so they don't have to worry about mage lock that could be one way to play this yeah but if they just lose i mean what does that matter yeah. right say, like, <laughs> if they just lose right here then it doesn't look like i mean the games are not going in their favor whatsoever like like i said echo is only improving in this matchup uh, I kind of wonder what the agents need to do differently. Like, what, what could they even play? Like, let's think. I just feel like the assassination rogue with the Duster Warlock, like this composition that Echo's running, it's a really well rounded, right? Like, we've seen them beat Cleaves, we've seen them beat the Wizard Cleaves. Um, I feel like it would do well in any kind of like melee caster. So, I don't know. This is tough because Echo is really good at this composition. There's not a lot of people running uh, this composition, especially with the preservation evoker. So, you can kind of keep the enemy team guessing with that one. Uh, switch, switch Volpira. Uh, I mean, yeah, right here, it's not Destro. Not against yeah. Destro. Uh, uh, if it was Demo, sure, but oh, they're gonna mirror them. Oh, with Demo. This is a bold hmm. move. This is a bold move by the agents. They're gonna mirror them with Demo instead of Destro. Oh, I didn't even think about this as an option for them. Okay. Where are the what are the biggest differences we're going to see here, Sid? Um, I mean, I wonder who the target ends up being. Is it a lock race? Is it a rogue race? Like, uh, there's too many questions that I don't know the answers to. This isn't the matchup that we get to see very often. Um, I, I could see it being either. Like, if the rogue can't connect to the lock, then they just kind of go after each other uh, in the middle of the map. Maybe the locks are free casting. 
Demo is Demo favored over Destro. Like you get to stun during the go on the rogue. Um, the double MS is not really a big deal. Damage is probably comparable. What I don't, the only thing I'm thinking of is let's say this turns into a warlock race where Brunhitti's on Channel and Waz is on Mercy. Like who pulls ahead in that one? I feel like Mercy is gonna have an easier time getting off instant damage. Like is it gonna be easier to shut down Channel on the destruction warlock than it is gonna be Mercy on the Demonology Warlock? I don't, I feel like Destro, if you're running the instant cast build, which I think everybody is running, it probably gets yeah. more single target damage on a rogue than a demo can do. You're not going to get like, unless you're getting a hand of Gul'dan procs and a lot of demon bolt procs, I don't know if you'll ever get a hand of Gul'dan off uh, getting trained like this. So yeah, I think it's really close either way. Yeah, I think it's a bold move, but I, yeah. I think desperate times call for, you know, desperate measures. So the agents going into a mirror match. I wonder really how much they practice this composition. Um, Demonology Warlock, I think, is a lot more popular right now than uh, Destruction overall, but I feel like it's a bit redundant, right? Like the good thing about the Demonology Warlock is it pairs so well with classes that don't have that Mortal Strike, don't have that healing reduction. Uh, but the thing is, Rogue already brings that. So there's a bit of a redundancy there, and it's probably better to just have the burst damage and the more consistent damage that the Destruction Warlock is going to be able to bring. Um, but time will tell. We'll see what the agents can do. We'll certainly see here. Echo, agents, quite a lot going on behind the scenes. Agents have really been struggling here. They're going to switch up their comm and see if they can make it happen. We're heading into Empyrean Domain. Agents, really close to being knocked down to the lower bracket. All right. You know, the only thing, you know what this map has in common with it? What? Benruki's smile. Oh, wow. Benruki's smile brightens my day. Here we go. It's match point for Echo. <laughs> They're going to qualify to Championship Sunday if they can win here. It was looking at the start of the day like they were going to the lower bracket 3-0, but they win 3-2 over Admirals Esports. Now they buy 3-0 the agents, which could spell trouble for every team in this region if they can do it with this Destro assassination rogue. The agents are bringing in Brunhitti on the assassination rogue to mirror Waz, and I don't think anybody could have predicted this coming down to rogues uh, given the prevalence of Rep Held and so far, but it looks like it will uh, between these two teams as Brunhitti is looking to cross midfield along with Waz as well looking to get rid of those shrouds or get crowd control onto the evokers neither evoker has used shroud just yet knowing it's probably going to get sapped off sap on the channel mercy's is going to start some damage on the meh asgrath gets sapped where's Waz going to go met immediately shrouds to immune potential opener on himself fire breath purging off the hots here on the mercy trying to set the team up another sap on the asgrath was still not pulling the trigger oh that landslide it looked like it hit him but it looks like it doesn't Waz gets the opener gets stunned on his garrote not going to find the kidney shot here comes the tyrant from mercy he does get interrupted on it he's got the double fell guard out here so might be a bit troublesome kidney shot swap onto brunhitti mercy gets spell locked dismantle onto brunhitti slowing down his pressure dismantle onto was trying to stop the counter engagement brunhitti shadow steps over to channel was is on his back trying to keep him away now brunhitti switches back to was channel's out in the open channel could free cast here Meg goes for that rescue trying to maybe pre-rescue a smoke bomb but now he's into a kidney shot was could be in trouble there's a lot of stuns on the side of the agents they're gonna win right here was survives evasion is up and Meg is getting the heals out gets spell locked but that means that channel can free cast potentially gets corroded for a moment here come the dread stalkers on the channel ramping up the damage we can see fire breath out from met at the same time as trying to stabilize both teams trading evenly channel falling a bit behind is able to port to safety though yeah, he will portal away and avoid some damage. Both teams going back and forth. Both healers relatively similar on mana, but Brunhitti is forced to trade out the Cloak of Shadows. That was a beautiful fear there by Channel and getting some damage out here onto Brunhitti. Mercy's been doing a great job kind of avoiding the fight so far. You could tell they don't really want to go after him on that Demonology Warlock. They get a big kidney shot here onto Brunhitti. That's going to be the smoke bomb as well. So really good job there. Um, and it looks like Brunhitti will be able to reconnect to his target, but he is taking a lot of damage. Brunhitti is just under so much pressure. This is a triple portal coming in from Channel, and this is match point. If Echo can win this game, they will be making it to the grand finals. They should be very happy about it. You see Brunhitti right now. There is no defensive cooldowns left whatsoever, but they're making a play here onto Waz. Beautiful rescue there by man. Looks like he will be able to keep Waz alive. He's got the Cloak of Shadows, might have to make the trade as they put a lot of pressure here onto Brunhitti. He gets gripped away, but a cheap shot on Asgroth out of the gouge. Nicely done there by Waz, really setting up his team offensively, getting the pressure here onto Brunhitti, but it looks like Asgroth has weathered the storm, and both teams are relatively stable.
Oh, big chaos bolt onto Brute Hitty. This is match oh! point, and Brute Hitty is at 1%. Asgrath gets kicked. Pressure onto Waz as well. Big recovery from Met in this position. So back and forth. Asgrath slightly ahead on mana at this point, so long as they can stay stable. But Brute Hitty has nothing for the next kidney shot, and here it comes. Gouge onto Asgrath. Can they get the sleepwalk? They get the sleepwalk. Brute Hitty's in trouble. Asgrath trinkets. He doesn't have anything for seven more seconds. Can he keep him alive? Five more seconds. He's not going to be That's able it. to. And Echo will be making it to the Europe Grand Finals. Wow, such an impressive performance by Echo. They had a really slow start today, going down 0-2 in their first matchup, but they have really cleaned it up here, looking exceptionally strong on this Assassination Rogue, a Destruction Warlock with the Preservation of Ochre. I did not expect this series to be so one-sided. Yeah, me neither. I mean, really bold of Agents also to uh, lock in the, the mirror in the final hour, but uh, kudos to them for trying, Sid. Yeah, I mean, they were actually winning on mana. It's just they lost on setups. Uh, and that's the advantage of the Destro lock is every setup is really scary. Two Chaos Bolts on a Kidney Shot is like a, a kill every time. Uh, if you're able to find them, like Channel right here, Blast Brune Hitty almost kills him without even a Kidney Shot. Uh, and you can't really chase Channel. Channel is probably one of the hardest Warlocks in the game to stick to. Um, so trying to kill him is not really an option. They get a Kidney on him. Dark Pact immediately just turns it around. Kidney Shot goes for a Fear, gets interrupted. Um, but can just spam out instants. And I love Med just getting offensive with his team, spamming out Disintegrate, looking for those sleepwalks, and just adding enough damage to be able to make sure that they could get the kill right there. All right, Echo, what what a day for them. I mean, you can't, you guys kind of already said it. You know, they started off kind of on, on, you know, a little bit rocky, but they really ended strong. We are going to see them play again tomorrow uh, and we'll figure out you know who becomes the champion of eu agents we're going to see them also we're going to see uh them go into that lower bracket so quite a bit of elimination rounds to start off the day we can actually take a look at it here echo uh waiting for a opponent from that semi-finals that lower semi-finals so we've got three teams down there right now at the moment then and all three of them are, are pretty looking pretty good who do you feel like is going to make it out of the elimination bracket that's really tough. I mean, if so, for my way, I feel like it's tough because Admiral Esports runs similar compositions to Agents. So I think Admiral Esports has a big advantage in that one just because they saw exactly how that matchup played out and they're going to be able to implement those strategies against my way. So I would predict maybe Admiral Esports has an edge there. And then in the mirror match between Agents and Admiral Esports, um, they're both looking really solid and there's such similar rosters in terms of their composition and skill levels. I feel like that's another one that could go either way. Um, but both of them need to figure out what they could do if they get a potential rematch here against Echo because Echo, their first series of the day, incredibly close. Like they could have easily lost that one. Second series of the day was not close. Like they are only improving. So if the agents and Admiral Esports can't figure out something else, I feel like Echo is going to be walking away with uh, another win here. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. That's going to be, uh, you know, the third win for that org in the in the WoW esports world. So we'll see who their opponent will be soon enough, and that will be tomorrow. So make sure you're tuning in for that. But that's going to wrap up the EU games for today. We are now moving over into the NA bracket. First up on the chopping block, we've got Luminosity Gaming versus Team Liquid. Team Liquid, of course, is the team that made it from the gauntlet beating out Shall We in a very convincing 3-0 yesterday in those games. And now we're going to see them go head-to-head -head against Luminosity. So same thing in EU. We're starting off the North American bracket, Sid, with a, a really big game, really big one. I mean, this is grand finals quality, honestly, mm -hmm. between these two teams. And this is the first patch where I don't think Brain will be able to play a Holy Paladin, um, which means, honestly, I, I feel like c is going to have the edge uh, in terms of uh, kind of experience when it comes to that healer role. And what, what is Brain going to utilize? Are we just going to see mirrors from both these teams? Ret Demonology, is there some weird comp that Luminosity Gaming has been sitting on and they haven't revealed to us that they could bring out that would challenge um, c -Doo's team here? So I, I'm really excited to see this one. Like, this is definitely probably the, the most hype one for me of today. Yeah. I'm excited as well. Yeah, and I'm I'm really curious to see what Brain does as well. I think Holy Paladin is like one of the only healing specs we haven't seen yet this weekend. So is he going to bring it out like he always does? Or are we going to see some adaptations made from that team? Because Kawhi, formerly known as Kawhi, you know, they've been kind of dominating with the same specs for so long. And they've just, they've been masters at that composition and they've been able to make it this far. Will they be able to, to make it happen? Or are they going to be forced to switch off? We will find out soon. We're going to head to a break. Luminosity versus Liquid up next.
Welcome back, everyone. We just finished off the EU region for today. Echo will be moving on in the upper bracket. Agents going down to lower. Now we're on to North America. First up, we've got Luminosity Gaming versus Team Liquid Zico. That is absolutely correct. We got two of the big dogs right here. You know, Team Liquid, we saw them yesterday uh, kind of bringing out, you know, some of their uh, surprise picks, you know, some of their strats that they've been kind of holding on to. Uh, you know, they battled it out through the gauntlet. They were the gauntlet boss, and uh, they made quick work of their opponents, making it to here. And now, they're in the same position that we saw Admiral Esports in, you know, and they play very similar comps as well. 
uh, mine is kind of uh, kind of the wizard cleaves i guess but they're you know very melee heavy and they're in that same situation where they just got in through the gauntlet now they face off against the first seed now has been a bit of a meta shift since we saw luminosity gaming they've had some time to adapt here since they didn't also have to play in the gauntlet so it's going to be interesting to see you know what they've actually decided to bring to the table today mm -hmm. And Super T is something that you've mentioned quite a lot. We were talking about it before we headed to a break is Brain on that Holy Paladin. We know that that's the spec that he's best at, that he's known for. In your mind, it sounds like that's not something that you think would be a good idea for him to play. I think it, I mean, it's Brain, so maybe I won't say it's complete feed, but Holy Paladin <laughs> right now in the current meta, like anybody else, I would say it's you're, you're feeding uh, at this point in the competition at this level of play and the level of polish that all these teams are at. I don't think you can make a Paladin um, work, but Brain would be the 0.1% chance that you could. Um, but I think it's unlikely. I really think it's unlikely. I think Prev is going to bring out the Rep Paladin like we saw at the end of Shadowlands. Um, and then curious to see what they decide to pair with that, if they've got some kind of unique or cheeky pairing in mind that's going to be different than the other teams. You know, there's nothing in the rules that say uh, you can't play three DPS specs, so maybe Brain should just switch to Rhett also. <laughs> three Rhett's is Double better Rhett. than one, right? Three Rhett's exactly. is better than one. Yeah, you know, whenever, whenever, when life gives you problems, just throw ret. When life gives you rets, make. Le I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's game mirror. number one. <laughs> it's the, yeah, and then we're seeing a mirror. Said. And we saw the mirror between Liquid and Calvish's team to qualify to this point. So let's see where Luminosity Gaming are sitting on the kind of tier list of, of Ret Demo <laughs> Resto Shamans. c <laughs> is still bringing in that adaptation tech. I wonder if Drake is using the same pants that Mez was using that proc those haste buffs. We had the double Vulpira to deal with the demonology damage. So both teams expected this fully, I would imagine. Brain decided to stay Orc, though, and not Draenei, as well as c uh, Mez Condo Lightning Lasso immediately going to use Shield of Vengeance, Divine Protection. You should be able to tank this initial damage quite easily with those cooldowns. Drake is now stunned. Brain is stunned. Good coordinated assault here by Liquid, but where's the damage? Lightning Lasso to follow with the blinding light. Mez not able to connect too much. Prev just dark packs, portals back behind the pillar. Uh, Drake's now going to trade the, his shield of vengeance. They cut through that really fast onto Drake, but Mez is also getting blasted. He looks like he might want to be pulling away from the engagement a little bit. He's staying close to Sidu right now. We can see Sam portal away from the fight. Mez just trading with Drake in midfield as he's making his way over to Prev. Yeah, and we're going to see Mez now completely on DR from those fears. So he's going to be having some uptime here onto Prev potentially. He's already getting a decent amount of damage there. Sam, I am though as well, tanking up Drake right now. And there's a Hammer of Justice onto Brain. He gets Sanctuary there uh, by Drake on that Red Pile. Then Mez in a Lightning Lasso. So he's not going to be able to really respond there. And uh, it is going to be both Reds taking the most amount of damage right now. Both Warlocks still sitting at full HP. Death Call is coming out here onto Mez. But Mez does get topped off there. And Sam, I am chilling in that Earthen Wall totem. So Drake not going to be doing too much work right there as he does decide to swap onto Mez. And then Mez ducks into the Earthen Wall Totem as well. But that does finally fade. So Mez now actually in a lot of trouble here. Does catch a couple of heals there and he should be able to recover. Maybe not. Cedar caught up in an Axe Toss. Mez pops the wings and a nice Death Coil coming out there onto Prev as well. Damn I am. A kind of returning fire there onto the Warlock. And it actually allows Mez to stay aggressive. Doesn't have to pull back too much. Divine Protection now available for Mez. Shield of Vengeance as well before this done. He's actually taking a lot of damage through that, but it doesn't look like he's going to be losing too much HP right there as we do see Mez uh, kind of recover from a dangerous situation. But now th those defenses have faded and Mez actually getting knocked there. Beautiful knock and Mez so, so low. So he's greedy. trying to hold on to him. That is insane amount of greed. And finally, it is going to be Luminosity Gaming actually taking the first kind of major defensive there uh, on that push. Oh, now Drake getting set up. Double blind by Mez. Counter assault. Will the divine protection of Drake be enough to keep him alive here? Nature swiftness from Brain doesn't do anything. Drake is getting low, but he's managed to kite away and actually get crowd control on the Sea-Doo. No adaptation. Mez uh -oh. is in trouble. I think he's on forbearance. That could be it. Lights uh -oh. off of Mez. Hammer of Justice follow up. Mez will fall. And Luminosity Gaming surprisingly taking game one at two and a half minute mark. When we saw these comps going head to head yesterday, they were quite a slugfest, you know, pushing sometimes six, seven plus minutes. So very early win here from Luminosity Gaming. And again, like, I feel like we have to look at the talents. And one thing that I'm noticing that's really big from yesterday is Sidu was playing Unleashed Shield every game. Mm -hmm. Today, 
He's playing Sky Fury instead. Even though yesterday Sky Fury lost every game and Unleash Shield won every game, and Brain was playing Unleash Shield, and he Brain got a really good Unleash Shield. I don't know if we'll catch it in the replay. Yeah. Uh, I think it might be right it? here. It's pretty. It's somewhere around this point. He got an Unleash Shield on Mez that just like totally stopped his damage. Totally right here. That Unleash Shield, that little puddle of water under Mez's feet, just stopped a lot. Held him in place. Put him behind a bit. And then he gets coiled behind the pillar, that pathing, path and then knock, brain knocks him further behind the pillar. Like all that little bit of repositioning really put Mez in a tough spot. And uh, maybe the adaptation got punished here as well on Sidu because yep. he's got Spirit Link Totem, but because he's running adaptation, he gets crowd control, then he can't break it uh, and he can't connect the Spirit Link Totem as a result right here. He gets blinded before adaptation is up and, and Mez is on forbearance, so he can't really do much. Like he can like maybe pre sank but even that like this hammer justice even a second of it um and he's just gonna go down so really tough call like they just they squeezed right through that moment to be able to finish that um in game number one yeah well done to luminosity and uh that's gonna be this is a double elimination we are in the upper bracket at the moment so whoever does lose this one they're still going to be in for a little bit but starting right off the bat i mean luminosity they're taking that loss is that kind of a surprising result to you zico well i feel like this is a comp that liquid has been very very strong at and i mean i think we're going to see more uh, of this so uh you can't really count anybody out but i feel like so far luminosity has just been the team to beat so uh, in a way I'm not too surprised, but in a way, I am a little bit surprised because we've never really talked about Brain, you know, kind of swapping off of that Holy Paladin. He has done it a couple of times, but for the most part, for the large majority of his games, it has been Brain uh, playing that Holy Paladin. And today, he's on the Shaman, and, uh, you know, he's kind of going through the, 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 the trial here to kind of join the, the tribe of Shamans and, uh, you know, get his totem with his name on it. And I feel like so far, uh, Brain is definitely passing the test here. And um, going up against Sidu, you know, Sidu is like the he's like the the shaman of shamans. So uh, I feel like it's very very interesting to see, you know, kind of brain actually able to hold his own there. He also had a little bit of a mana lead there, but of course uh, that can also be attributed to you know his teammates maybe doing more damage and uh, you know his unleashed shield getting a little bit more value and things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see. But Luminosity Gaming. They're a team that's not afraid to go for mirrors. We saw them with their rogue shadow priest, and they basically dismantled everybody who tried to go mirror against them. Like they, sometimes they would lose one game, sometimes they would lose two games, but they almost never really lost those three games. And uh, they're just uh, the titans of North America, and uh, they're starting off strong. Yeah. Yeah, Lumina. I mean, it's a very different composition for them as well, Sid. And like, you know, I was kind of saying in the beginning of this, they've, they've sort of stuck with the same comp for so long and now here we are seeing them adjust like pretty drastically do you feel like that's just like because the meta is so different right now and it hasn't really been before enough for them to switch or like what do you make of that i mean they were using shadow priest rogue a lot using windwalkers a lot and i think shadow priest mm -hmm. is just not in a great spot in this patch so prev having to adapt to something else is going to be really important um and then rogues as well other than in eu i feel like if eu had some shamans in the in the final bracket some rest of shamans that i don't think waz would be having as good of a time as he's having right now yeah. um so <laughs> it's a little bit surprising uh there's only really minor differences between the builds like sam and prev the only difference is one ring prev is preferring a ring that has more haste than versatility whereas sam is preferring a ring that's more verse than haste and i mean i think haste is probably better because the warlocks playing valpira seem like they're not really a target um, so Prev might just be getting like a 0.2% advantage there on that part. But I feel like Unleash Shield is a really big deal. If you hit that on the ret right when he's bursting, he loses half his damage, loses half his healing. Seems like that was a really important reason why Calvish's damage was so low uh, against Mez's. And now Mez's damage is low versus Drake, I think for the same reason. Yeah, and you can see Sidu has that Sky Fury Totem. Uh, under his frame, he's playing Adaptation as well, so uh, not really changing his build up too much there. And you are going to see Brain doesn't have that Sky Fury, so most likely is playing that Unleash Shield still. And we're going to just have to wait and see here what ends up happening so far. Both teams kind of uh, leading with their best foot forward. Mez actually already using his Trinket, whereas Drake able to hold on to it. He actually gets dispelled there out of a Hammer of Justice as well, so no cross crowd control there onto Brain. They already, uh, no, they did not proc Sidu's Adaptation just yet. Uh, I wonder how they're going to kind of go and navigate through that. So they axed off Sidu, and now they're going to go for the Fear, and there it is. They proc Sidu's Adaptation. So now Sidu has no Trinket, essentially, for another minute. Mez has a Sanctuary coming up in five seconds, so 
they're gonna have a tough time kind of leading up that CC chain. But last time they used that blinding light, and uh, you can't really use that sanc uh, that sanctuary to remove that blinding light. So Drake could initiate the crowd control like that, and then uh, oh, he grounded it Hodge. Oh, that is beautiful grounding right there uh, by Brain there as well, and that's gonna allow him to you know once again just. To be able to play offensive, allow Drake to sank something else, and there's a sank now onto Sidu uh, out of that crowd control. Drake pushing in for the looking for the blinding light, but Mez actually pulling the trigger first there on the blind. Sidu gates away. Mez follows suit, and uh, they're just stalling for that adaptation to come back off cooldown. They don't want to be caught up in a similar situation as to that last game. Yeah, I think this is a wise move on their part, but Mez is going to fall behind on damage, I think, doing this. He's going to go for an Avenging Wrath play here. They stun Brain. Prev looks like he's the target. Big hits Whoa. on the Prev. Dark Pack going to be activated. Mortal Quill comes out. Mez gets stunned up as they're turning it around. Drake powering up. Is Mez going to fall here? Lightning Lasso onto C2, preventing him from healing, but Mez looks stable with the Shield of Vengeance, Divine Protection. And Prev seems to be more of a focus target here for the side of Liquid, really trying to put pressure on him, but he's baiting Mez into a bad spot and holding his ground. And now they're trading with Sam in midfield as well fears being cast on both paladins spelled out immediately demonic tyrant is out they're going to use wake of ashes to stun it that's a really good way to crowd control it as a rep paladin mez is going to get stunned in midfield though dispel but will it be enough can they get divine shield off of the back of this there's so much damage drake gets peeled by sam on that axe toss looking for fears mez gets knocked off the pillar for a moment but looks like he will be able to survive and still holds on to the divine shield yeah and, and mez right now Gonna be moving back to the pillar here, actually trying to chase the Warlock here maybe for a second, and uh, it's turning a little bit more into a Warlock race, but Mez still not quite uh, fully recovered there, but Ciro does drop a totem around the pillar, uh, that healing type totem should be able to keep everybody alive, Demonic Tyrant getting casted out here for Sam I am, can he get it? And he does get the Tyrant, so a lot of pressure coming out now from Team Liquid, but Drake actually I think feared it or stunned it, I'm not sure, Tyrant is not really doing much there the back line now finally getting some damage out so there's going to be a lot of pressure coming out here from team liquid can they get any big cooldowns but it is the question prev drops quite low already doesn't have that unending resolve so prev already down a major defensive and they could potentially try to take down the warlock a little bit later on i would say liquid are actually in the lead right now but here comes a full blind onto brain can he continue to change sidu building up a stormkeeper dropping the sky fury right now going for those big hits of damage but not able to find too much pressure just yet as he does fall behind a little bit but now actually going after drake with those stormkeeper zaps and he does get caught up in a long cc chain cedo actually stuck in this what are they gonna do here full hex gets casted out there as well onto cedo it's dr though do they have the damage to force anything from mez doesn't look like it's cedo finally leaving car control and i think mez is going to stabilize from that but both teams definitely trading blows right now and a big reason to why Cedar's playing that adaptation is because he's comboing it with the orb. Ooh. It can't proc on that Hammer of Justice, so it can only really proc on the, those big CC chains like Fear, like um, Blinding Light. All right, let's see what they can get done here. Drake is low, Mez gets stunned at the same time. Is Sidu ready for the hits here? Divine protection for Mez tanks the hits. Sealed Avengers, he'll be okay. Drake is swapping his attention to Sam in midfield. Prev is just playing open field, trying to bait Mez out into that corner on that little flowery patch. But Mez is not falling for the bait, just staying back, attacking Drake, trying to peel for Sam here. But he's just clobbering him. Sam down at half, has to use unending resolve at a critical moment when dampening is just starting to ramp, which could be deadly in the near future. Sam, I am getting a demonic gateway from behind the pillar here, but they're stacking up. This means they're going to get cleaved by Prev's pets. You can see those double fell guards Sidu knocks him away but Mez is in trouble divine shield and spirit link on the same push and it seems Ooh. like liquid might be falling apart right now big big defensive overlap there but can he get something back now from drake they have good pressure here full hex secured onto brain brain actually will trinket that one drake's trying to hold on to his divine shield so no overlap there from luminosity and they're gonna get a big big lead right there after that uh, overlap from liquid liquid kind of uh, dropping the ball a little bit right there and now you know with Cedar playing adaptation as well it is going to be absolutely devastating that next cc chain if they can he doesn't have adaptation right now as well so if they can just uh, get a cc chain onto Cedar, they might be able to actually close it out here on the side of luminosity range caught up in the hammer of justice big taking damage prev gets the fear can he get it doesn't look like it gets shut down there by sam i am Beautiful shutdown there on that fear. If you landed that fear, I could have been lights out there for Mez. Drake now dropping quite low there as well. He still has a lot of defensives to trade. He has his wings active right now. Big damage potential for Drake. But Mez also having his wings available. And he could pull the trigger on those as well. If they can get something. And here comes the setup. Blinding light onto Sidu. It breaks though from something. Full hex. And they do get a full hex onto Sidu right before his adaptation comes off cooldown. So they could potentially find themselves uh, finding some pressure here. But 
It is going to be Sam Ayam kiting defensively, and it will be Drake actually falling a little bit behind here. Mez playing defense excellently, but now they're going to connect onto Sam Ayam. He could be in a lot of trouble here. Sidhu pops the Ascendance, deflects it once again here, keeping his Warlock nice and healthy. Oh, I don't know about healthy. He gets kicked on the fear. He's still getting low. It might be over for him. No one any resolve for 15 more seconds. Cedar's trying to power through this with Ore Master. Drake's moving over to go for a stun. He gets a lightning lasso on Drake, trying to peel him. Stun onto Prev by Mez, trying to stall damage onto Sam. I am at all costs. Now he's got his unending resolve. Probably has to trade it almost within seconds of it coming off cooldown. Prev has his to trade as well. Both Warlocks under so oh. much pressure. Sam ports at 10%. Drake is pushing for the kill. Is he going to be able to finish him? He's not able to. He's peeling back onto Mez, trying to punish the overextension. Mez trades cooldown but it's deep into dampening. Mez can fall over. There's not a lot left for him. Is he on forbearance? He's got spell warding. He's holding on to it. Sam I am used on any resolve and dark pack. They're starting to stack up behind the pillar. That means they're going to get cleaved down by Prev. They're going to get cleaved down by Drake. They're just cowering at the pillar, trying to stabilize, recover, and find a moment to counterattack. But Prev has so many cooldowns. Brain still has spirit like Mez is still just cowering. He's got nothing here. He's stunned up at half health, ducking for cover on the pillar, trying to find any sort of opportunities. He stuns Prev just to stop some damage for now. And now going after Drake, who has no divine shield. Can they find a window of opportunity? Brain trinkets, ancestral guidance, big heals coming out from Prev brain right now healing tied down for Sidu, but dampening at 35 percent is just going to make this so difficult for both sides and at any point it feels like the power is starting to go in favor of luminosity game Mez. oh spell warding at five percent health immunity to magic damage mez is making a push he needs to get some work done with this but he's not finding enough damage and now sam could fall over he's getting crushed luminosity gaming looking to take the lead Sidu is stunned into stun into stun adaptation into link right at the last second but maybe everybody just dies Sidu is miracle worker right now keeping every Everybody alive with Ascendant's unbelievable healing, but it's looking like, oh my oh. god, he actually did it! He actually got his team back to full health! Prev is low, Drake is low, they could still win this at this point. Prev is now starting to get swarmed, Brain is struggling, trying to keep his team going, he's into the blinding light, and I can't believe it! See to the light at the end of the darkness is keeping his team, he gets the Hex! No the way! The Hex on the Brain, Drake's got nothing, can they finish him here? He's at 20% health, Mez is trying to go for the kill, but it gets denied. Spirit Link comes up from Brain, he keeps his team stable, but it doesn't look like Krev has gotten into the link just yet. Drake is still low. They needed a triple link. And I think just because of that, they might still be able to win. Mez has bubble. Mez has bubble. He could just trade that and go for the kill at any moment here. He's bubbled and he's going for it. Mez pushing for the win right now. Liquid trying to tie it up. Drake has nothing. He and he survived. I don't think so. Mez is all over him. They stun up Mez. Mez bubble phase. This could be a cross kill. Drake's so low. Shadow Fury comes out and he will drop. Can Mez die as well here though? Or can Cedar stabilize him? It looks like Cedar is going to be able to stabilize him. Prem getting shot down by Sam I am there in the back line. And it will be Team Liquid at 45% dampening battling through and making it a tie here one to one apiece that was some serious healing right there from Cedu at one point they were so done drake actually bubbled offensively there to try to take him down and Cedu somehow able to recover all of his teammates and make that final push and you know that's that speaks volumes to when you have that experience on the healer when you played shaman for as long as Cedu have you just know how to navigate those situations i think this is actually it so drake actually pushes in here uh, when they're all kind of dying and he kind of bubbles to go for the kill here it's uh, in a bit uh, when they're all kind of just dropping low here mez drops low drake pushes in they have the kill within their grasp uh, Cedar drops the spirit link right there and uh, drake actually uh, i think it's here pushes forward sam i am is super low mez is super low everybody's just basically dying here and uh, this is when sam i think trades his unending resolve it kind of comes back up and as soon as it comes back up he kind of tries to port away and try to hold on to it and they push they get that cooldown right here so drake pushes in gets the unending resolve and then here he's already bubbled offensively and uh, you know at this point Cedo has so much catch up to do they're kind of just dogpiling on that pillar uh, on the side of uh, luminosity and Sidu manages to do some some slick moves here. Look at Mez. He's on 1% HP right there when he gets that spell warding off. And uh, they manage to, to do a lot of work there to actually stay alive. And then here, towards the end of the match, Mez gets his bubble back. And even with that, it looks like the, Mez actually might go down here as well. As soon as that fades, he gets axe tossed and he drops dangerously low. And here, the Shadow Fury comes in from Sam I Am, just buying them that split second that they need to actually finish off the kill and to allow Mez to actually stay alive because that could have easily been a 2v2. Yeah, that was...
Oof. I, I, when, when we have mirrors like that and they end like that, it is just like your, your heart is pounding throughout the entire game. I can only imagine what the players are going through and now they've got to play like the rest of the series also. I mean, what, what's going through your head in a situation like that? Do you think Super T's as a competitor? Um, I mean, the big, I feel like what they're playing off here is like c experience on Shaman, like keep the game going long, keep the game going long. Let's see if Brain can play as effective as c does for as long as possible uh, is the main advantage right now to their team, at least is that is that is what it looked like in that game. So try and bring it to maps where c can carry. Uh, Tiger's Peak is going to be a pretty neutral map um, either way. Towards the end of that match, like it's just one of those power swings. Like Sidu survived the big swell of damage at 45% dampening, which means the brain's gonna have to survive a swell of damage at 55% dampening. So, <laughs> you know, a 10% difference, and Sidu almost didn't recover. So, just uh, it's all about when you time that hit when you get to that like nine minute, 10 minute mark. If you don't win with your cooldown push, like you're gonna be really far behind um, right at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've got Sidu. We know that he's been playing Resto Shaman for so long. And then we were talking about Brain on how he's going to adapt with Holy Paladin not being the best. In your mind, Super T, does it, does it look like Brain is comfortable? I mean, to me, from my perspective, it seems like he hasn't really skipped a beat here in adapting to this new healing class. No, I mean, I, I don't think <laughs> to last 11 minutes and win game one, I don't think that he's like... <laughs> If he is worse than Sidu, it's not by much, right? And it's it's probably little individual moments in the game that are deciding whether or not one of them is better than the other. Like, is one of them getting more hexes out at a key moment? Is the other one shutting down maybe the Warlock with Sheer better than the other one? Who's grounding more Hodges, right? Like, you'd have to go into the bot and, like, add up every little moment of each game <laughs> if you wanted to, like, calculate and give them a point score on who is the better Shaman uh, <laughs> at the end of the series. Because I don't think you could just blanket say that, like, brain is leagues behind Sidu because I don't think that's the case. No, no. Yeah, I mean, and it, you know, playing playing an alt in this kind of situation has got to be really nerve-wracking, especially, uh, you know, up against a team like Team Liquid. Now we are tied up. Like Sid mentioned, we're heading into Tiger's Peak and we're getting uh, yet another mirror here with these two teams. I mean, did, did you ever think we'd get the, the pleasure of having a situation like this, Zico? You know, we have these two titans of a team and we get to see them go off in a mirror match in the global finals for the North American region. I mean, this is just such a such a fun experience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of, you know, uh, interesting to see, you know, everybody just picking up new classes, stepping in, uh, you know, stepping up as well. You know, we haven't really said too much about Sam I Am, but Sam I Am yeah. also, uh, we didn't see him too much on Warlock. We have seen him, you know, here and there, picking up the Warlock, picking up, you know, Shadow Priest and, uh, you know, kind of being the, the caster of his team, uh, playing more things than just the mage. But uh, I feel like he's been really stepping it up here on the demo Warlock as well. You know, he was crucial uh, in getting them that kill at the end and also, you know, kind of getting out cleanly you know he was kind of like the getaway driver after they uh, pulled off the heist <laughs> there at the end so i feel like sam i am you know he's been doing a good job he shut down you know some key moments as well you know tyrants coming out and just stalling you know and there's a meta game going on between all of these warlocks you know uh, within the match who can shut down the other warlock more who can get more uh, you know fears who can you know set up more crowd control who can get his tyrant off more often etc so uh, i feel like it's just awesome to see you know all of these individual players uh, kind of do that and same thing goes for Prev of course also picking up that Warlock right now but Mez uh, needs to be picked up here by Sidu as he does drop to about 40% HP and Sidu loading up that Stormkeeper dropping that uh, big big Sky Fury going for those crits and you know a Shaman with that uh, with that Stormkeeper loaded up can do a lot of damage here and it could be a surprising amount of uh, pressure coming out there onto Drake so he definitely needs to be ready for that and so far Nobody trading out any big cooldowns just yet here in the opening stages. Both teams definitely looking even right now. Yeah, Mez needs to push up here. I think you don't want the ret on top of the Shaman because otherwise Sidu's totems are going to get stomped and Brain's totems aren't going to get stomped. I think a Healing Tide totem was already killed. Sidu's going to be down that cooldown, whereas Brain is going to hold on to it. And this is really an efficiency game. Like, are you getting maximum value out of all of your spells? And every single GCD is going to matter um, throughout this game. Lightning last one, Drake, but Mez is feared. He can't connect. Drake is actually just doing so much damage. Sam going to portal back behind the pillar, try and find some fears onto Drake, hold him in midfield. But Drake is still just charging forward. Brain's trying 
trying to keep him aggressive uh, in this position. Still holding on to Healing Tide, but you don't want to hold on to the cooldowns forever also because you want to save your mana, right? If you're too greedy with the cooldowns, it's going to cost you mana and you might lose because of that later on. Still holds on to it. Earthen Walls are down. Mez gets stunned up. Shield of Vengeance is going to come through on that Wake of Ashes hit from Drake, but Drake is doing so much damage. He swaps to Sam out of nowhere, blasting him down below half. Is he just going to die through Earth? This is insane damage on a Sam I am right now. See, it looks like he's going for a Stormkeeper. Sam I am goes for Unending Resolve, trying to get some counter pressure and maybe get a better footing here because Brain has been able to get really good positioning. Mez gets stunned up in midfield. See, to wrapping around the corner. I think he might have dispelled a fear or something. They're not able to dispel that Hammer of Justice. Mez is going to sit through it. And I mean, baiting the dispel on the Shaman and then stunning the Rep Paladin in full could definitely be a good way to win. Absolutely, and right now Prev uh, stacking up here with Brain, and it's going to make it kind of easy here for Mez to actually push forward, but uh, Drake kind of blocks it, uh, makes sure that Mez kind of also has to duck back there, and so far positioning is uh, pretty even for both teams. Mez trying to push forward here and trying to get some crowd control landed. Sidhu uh, also still playing with that adaptation, and Brain still playing with that trinket, so that's definitely a key difference between both of these shamans. And Mez once again now actually getting blown up here, trades out the Divine um, Shield right there. Actually, not the Divine Shield, uh, the Divine Protection right there, and uh, that will be at least a small victory there for Luminosity, but now they're trying to return the fire here onto Prev. I really feel like the big story right now is that Samayam doesn't have that unending resolve, so if they can somehow punish that, that's going to be their ticket to get that Spirit Link, and then they can use that to potentially punish Mez and try to snowball that into a bubble. That's really their opening right now where I think they need to pressure, uh, but Samayam is making it very difficult for them to actually go on him to see how he's line of sighting essentially Prev and Brain staying in that little corner over there, just free casting onto Drake, doing a great job there, just ma not making himself a, a target and getting maximum DPS. Mez in a hodge right now, taking a lot of damage. Cedo actually in a coil. Prev gets the fear. They proc adaptation there as well. And Mez taking a decent amount of check, a decent chunk of damage right there. Cedo still have a lot of catch up to do here. Can he get the damage? Can he get the healing? No, he will trade that Spirit Link Totem. So another big cooldown here off of the checklist. Sam I am now has his unending resolve back. So it's going to be all about going after Mez uh, if you are Luminosity Gaming. I think it's an okay trade when you don't have adaptation because you're not going to be able to link if you get CC'd. So using that when you can, saving Divine Shield, but it is a major cooldown out of the way. Mez Shield of Vengeance here. Cedar is cracked up. Brain's going for a hex. Mez is going to gate to safety behind the pillar as Brain was pushing forward and getting aggressive. Now they're swapping to Drake, trying to punish him for pushing in. Are they going to be able to get a big cooldown from him? He's at 30% health. They'd love to get a Divine Shield here, but Shield of Vengeance blocks it. And, and now Mez and Drake are going to go back to trading with the Warlocks, it looks like. But Sam is taking the brunt of it at the moment. Cedu trying to do his best to keep his team going until that deep dampening point where a big swing could definitely win the game for either side. Mez is lightning lasso. It's stunned on the Cedu. Drake trying to go for the win here onto Mez. They're so close to getting Divine Shield, but Cedu's Ascendance is up. Big heals are coming out. He's got Sky Fury down. He might be going for a Stormkeeper. Curious to see if he's loaded a, a Stormkeeper here. Lightning lasso onto Drake running around the corner to avoid the interrupt, pinning Drake in the midfield. And he's still not going for the, the Stormkeeper just yet. The Fell Obelisk is going to get killed off here. Drake's trying to get on Sam. Sam portals back behind the pillar. Dreadstalker's called in. Lava Burst added in onto Drake as well. But a sentence from Brain should block all of this damage in just a moment. Sam going for a coil. Where's that coil going? An Axe Toss here now onto Sea-Doo. And it doesn't look like they chain it into anything. It looks like it got sanctuaryed immediately by Mez. Shield of Vengeance up for Mez. He's going to feel pretty durable to make a push with that absorption effect. But at the same time, Drake looks like he's comfortable. He's getting punished behind the pillar. Is Drake going down here? Whoa. Brain pushes forward to try and save him. And Drake does manage to recover. But it's those types of swaps that could cost you the game. And Brain's actually into a full hex from c -Doo. This could be a big opportunity into a blinding light. This crowd control chain is insane, and Prev's in trouble. I think he hellstoned there. Maybe a bag of tricks. He's still just maybe dead. He's Whoa. behind the pillar. They're going for it in game number Whoa. three. Will they take him down at 20%? Brain gets the link just at the last possible second, and this is the push that Liquid needed, and maybe it's still going to win the match. He's just dying outright right now. The pressure is crazy here. A huge swing from Liquid. Were they pulling their punches for the first five minutes? I'm not sure because that was an insane push. Absolutely insane pressure. Prev is honestly lucky to be alive right there. He just got his port back. He just got around the corner right there. He lived on about, you know, sub 5% health right there. So definitely some good work. But Mez getting punished here as well. And Drake now as well. Potentially might have to use his Divine Shield as well here. It's getting very chaotic. You can tell both of these healers definitely struggling with keeping up with dampening. Drake's not out of the woods just yet. Drops to 10% HP right there. Activates the Divine Protection. It should be enough defense right there. He does get the Shield of Vengeance as well. Now Sam, I am in a lot of trouble here. 
Samayam with no unending resolve. What is he going to do? He stands in the earth wall totem. He tries to fake cast the kicks. Teleports to Sidu. Sidu casts uh, the healing surge. And he does manage to stabilize him. But Mez is left behind with no divine shield. Mez is the real target right here. Mez could go down. Do they have any interrupt? Mez might just die. Double Shadow Fury coming out onto Sidu and Sam into a DR Axe Toss. Can they take him down? The Spirit Link comes out in the nick of time, keeping Liquid in the fight here. What a back and forth game. Just a second ago, Prev was the one dying. All of a sudden, Mez finds himself in checkmate, just barely hanging on by the skin of his teeth. And now Sam I am getting pressured here, gating back to Sidu right there. And Mez stacking up here with his team. What is Luminosity going to do? Are they going to push or are they going to try to keep their composure, keep their position and try to win on mana? Right now, Brain is ahead. Sam I am still is just dying. dying here to the pets. Sam is just dead behind the pillar right now. Activates down any resolve. Is that going to be enough? The Tyrant doing so much work right there. for Prep finally gets stabilized here. I don't know who's going to take this one. So this is way too close to call. Okay, sidu has got Ascendance. He's got a big power play. Prev ports back behind the pillar. Brain's struggling to get back to him. He's caught in a blind. Mez is going for the win right here. Can he connect? He coils him behind the pillar. Full Hex from Sidu. And Prev is getting crushed right now. They're going for it. Can they finish him? They can't. And Prev gets a precog proc, I think. He was able to stay alive. I can't believe it. He survives that. Now Sam is on the back foot. Drake is falling behind, but he's got Divine Shield. Drake's in a power position like Mez was in the last game where he can play aggressive. He can play reckless. Take some risks and go wherever he pleases. He gets knocked back by Sidu, but he gets knocked to Sam. Sam portals back behind the pillar. Prev pushing forward for a coil into Sidu. Sends up the Dreadstalkers trying to keep Mez behind. Sidu is working with nothing in this position. Both of his teammates are at 30%. Is he going to be the light at the end of the tunnel for his team in game number three to get them to match point or will his partners fall in just a moment? He's struggling. They're all behind the pillar just trying to stay alive. Just huddling for cover. They're pressuring Drake as he pushes forward. Are they going to collapse on him? Drake Divine Shields to go for the kill at the same time. Mez is charging in maybe at towards Brain for crowd control. He gates back to the balcony. Sam is getting low. Sam port. Sidu's in a stun. Mez is down to half. Drake gets knocked away oh. by Sidu. Sam might be able to recover here. He's trying to fish for a fear. He's not going to find it. Mez is just hugging this pillar right now for dear life. They relay the gateway for an escape. Mez has to spell warding himself. He's immune to magic. He's trying to make a play here, but the pets can still hit through that spell warding. And the healing tide totem is down for Sidu. They need to pray this healing tide totem doesn't get killed. Drake is moving in. He kills the healing tide totem. They're going to lose that recovery. And Sidu has absolutely zero mana left. He's kept his team going for so long. Avenging Wrath available on both sides, but Drake has a cooldown to trade, and Mez doesn't. Will Drake be able to survive the stun to make the trade? They'll blinding light on the brain. They need to make the trade. Spell warding at 20%. Who will fall first? It looks like oh. Mez will be the first threat to fall as Brain's Link comes out in the nick of time, and Luminosity moves to match point. Luminosity, they, the one moment where Brain actually is able to sit down for just a split second and get a little bit of mana back is ultimately what kind of decides this one, I feel like. Him having a little bit of a mana lead, just able to hold on a little bit better there in terms of mana, really allows them to continue to have that lead in the end there. Sita was completely tapped. He literally couldn't do anything more uh, for his team there to keep them in the fight. And uh, we're going to see it. I think it was around, actually, uh, this is earlier in the match here. Uh, but uh, this is a big push here onto Mez. This is where they get the Divine Shield. And Drake also almost has to trade his own here, but he does manage to get um, that Divine Protection instead, uh, which is coming up there in three seconds, two, one. And then he instantly has to trade it right there. And uh, he manages to stay alive because of that. And then in this situation, Drake doesn't have his Divine Shield because he just popped it uh, kind of offensively. And then Mez pops his Spell Warding right here. And Drake still has his Spell Warding available. And that's going to allow him to make that final push. You know, they're just staying one major cooldown ahead of Team Liquid in this one. And there was so many close calls as well. On the Warlocks, uh, you know, Preb... Honestly, uh, very, very close to going down earlier on in the match here. You see Mez here uh, kind of going for it. And Drake still has that spell warding. As soon as he comes out of that stun, he trades the spell warding. And then he pushes in here. And Mez just has nothing to work with right there. Brain comes out of the CC, trades out uh, that uh, Spirit Link totem. And uh, I mean, that was a, a crazy, crazy game right there. I feel like, uh, you know, it, it was just insane to watch, honestly. Sidu. Uh, did a lot. Look at that. 18 million healing, 1.4 million damage compared to Brain. Um, and uh, look at that damage from Prev and Drake, though, compared to Mez and Samayam. I feel like uh, Drake was able to get a little bit more damage off there. You know, 2 million is pretty significant right there, as well as a little bit more healing, actually, as well. So uh, I don't know what Drake... Uh, Drake is just... He's just that guy, you know? Uh, like, anytime he picks up a <laughs> melee, he's just that guy, you know? He's just... He plays he's rogue. Guy. He's beating all the rogue mains. He plays Windwalker, which is his, you know, technically his main, I guess. Uh, and he just looked so good at it. Now he's playing Wrath, and he just looks absolutely insane on it as well.
Yeah, it just kind of shows the skill of this team, Luminosity. They's all, they've always been that team that I, I, someone was mentioning it earlier, you know, even if they're kind of down a couple of games or somebody figures out how to best them once or twice, it's like they always just bounce back right, right back. And I feel like they're doing that right here as well. They've adopted this new composition. They're beating a team like Team Liquid with CD on his main class. I mean, that's an, an insane thing for a team to be able to pull off. So Luminosity just proving once again why they're at the top like they are, you know, and why they've been just sort of completely controlling the North American region for so long. And uh, Liquid, they have a chance to turn this around. They could tie it up here. We're heading into Maldraxxus. Uh, it's it's best of five. So they've got uh, no more chances left, essentially, to lose a game here in this one. But are they going to be able to pull it off, Sid? I mean, what's it looking like for you? Uh, I mean, it's so tight, but that game felt a little bit more close uh, on the side of Luminosity Gaming. Um, or, or sorry, the gap is starting to get a bit bigger for Luminosity Gaming in that last game. And you could see it on the scoreboard. Um, like c is getting a lot of, uh, you know, efficiency out. But if his DPS can't keep up on the overall pace, then when you get to that dampening point, like the, the trades are just not there. Um, so they definitely just need to be focusing on maximizing their pressure, uh, making sure they're always hitting a target. Um, but I wonder if they're changing comp at all. Like, is there any possibility of that with Maldrax's Coliseum? Like, any adjustment whatsoever? Because I feel like Liquid is the team where if they think a comp has a higher advantage to win, that they would be the team that takes that opportunity. Um, but I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like, unless, like, Rhett Windwalker we talked a little bit as being a possibility. Um, so, like, does Trill come in maybe on match point as some sort of, like, closer to try and turn this around and, and create some differences here? Uh, but it is really impressive for Luminosity Gaming. Like, it, when it's a Windwalker meta, they're playing Windwalker Mage winning every tournament. It's a Rogue meta. They're immediately playing Rogue winning every tournament. It's a Rhett meta. We're playing Rhett every game. And now if they can win this tournament as well with that, like, the adaptability on their side um, is quite spectacular because very few teams can do this where they pick up the meta every single patch usually one team mm -hmm. has a, a meta where they just can't do it and they're struggling and we don't really see them performing very well so this would be an insane feat on their part and it looks like they're not making any changes it's gonna be a mirror match maldrax's coliseum a really big map try and get some distance um try and get this game elongated a little bit further um but again, if, if Cedar's one player and he's playing more efficiently, but Drake and Prev are two players playing even just 5% more efficiently, the math doesn't add up there, right? Like uh, you're, you're going to be 5% behind still on that trade. So man, Sam, I just need to be laser focused. It's a super tight matchup. You got Curse of Tongues to deal with, trying to min-max keeping that up while still maintaining your damage, trying to land roots on pets at the same time to maximize your damage. Like there's all these little efficiency moments um, that all matter. Like if you're maximizing them you're you're building a huge lead over a 10 minute game there is a bit of a difference I'm, I'm looking at the companion right now there is a little bit of a difference between what drake and mez are doing mez is going for more haste whereas drake is going for versa mastery a little bit more so uh, there there is some pieces where you don't really have a choice but to go for haste versa but then there are some pieces where you can actually choose if you want versa mastery or versa haste and i'm looking at like for example the cloak uh, that drake has is the versa mastery cloak uh, whereas mez is running with the drape which is the haste versa cloak and also same thing goes for like the belt for example drake running versa mastery belt whereas uh, mez is running the haste versa belt so mez is gonna have more haste drake is gonna have more versa mastery and i feel like the versa mastery uh even he's going for <clears throat> they both have those legs that we saw mez use as well uh, and they're both, uh, you know, playing with the uh, Infurious War Boots, uh, which is uh, pretty standard stuff. Um, but, you know, there are a couple of items like that where, you know, uh, mainly the cloak, uh, the the belt, as well as uh, the wrist. Uh, Mez is all going haste versa there, whereas Drake is going versa masteries. And Drake did more damage, a significant uh, amount, actually. He did 12 million compared to 10 million damage. You know, it's a pretty decent chunk of damage. Now, that obviously, it's not only because of gearing, but maybe the gearing does help. And it is interesting to see kind of how every single player is kind of doing the same thing but slightly differently you know 
Yeah, we got little tweaks here. It's match point. Luminosity Gaming looking to make it to the semis in North America's grand finals. Will Liquid be able to deny them and win two more games in a row? Drake in a lightning lasso. Mez in a lightning lasso. Both teams mirroring each other. Prev seems to be falling behind, though. Initially, Brain gets spell locked. Big power moves here by Liquid, but Prev forts behind the pillar. They're forced to swap back to Drake. He divine protections immediately to reduce that damage. Grounding totem on the Stormkeeper. Lightning bolt of Sidu preventing its pressure. Triple Shadow Fury from Sam I am. Mez and Sam I am looking a little bit more confident, at least in the initial stages of game number four. Yeah, and Sido already kind of uh, sent his Sky Fury, sent his uh, big damage there as well in that push. Uh, so he's not going to have that available for a little bit. Sido actually getting an Ascendance there as well. And here comes the Blinding Light onto Brain. What are they going to do? Coil onto Mez, trying to shut down the setup before it happens. Into the fear there onto Mez. So Prev realizing the situation he's in and immediately kind of going for uh, the counter pressure. Summons the Tyrants here as well. Tyrant so far though, getting kicked by Mez, getting war stomped. And now finally Tyrant is going to be able to cast here. Mez caught up in a dangerous situation trinkets trades out the shield of vengeance and trades out the divine protection so mez having to use a little bit of cooldowns there but it's not his divine shield and that situation could have been a lot worse and now once again getting fear spam drake now receiving the same treatment that mez just got uh, with the lightning lasso with the fears and just being slowed down here by the warlock shaman combo right there and uh, i feel like that's a big thing in this matchup you know how the lock and the shaman plays together against the red and kind of the red on the opposite side uh, doing the same thing there so whatever lock shaman can kind of shut down the red more and get more pressure that's the team that's going to essentially be a little bit more ahead mess having to pull back right here is a big reason maybe to why his damage output was a little bit lower in that last game uh, situations like this where you just can't get aggressive whereas drake he's constantly hitting something he's constantly uh, in their face and he's just having a better time right now against sam i am and Sidu compared to mez versus the uh, brain and prev oh hammer justice stun on brain good double stun but prev peels with the mortal coil prev gets feared sam i am taking some damage here is he gonna portal away from drake he's holding a midfield there's the portal back behind the pillar now mez is exposed mez is pushed really far up Sidu gets stunned mez is in trouble here it's Whoa. match point for them is mez gonna go down he's critically low shield of vengeance so greedy he doesn't want a divine shield at that moment in time and manages to get away with the greed here now drake is he gonna get punished as he's pushing closer to Sidu? Uh, but doesn't look like Bubble. Will. both times going to recover and Drake actually bubbled on that push so that does allow Liquid to squeeze through with a slight advantage off the back of that greed yeah, big cooldown trade right now. Prev also in dangerous situation right now. Mez doing a lot of work here. There's the double blind coming out. They're going to go after Drake here potentially, but Sam I am and Cedar not on the same page there. Sam I am and Cedar just kind of kiting back there while Mez wanted to get aggressive, and that might come back to haunt him here. He doesn't have that divine protection for another 10 seconds. Mez could be in a lot of trouble here. Big damage coming out here from all members of Luminosity. Can they get the bubble? He has the divine protection in five seconds. Cedar though saves the day here with a big heal. Another big swing of damage, but another big heal here by Sidu. I don't know if that was the actually Spirit Walker's Grace or if he got a precog right there, but Sidu definitely working some miracles right now, but Mez still taking a lot of damage. That's going to be the Spirit Link and the Divine Protection there uh, being used from Liquid. So they do manage to get themselves at least one large cooldown there from Sidu on the side of Luminosity, but they're now still pushing for more. There's no Divine Protection here since they overlapped it. That could be the Divine Shield from Mez. He trinkets out, trades out the Shield of Vengeance there instead. Does get that Divine Protection back as well as it is on a quite a low cooldown. And he does manage to survive another deadly push there. Drake going back to his team right there. Cedar actually might be trying to sit down for a drink, but immediately as soon as he does, threaten with that drink. Luminosity sends their pet on him. We start pushing in to get aggressive here. All right, now we can see Liquid taking the strat here. Axe Toss, the Shaman, and Hammer of Justice, the Rep Paladin. That's what was happening to Mez. And I think if um, Liquid mirror that strategy, it's going to be very dangerous for Drake having no Divine Shield. Nature Swiftness comes out for Brain, but Brain is still struggling to keep Drake at 100% health at this point. Mez is charging towards Prev. Drake looks like he wants to go after Mez, but he's also moving towards Sam at the same time. Lightning Lasso on Mez, just maximizing the stun lock on the Rep Paladin. Seems to be really important. Now Drake's stunned up by Sidu, but Mez is falling behind. Here comes the final Reckoning, a big swing of damage on to Mez and he has to Divine Shield right when a big heal hit him at the same moment as well, which is really unfortunate. They had that big lead and now they're not going to be able to play with as much confidence and most importantly Drake's Divine Shield will come up off cooldown in two minutes as opposed to four. Like surviving four is going to be really tough for Mez at this point in the game. Can they rotate their cooldowns and falling behind on mana? Here comes that Axe Toss Hammer of Justice combo. Mez is isolated. Will he fall? Earthen Wall Totem's protecting him for a moment, but even with that Earthen Wall Totem, he's still kind of dying through it. Drake at the same time not taking favorable trades. 
Prev recovers here with that mortal coil, assisting Brain with the heals. Mez getting spam feared. Prev just spamming fear at the moment. Just all full DRs, just trying to min-max as many GCDs away from Mez as possible. And Mez is just struggling there. Is he going to gate out of this fight? He gets Unleashed Shield. Cedar's trying to heal him up. He's caught in a lightning lasso. Looks like he gets spell locked by Sam I am, but now spell lock not available for Prev. He gets rebuked at least by Mez, but Mez is still just dying at this point. He just can't stay offensive with his team at this point, it seems like, as we can see Drake moving towards Sidu. Is he going to go for some crowd control? He's just attacking Sam, kind of playing close to Sidu. Both Rat Paladins in an aggressive position at this point, maybe trying to snipe the healing stream totems. Here's that axe toss. That's that hammer of justice. Mez trinkets and sanctuaries. Whoa. Will that be enough? Shield of Vengeance activates, but they've already cut through that. Now they're swapping back onto Drake. 18 seconds away from his Divine Shield. Brain powers up with the Ancestral Guidance. Going to be giving his heals an extra boost, and that should be enough to survive during this push. And Mez, once again, just struggling to stay aggressive. Is he going to fall over? Oh. Here? Cedar's trying to save him, but that Unleashed Shield getting some big value. Cedar powers through it, which is Healing Surge after Healing Surge, and manages to keep Mez alive. Yeah, this is match point right now. If Mez goes down, it's going to be Luminosity advancing to the semis here. Can they take him down? Lightning last one to Sidu. Mez dropping dangerously low. Sidu actually manages to push in here. He's getting ready to Spirit Link. I think he's going to have to drop it. And there it is. Spirit Link totem coming out from Sidu. He still has his adaptation to work with as well. And I think he might have to proc it as well if he gets pushed into another crowd control here. Mez still not feeling too confident. What's Mez going to do here? He's got nothing to work with. 30 seconds away on that Divine Protection. He has the Spell Warding and he, he's being very greedy with it but he might have to pull the trigger onto that one it's caught up in a hammer of justice but a big heal from Sidu Prev pushing in for CC but Sam I am shuts it down Sam I am getting a beautiful fear right there but Prev finally gets the coil into the fear Brooks the adaptation Mez dangerously low once again is he going to be the spell warding here for Mez or is he going to be able to get away with the greed here and it looks like greed is good Prev now dangerously low here takes a lot of damage there from Mez but they do shut down the connection there Mez doesn't feel confident enough to push in there and go for the kill Drake now has his Divine Shield back. Mez still 50 seconds away from that cooldown, and Drake can just do whatever he wants, basically, at this point. They need to try to shut down the game before that bubble comes off for Mez. 40 seconds away, and here comes oh, the no, push. Double it. blinding light. This could be it. Cedar's in a crowd control. Can they get the Hex? Rain gets potentially the game-winning Hex, and Mez trades out the spell warding to stay alive in complete oh. defiance. They're turning Fear around now rain. onto Prev. Prev, how are you going to stay alive? Rain's in crowd control. Full Hammer of Justice on the brain. DR Hex as well. Prev trades. Can he make it to his healer? They have the Spirit Link Totem available. But can he actually exit that crowd control? He might need to drop it here. Brain chasing his Warlock. He gets stunned now. And what is he going to do? He finally does manage to get the cooldown off. Mez, 10 seconds away on the bubble, Sid. And I don't know if he's going to be able to actually get that and then push for the win for Liquid. Five, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. Mez is on the run. Two seconds, match point. Two oh. seconds, one second. Divine Shield available. He's got to press it as soon as he gets it, I think, here and Divine Shield immediately Whoa. back on cooldown for Mez. Now Prev on the back foot trying to get back behind the pillar. Sidu has zero mana. Sam gates in offensively. Mez needs to win the game. Sam needs to win the game. They know they've got nothing left. Somehow they're going to have to power through all of the cooldowns of Luminosity Gaming if they want to stay alive and take it to a game number five. They're just dogpiling on top of them trying to rip them apart with nothing left. They're in complete shambles. Sidu procs an ascendance. This might be key. They stun Prev. They're, oh. they're pushing through the pain. They're pushing through it despite being totally devastated, despite being ravaged with nothing left. They're trying to push down Prev, but Mez has to retreat. He's back behind the pillar. Cedar's trying to pick him back up. Sam I am is trying to solo Prev here. He gets a fear on Brain. Can Sam take Prev down at this push? He needs more fears on the Brain. Mez is charging forward valiantly with nothing left. His healer into crowd control. He has to duck for cover, and he looks oh. like he will go down in the final seconds of Game 4 in Luminosity Gaming, man. This team can adapt to anything. Wow, that was absolutely insane. These games, they have been so, so close. Luminosity Gaming showing up to play here. This is what they've been practicing during the kind of the pause between when the cup finals happen and the grand finals, of course, this weekend. And they look absolutely scary, man. So much trades back and forth. Really, this team is just in sync, doing all of the perfect trades, never really overlapping defensives, but so many close calls as well. You know, Team Liquid, 
Madrid. What an insane series from them as well here, managing to get that one win and, you know, back and forth here. So many close calls, taking down Mez and then swapping it around, trying to take down Prev. And I just, you just don't know who's going to actually win this one. Look at Mez here. He just got his bubble back two seconds ago, immediately pulls the trigger, catches one heel, and then immediately starts zagging. And look at that. Look at his push onto Prev here. I don't know how he stays alive. He actually gets the spell warning, I do believe, and manages to stay alive for a little bit with that, and then manages to recover. Goes out of the earthen wall totem. Brain here, just in the back line, spamming out those heels, looking for the game-winning play here. And look at Sam I am basically 1v2-ing them, but on the opposite end, you got Prev as well, or sorry, Drake, going for the 2v1 there in the back line as well. Mez wants to push in. He wants to try to win the game right there, but he's not able to. Drake just pushing out way too much pressure, and then Prev, of course, getting that big tyrant there at the end to really just add insults to injury, and this was another close call here onto Prev. Look at that. Prev is super dead right there if they just connect a little bit earlier with that damage, but Brain manages to get that Spirit Link totem right there, manages to gate a way to safety and manages to kind of recover and then they turn it back around onto Maz. He's just kiting. He's just waiting for that bubble. Two, one. Now it's ready and now he has to press it right there and it's just uh, such a back and forth uh, series here between these two teams. I could easily see this being a rematch later on in the tournament but for now, it's going to be Team Liquid dropping down to that lower bracket and Luminosity kind of celebrating a well-deserved uh, victory. Yeah, I'm a little surprised, uh, to be honest, that that one didn't get taken to a game five. I mean, at least it's not a complete sweep from Luminosity. Uh, Cedus team was able to get one victory. In your mind, Supertease, is this a composition that you'd like to see Team Liquid return to? Uh, I mean, it depends on if there's literally anything else available or if this is just the like epitome comp uh, of the patch. To me, it seemed like Luminosity Gaming had like more of a strict pattern of strategy. Like it's Axe Toss Healer, Hodge Paladin every time on cooldown, like always locked in and dialed into that. And that's what's really important in a tournament is that you have like a clear strategy, that, a very simple, clear strategy that you're trying to do throughout the game. And you don't play too loose around it unless you really need to. And because they were getting so many stuns over and over and over, it really stopped Mez from connecting as much as he would otherwise be able to. I, I saw uh, Liquid doing it a bit in that game, but it seems like consistently Luminosity Gaming were hitting that crowd control timing more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, incredible to see them adopt to this composition. Well, Luminosity 3-1, to one, sending down Team Liquid to the lower bracket. We'll see them play once again, and they are going to be facing off against the loser of this series that we've got coming up next here. It's another North American one, Golden Guardians versus Where's Gordy. Both of these teams fought extremely hard to get here, Zico, in the global finals, and now we're going to see them facing off against each other what can we expect from either of these teams? Oof, it's another tough one to call here. I feel like uh, where is Gordy has kind of been like the dark horse of North America. They've been playing a lot of honestly weird compositions, I would say, <laughs> that nobody else is playing, you know. Uh, they, but, you know, they have um, Sean Lee on that roster. They've really been utilizing him super well here, uh, just doing a great job, uh, kind of bringing him in, playing Cubsy on the mage. Uh, like they, this, this is a team, you know, they have Wealthy Man, which is one of the best mages, but they've just been playing Cubsy on the mage and then having Flop on that Restoration Druid instead of Cubsy on the Restoration Druid. So they've just been mixing it up a lot. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, what they actually have brought to the table. I I couldn't say, um, you know, Arcane Mage, we haven't really seen it much. So if there is one team that's going to run it, it probably is. Where is Gordy? But uh, knowing these guys, they could just as easily have uh, brought something else to the table. Cubsy does play that Demo Warlock as well. And for the Golden Guardians... It's another tough one to call, but I do think the Golden Guardians have some similarities with My Way in Europe, where they have Whiskey on that Wrath, and they have Jelly Beans on that Hunter, and they have Absturge, obviously, on that Shaman for sure. So I think we might see some Red Hunter Shaman come out uh, from the Golden Guardians. So a little bit of Cupid Cleave, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. This is uh, this is going to be another good one. I'm super excited to see both of these teams play. We're still in that upper bracket, loser of this one, heading down to the lower to face off against Team Liquid. And we're going to see how they fare against each other after this quick break. Golden Guardians, where's Gordy up next?
I'm doing it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God. Today is not my day. Let me start over. Hold on. Back up. Back up. Okay. We're going to pretend like we just went. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's Golden Guardians versus Where's Gordy. Are you excited, Ben? I am. Yes. For lots of different reasons. Because I feel like both of these teams, um, they're going to bring something interesting. I, I feel like this is going to be kind of like a wacky blind pick. That's my prediction. It's going to be something that maybe we don't necessarily expect. I know uh, there's been a lot of talk about some teams like Echo and uh, now also where's Gordy potentially playing, you know, the Frost Mage with a Warlock. I'd be interested to see that. But I don't know if Golden Guardians is the team to lock something like that into uh, because they're so strong with that rogue Shadow Priest Shaman. Uh, and I think in this particular matchup, Golden Guardians might be able to actually implement some of their comfort picks. They won't have to deal with the Rep Paladin more than likely. I mean, unless Warriors Gordy has some surprises. So I think it'll make it for a very interesting match. I feel like Where's Gordy is this team that is just like come out of nowhere with their their players being able to multi-class. You know, we were kind of talking about it before. Cubsy not healing right now. You've got, uh, you know, Chun-Li randomly playing stuff like the Hunter and, and kind of killing it. You know, he's been swapping to Rogue a little bit too. This is a team that I feel like could be the one to bring up a random comp like this. Oh. Uh, but we are going to see them lock in the Mage Lock. Okay, so we got the mage lock. Finally, we've been kind of talking about it existing in the shadows, but now we're, we're finally going to get to see it here from where is Gordy and the Golden Guardians. They're going to be bringing in Whiskey on the rat. Now, I thought we might see some Cupid cleave with Jelly Beans, but Jelly Beans, he's going to stay on the bench, and instead we're getting the ill mind of Boo here on that Vulpiran warrior right there. <laughs> it's all about those Vulpiras this weekend, and uh, I think it's going to be a good pick for him here against the Demon Warlock, they're already going after Cubsy, doing a lot of work here, but look at Wealthy Man on that Frost Mage, looking very comfortable so far, shutting down Peekaboo there on his avatar with that Ring of Frost, man. Yeah, well, let's see how it goes. Uh, I think this is definitely a matchup that Where's Gordy wanted, so they kind of win the blind pick, I would say. Right now, Wealthy Man has his Icy Veins up, bringing in some big Frost Bolts. We'll see what Golden Guardians can do. It looks like they're going to be going after Cubsy for Ooh. a majority of this match so far. Some big Shatter combos coming in from Wealthy Man. And if he can just sit there and free cast Frost Bolts, it can be devastating amounts of damage. A full Polymorph onto Ab Surge. Peekaboo maybe in a little bit of trouble. Looks like that Healing Tide Totem will get immediately sniped off there by Wealthy Man. But at the same time, Golden Guardians are looking relatively stable. They're able to have some decent uptime here on the Cubsy. Flop playing that Mistweaver, actually the casted Mistweaver version. So kind of just sitting in the back line, getting those heals out. And I feel like this is one of those matchups that could maybe come down to mana. But we'll have to see what we'll, uh, where's Gordy can do uh, in the long game. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, you know, the win condition for uh, Golden Guardians, try to burst Cubsy down, try to connect as much as possible and get the uptime and get a big, big hit of burst. Do that multiple times and Cubsy's going to be dead. But uh, the win condition for where is Gordy is try to shut that down before it happens with good crowd control. You know, make sure that you're always polymorphing the rat, swapping to the warrior, polymorphing the warrior, swapping to the rat, getting CC onto Absturge, and just having Wealthy Man free cast. Essentially, their best way of kind of dragging out the game and in dampening. That's when they're going to be able to find just unhealable pressure, force them back to the pillar, and then kind of corner them there and just slowly choke them out. So. We'll see if they can do that or potentially even win with just a cross crowd control. You're going to see right now actually Whiskey setting up the cross crowd control. Double blinding light coming out. Whiskey though gets caught up in a stand. Cubsy on that Warlock doing a great job here. Just kiting, building up distance, gets the mortal coin onto Whiskey, gets the stun onto Peekaboo there as well. And now flops out of crowd control. He can freely heal and just uh, kind of have a good time there in the back line on that Mist Weaver. Kill down some totems and just uh, slowly but surely try to keep his Warlock alive. Finally, some pressure coming out. It's going to be the Life Cocoon. Paralyzed coming out onto Absturge into a DR Sheep. But Flop's mana not doing too well. He's trying to actually drink with this Life Cocoon. And if Flop actually is getting a lot of mana here, he may, might even get a full mana bar reset here. Really, really good timing on that drink from Flop. Yeah, something you definitely love to see if you are a Where's Gordy fan. Flop basically completely recovering his mana. Big damage here on WizK at the same time. Icy Veins has to be respected here by Wealthy Man. These Frost Bolts are going to be devastating. Just getting Flurry combo after Flurry combo here on WizK. Might be able to just one-shot him. Oh. There's the Mortal Coil. Big damage coming in. Flop looking like he wants to get aggressive as well. Get in the Leg Sweep here onto Peekaboo and WizK. Setting them up. Absurge goes for a Lightning Lasso, but he gets Counterspelled. This is absolutely devastating here for WizK. Oh. The Divine Shield does not want to choke, and he does have to trade it out. Bit of an aggressive play there by Absurge. He gets punished in a big way, and it costs him the Divine Shield. 
Yeah, that was a beautiful counter spell as well by Wealthy Man. And another sheep snucks in, sneaks in onto Absturge, but does get removed. And Absturge uh, going to be pushing up here with his teammates, trying to get some uptime here onto Cubs. But Whiskey, he can't play with that same confidence anymore as he doesn't have that uh, powerful defensive cooldown anymore. But at the same time, Cubsy as well doesn't have that unending resolve. So both of these uh, players very vulnerable right now. Cubsy catches the life cocoon there from Flop. And Flop's mana once again not doing super hot, but somewhat tied up right Right now with Absturge, Absturge uh, sitting through a polymorph, gets repolyed here by Wealthy Man, Wealthy Man dropping the Blizzard, dropping the, the slowing everybody down, making sure that he can get a little bit of uptime. Peekaboo actually trying to swap to Flop, but Flop, beautiful transcendence, Peekaboo leaps after him, then Flop transcendence once again there, so now he's not going to have that heroic leap and that charge to reach Cubsy, and that means Peekaboo is actually going to get kind of a little bit of whisk here. Uh, kind of decided to maybe just run away uh, away from that midfield but he decides to charge in actually on his divine steed but too much damage happening upstairs now caught up in the polymorph that mage lock pressure coming in there's a flop with a beautiful leg sweep that's going to be the trinket from whisk that uh, will to survive comboed of course with that magic bop as well so they're definitely getting a lot of these cooldowns out of the way on the side of where's gordy yeah, certainly. I mean, at this point, WizK is incredibly uh, vulnerable. He's got no Whoa. real defense. What is he going to be able to do? There's the Divine Protection. Absurd is really struggling to keep him alive, and this is only going to get worse as dampening gets higher. Absurd is going to have to open up his tree more. Can't just rely on the Healing Stream Totems and the Riptides and the Unleashes. He's actually going to have to cast heals, and that's where the game gets really bad here for Absturge. And I, I really have to say, I think Where's Gordy won this blind pick quite heavily with this composition. Here's to see if Golden Guardians could try to turn it around here, going after Cubsy, but there's just every single defensive cooldown available. WizK is getting incredibly low. Right now, Wealthy Man once again has that Icy Veins up, just really ripping in here onto WizK. Frostbolt after Frostbolt finally gets winch here there by Absurge, because they're all stacked up. Absurge is realizing potentially the safest spot to be is just on top of his team uh, to eat some of that inevitable cleave so these Polymorphs maybe don't sit full, but a big flurry combo on WizK once again. Double leg sweep by Flop, really setting up his team. There's the fear on Absurge. He's got no trinket. Sanctuary comes in, Sanctuary and the Spirit Link Totem. So Golden Guardian slowly but surely burning through the defensive cooldowns, whereas Gordy's looking good so far. Oh. Yeah, they stay, oh, as we say that, that's going to be a big overlap right there. Flop Trinkets drops the Life Cocoon. Cubsy also panics and drops the Unending Resolve. And all of a sudden, there is an opening here for the Golden Guardians. They just need to be a little bit careful right now. Whiskey doesn't have his Divine Shield for another 38 seconds. So with that next Divine Shield coming up, he could easily make a push with that and just try to power it through and try to just go for a big, big hit there onto Cubsy. The question is, can they do it? With, uh, Flop right now sitting through for a drink, Peekaboo, uh, making sure to move there and kind of threaten to stop it. But Whiskey now in a lot of trouble here. Stand onto Absturge. Whiskey, how are you going to stay alive here? Is that Shield of Vengeance going to be enough? They connect onto Cubs. He gets dispelled out of the Hodge. Beautiful Lightning Lash onto Wealthy Man, but he's playing the Blink Star. He's just going to blink out of it and still now reconnecting here onto Cubs. He's doing a great job kiting back and forth, slowing them down there with the Curse of Exhaustion as well. Leg sweep onto Peekaboo, slowing him down as well. But Peekaboo now finally going to reconnect. And if Whiskey connects over there, that might just be lights out here for Cubsy. I think this could be it potentially. What is he going to do? Big damage coming out. Flop in the back line, spamming out the heels right now, just free casting, soothing mist. If Absturge wasn't in that polymorph, he could get a wind shear, and he does finally manage to get the wind shear into the storm bolt here. It's do or die, but what just happened to Peekaboo? He just exploded in a cap totem. Or actually, I don't even know if it was a cap, I think it was Absturge's cap totem. I have no idea what just happened there to Peekaboo. I think he just tanked a big shatter flurry combo there from Wealthy Man with that icy veins. And that's the thing, Wealthy Man, if he's just free casting with Icy Veins and he's building up all his Frostbolt damage, uh, those Shatter combos can be really devastating. I mean, you're getting close to 100k bolts, maybe over 100,000 Frostbolts. And in Dampening, that is just so difficult for Resto Shaman to deal with. I think this is the exact matchup that Where's Gordy wanted. Uh, so I really think that the Golden Guardians, they're going to have to figure it out. And if they want to win the series, they're going to have to win on the swing match as well. So... I'm kind of curious where they decide to bring it, but we could see how this game kind of evolved. You could see crowd control just constant on Absurge. If he's not polymorphed, he's feared, he's stunned. And you can just see there's just overwhelming damage going out onto WizK and Peekaboo. Inevitably, it is Peekaboo who falls. And I'm curious to see what it is that finally takes him down. 
I think we're getting close here at 32% dampening. Cubsy's doing a really good job healing and flop on that Mistweaver Monk just provides so much support to his team with these rings of peace to uh, help out and make it difficult for Peekaboo and Whiskey to actually stay on target with the double leg sweeps and just the over amount, the overwhelming amount of single target healing. Polymorph on Absturge. Peekaboo right now has his dive by the sword. Is this where he actually ends up going down? I think it's close to this. So let's see exactly how this happens. Big Frostbolt. I managed to get the grounding totem and peekaboo. Yeah, he just needs a huge shatter there from Wealthy Man. It gets dropped. Beautiful stuff right there. And uh, I really like the fact that Wealthy Man, he, he played this matchup so good as well. Constantly getting the sheeps whenever he gets windshared on Frostbolts. And whenever he had DR, all, uh, you know, whenever he had Absurd on DR, he would swap the sheeps over onto Peekaboo to shut him down, go after Whiskey. However, in the end, Whiskey had his bubble back. And he knows if I go into Whiskey, I'm just playing into the strength of the, uh, their enemy team right now. I'm going to go after Peekaboo instead. He doesn't have a bubble, he just has his uh, Die by the Sword. So he's going to be able to reduce damage, but not completely immune it. So I'm going to reduce more pressure by going after Peekaboo. I'm basically going to put him in a situation where run away or I will kill you. And that's exactly what happened. Peekaboo did not run away and uh, he paid the price for it. So really good blind pick here from Where's Gordy. And uh, it's interesting to see, you know, um, kind of this team bringing in Wealthy Man on the mage. Uh, they were playing with Cubsy on the mage the whole season, but now Cubsy playing the lock and then they're bringing in Wealthy Man on the mage. He used to play the rogue. So just a lot of flexibility within their players here right now. They, they could even play double mage, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy to think about. Yeah, they could. I think I, I, Wealthy Man just doesn't like Arcane, from what I've been told. He just doesn't like Arcane, doesn't want to play Arcane, doesn't that's like playing with one school of magic. <laughs> that's why Cubsy's yeah, I mean, not playing? Oh. I think that's part of it. I mean, I think it's two things. I think Cubsy likes Arcane, and Wealthy Man does not like Arcane. So <laughs> I think that's basically win -win. the main reason. Yeah, I mean, it ended up working out other. for them because... I mean, it worked out for them because Wealthy Man was playing Rogue. I mean, one of the reasons why they're here is because they had a, a great performance with Wealthy Man on Rogue when they finally found Gordy and uh, Cubsy playing that mage. So they were able to actually play Rogue Mage because of that. Yeah, you know, everyone always asks, where is Gordy? But no one ever asks, how is Gordy? I do. <laughs> he's having a good... <laughs> you do? <laughs> I think he's doing pretty well after that one. But this Probably. map, hook point, maybe not doing so hot. So... Uh, I'm wondering if they kind of blind lock the mage lock here and just kind of, because this is something that um, Channel, um, Cubsy, and Wealthy Man used to do all the time is no matter what, they would just lock in mage lock. So they are going to try it and uh, maybe it just is. see what Golden Guardians has in store. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, do we feel like that they're going to be playing it the same way, though, that they did? I mean, this is a, they're gonna, this is a really small map. You know, the, the game state has changed quite a bit is this going to be like a dampening situation or are they just going to go all out against golden guardians in the opener typically mm. when they played this in the past on this map they would target the healer a lot they would uh just try to go all after the, the dps and ship the healer but then at the end of the, the the cc chain they would actually just set up swaps on the healer obviously that was a little bit different you know they would have uh you know usually cubsy on the rest of druid and he would go for rake stuns and, and all of that but i do think uh, there's a possibility to kind of go for those healer swaps even if you don't kill him it's a good way to kind of just pressure them to actually get back to the pillar um but it is quite the statement you know to lock this in on hook point and uh, you know, it is something like Van said, it's something that they just always do. They just play mage lock until forced off. Uh, so I feel like uh, so far, it's going to be a big test here for the Golden Guardians. Are they going to lock in the same thing as well? Or are they going to bring in Jelly Beans? Maybe play Red Hunter? Are they going to play RPS? Because that could be a potential as well. Uh, they definitely have, you know, a couple of options here. Yep, got Golden Guardians about 30 seconds left to lock in their comp. Going to the smallest map in the pool as well and uh it's it's uh you know kind of an unfortunate situation to lose a blind in a matchup such as this but golden guardians they are capable of so much they had probably the best season they've had in a really long time if you look at the past cups leading up to getting into the finals i mean they made it here in the top four for the north american region so they really want to look to make a comeback here prove what they can do as a team uh, and it's all going to ride here on how they do in this matchup, if they can win that swing match here. Uh, potentially, can they do it on, on hook point, though? That's really the question. This was their map choice. They've completely run out of time, too. So that kind of kind of indicates that there's a lot being discussed, and they're bringing out WizK on the Shadow Priest, Zico. RPS coming out, you know, it was one of the options we discussed, and... Uh... 
I feel like this tells us, you know, this is so Golden Guardians, man. Like, <laughs> they, they practice all these like meta comps, they practice these cleaves and whatnot. And uh, then when they put themselves in this position where it's like it's hook point, they have a prime position to lock in the Red Warrior and really show how, how much they've been practicing it, they're like, mm, but RPS could win this, right? Uh, and then they just go back to their mains. And usually it works out for them. I mean, let's be honest. They've had a great season, like you mentioned. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. But at the same time, I feel like the Red Warrior, this is where you would excel, right, with the Red Warrior. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think it's an okay pick for, for the Golden Guardians. I feel like that's why people love this team so much. I mean, you know, they they kind of just like stay true to themselves, right? They've they've been a roster, a complete all four of them have been a roster for so long. They haven't made any changes. You know, they've been uh, playing pretty much the same composition and finding a tremendous amount of success with it, especially this last season, like you mentioned, Zico, and they just kind of. They go with their heart, it feels like, and it works out for them quite often. So we'll see if it works out here for game two on hook point as well. Um, you know, now that we kind of know the the comps that we're playing in the map, then how do we expect this match to go? I mean, Zico said that where's Gordy might be going after the healer. Uh, do you feel like this is a viable strategy for them? Mm. Yeah, potentially. I, I feel like there's a few different ways they could play it. I mean, at the end of the day, what Where's Gordy wants to do is survive. Survive as long as you can. And eventually, the consistent damage from the Frost Mage and the Warlock uh, is going to put you in a really good spot. And then, of course, you have all that crowd control, too. So you can kind of isolate a target. So I would imagine the way they might play it is just play really conservatively, try to make it difficult for Peekaboo to actually connect to a target and try to maybe get Absurge out of mana. But I don't think that will really work. Um, honestly, I like this pick here from Golden Guardians. I know they've practiced a lot of different compositions, but being able to basically lock in what I consider to be a, a semi like wizard counter here uh, with the RPS, uh, I think is a good move for them because obviously this is their most comfortable composition. Um, and like I said, I think that that blind pick, picking the Ret Warrior into the Mage Lock is probably the worst thing that they could have done. So definitely lost the mind game here, but I expect that they should be able to tie it up here uh with this comp and if they can't if they can't win with this then i think they're in real trouble for the rest of the series might be uh gg for gg GG, but, uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you get it uh so i mean it's gonna be there's a lot of caster classes and we're on a really small map zico i mean who do you feel like is the most vulnerable in this situation who should we be most worried about uh, I think for the Golden Guardians, uh, they have a lot of different ways, but I feel like Wealthy Man, he's been playing, he, he never, ever specs Shimmer. I, I don't think I've ever seen this guy play Shimmer, so I don't think he's going to be a great target because he's going to be able to blink out of all of those kidney shots. So I think for Golden Guardians, probably going to be seeing, you know, some uh, Cubsy, uh, train Cubsy strategies, and, uh, you know, maybe Flop gets feared uh, and then swap to, or Flop gets blinded, Trinkets, you know, and then he, they swap to him. Uh, after that when he doesn't have a trinket but i think uh, for sure cubs is going to be the main target occasionally they might bleed wealthy man you know and off dot him as well and just have pressure in multiple locations usually when the golden guardians plays the rogue shadow priest they like to swap around and not just hit one uh, specific target but if i had to bet i would say the main target for them is probably going to be cubsy and for uh, where is gordy their main target for sure is going to be peekaboo i think they're going to throw lots of crowd control onto whiskey uh, kick him you know use the counter spells use the warlock uh, you know stuns uh, onto the rogue and try to uh, shut down whisk with cc and try to shut down the rogue with pressure and with stuns um and uh you know if absturge gets isolated they might go after him um but i don't think they're really going to go after absturge a whole lot in this particular matchup i think it's going to be all about pressuring peekaboo the more damage you do to him uh, the more likely he is to kind of have to run away. And we saw um, Waz playing that assassination rogue over in Europe. If he's able to kind of just hold down W the entire game and just keep running at the Eli Shama, keep running, keep running, keep chasing, that's when he's going to be effective and be able to get those kidney shots, get the gouge on the healer and kind of set up for the win. Uh, if Peekaboo can do the same thing here, then that's kind of the game he wants to play. But if they can force him away, then he's going to be chilling. All right, here we go. Wealthy Man, let's see what he can get done here on the mage. Peekaboo's going to be moving forward. It looks like they are going to be going after Flop. So a bit of initial damage here onto the Mystery Monk. Flop ports just uh, one millimeter away. Uh, just trying to avoid, I guess, a little bit of damage here. He can port again to get silenced, but they're just all over him, really pressuring 
flop on that monk, but it's a dangerous game to do that because you're leaving Wealthy Man and Cubsy open on the Demonology Warlock and the Frost Mage. So I feel like I'd rather see Golden Guardians kind of go after the DPS, but they're known to have multiple pressure points in a match. We have a full blind now on flops. Cubsy's falling far behind. This is going to be the Dark Pact to stay alive and bolster his health. Full sap coming in from Peekaboo as Golden Guardians is getting really aggressive at the early stages of this match. But right now, Wizkid is getting punished. This Polymorph coming in from Wealthy Man onto Absturge. It's crowd control is just putting a lot of work. Oh, Flop getting swapped there a little bit, but he's able to sit through the blind, the sap, and the swap as well. So Flop basically sitting through everything and doesn't have to use anything. So Peekaboo and Golden Guardians kind of back to the drawing board on that one. They gouge up Wealthy Man, and now they're going after Cubsy. Tyrant, though, being spawned here for Cubsy. Peekaboo needs to respect it a little bit here and already silencing Flop. They're going for Flop potentially with a kidney shot or a gouge. I'm not sure if they're trying to set up a crowd control onto him or if they're trying to actually set up a swap here, but uh, Flop either way he doesn't want to be anywhere near the assassination road he's going to cross the map and nice damage coming out here from wealthy man he's got the blizzard down on one side he's got the frozen orb down kind of there in the middle and he's getting a lot of resets here and he's probably already going to have that frozen orb available very very short you can see it there about 15 seconds left he just popped it and that's because of that shifting power double uh we are coming out here for Whisk and Cubsy already preemptively running, so they're going to try to go after Flop. There's the sheep on the Whisk, there's the coil on the Peekaboo, gouge onto Wealthy Man, and uh, you can see here it's just a game of Peekaboo and Whisk trying to go after Flop and trying to go after Cubsy and trying to shut down Wealthy Man as much as possible with these little micro CC. Wealthy Man is just making a table right there. I don't know if now is the time to kind of have a feast, Wealthy Man, but uh, <laughs> the smoke bomb is down, you know? It's probably not a good time to be eating, He's but thirsty. Uh, yeah. They're going to be able to stay alive on that push, and uh, once again, it's going to be peekable on the back foot. Well, Wealthy Man taking a little bit of damage here. If you get a fear here onto Flop, so Golden Guardian's getting some damage rolling onto Wealthy Man. He's caught into a full kidney shot. Looks like he's not going to be able to blink out of that one. And on this small map, I actually am a big fan of going after the Mage. Don't allow him to cast those Frost Bolts in this match and try to just control Tyrant. I feel like if they can survive Tyrant and then just go after the Mage, most of the threats are covered. Big setup on Peekaboo, though. Forced to trade out the Cloak of Shadows. That's going to be his trinket also. But Absurd holds on to his medallion. So he's going to be able to break out of crowd control. Full blind gets traded out. It looks like Flop will immediately trinket that. Just trying to make the fair trade. Does not want to fall behind in this match in terms of mana. Both these healers are still relatively even. Pressure is kind of evened out at this point. But if you look, Peekaboo has nothing. He has literally no cooldowns. This is not really the position you want to be in if you are playing that Assassination Rogue. Definitely not. And the thing is, he still has to maintain that pressure, so he's going to have to have maximum faith here in Absturge and uh, just to try to make Whoa. sure that he can continue to get the pressure. Wealthy man, greedy with the ice block, but he will have to trade it out right there. So uh, a big victory right there for the Golden Guardians. Wealthy man is going to definitely be a good target now in the match. You get a kidney shot, but he is playing that blink stun, so he blinks out of it. And uh, now Peekaboo just chases him, manages to get some uptime here. And uh, I think Peekaboo kind of realizing now that Wealthy man uh, won't be able to, will be able to blink out of those stuns so he can just try to sit onto wealthy man and not use the kidney shots on him try to use it onto flop instead for crowd control and just continue to chase death coil coming out there onto peekaboo to get a fear onto flop there as well so pretty decent control coming out from the golden guardians as they continue to push over onto wealthy man here peekaboo though taking a lot of damage here cubsy is free casting remember that cubsy with all of those imps right now doing a lot of work gets the fear onto whiskey and they're just trying to control whiskey as much as possible try to go after peekaboo he doesn't have a cloak for about 30 seconds absolutely in a poly into a repoly into a fear on the mass spot right there beautiful timing there by cubsy and whiskey has been left behind Pop flops now for a drink and Flop is going to be able to potentially recover some mana here, but he could get sapped as well, playing against that Rogue. And now Peekaboo pushing in once again, trying to get aggressive here onto the mage. Yep, let's see if they can keep up that pressure. Wealthy Man still has one ice block, and Flop, of course, has that life cocoon. Wizkay trying to get in position to potentially get some crowd control here onto Flop and initiate some offense. Mortal Coil onto Peekaboo. He's taking a lot of damage, and Absurd is in oh! crowd control. Peekaboo might just fall. Spirit Link trinket comes link. in. That's going to be the Trinket Link there from Absurge. About five minutes into the match. Peekaboo has the Cloak of Shadows. He's got the Vanish, so he's going to be feeling relatively safe. There's a full fear here on the flop. He might have to trade out his Trinket. He should use the Trinket Life Cocoon to get Sap. He will end up trading, and I think it's a good trade. Better to get his Trinket and Life Cocoon rolling uh, instead of Wealthy Man trading out his Ice Block. And, and now you can just see, look at how much pressure is coming in from Where's Gordy. Peekaboo's in a lot of trouble. 
And the thing is, you can't, I guess you can run back to the pillar, but it's not ideal. You can see Wealthy Man is just going to be dropping the Blizzard, Triple Shadow Fury coming in. We'll be seeing some Frozen Orb. Peekaboo does not want to be in that position, so he's just going to opt to go into midfield, even though there's not really many cooldowns left. WizK does have the Void Shift, so they do have that lifeline. Golden Guardian's still in it. Yep, Golden Guardians, they still have a little bit left in the tank to work with as well, but I would say the Shaman is expending less mana than the Mistweaver, but the Mistweaver has been able to find those moments to get those drinks, so Flop definitely needs to continue to look out for those windows here, because Absturge, you know, we have seen him in the past kind of work miracles with basically nothing left, but here comes a full fear onto Flop, big damage potential here onto Wealthy Man, this could be his second Ice Cube right now that they're pushing for, can they get it? And they will actually get it there off screen, beautifully done there by the Golden Golden Guardians now, Wealthy Man with no defense left, also no Trinket Life Cocoon there onto Flop. That could be an easy swap there. They could swap the Flop with the Death Mark, or they could pull the trigger uh, potentially onto Wealthy Man, but Wealthy Man has that Dwarf Ratio. Oh, Peekaboo though, it? getting blasted, he might just what? die here, and that will be it. They had Void Shift available, but they're not able to access it. I think Whiskey was cross crowd control there. That was a, such a perfect storm there for where is Gordy finding that Perfect setup there, uh, basically 3v0 with that stun coil onto Pika, but we need to watch on the replay there what actually happened to WizK there, because I did think that they had at least one lifeline left there uh, in the tank with that swap, but uh, they didn't able, they weren't able to uh, access it. I'm pretty sure that WizK was just uh, in a fear at the end there. Wow. I mean, what a game that was. Let's see what they can do. I mean, WizK was just in a little bit of crowd control there. They had really good cross coming in from Where's Gordy. Uh, super unfortunate. But, I mean, Where's Gordy? They had a, even a mana lead at that point of the game. It's been really rough for Peekaboo to actually kind of stay on target. I do like the fact that they're going after Wealthy Man. They did get both Ice Blocks out of the way. So it was a relatively close game. But this final setup, the only thing that they really had to save them was that Void Shift. And WizK was just not in a position to actually get it. Uh, being in that crowd control. So we'll see exactly how it plays out. People are trying to make a push here. This is actually where they get the second ice block from Wealthy Man, but immediate kind of uh, switch flip there by Where's Gordy as they look to get aggressive here. I think Flop actually sets it up with a beautiful leg sweep. So Peekaboo kind of isolated right now, away from Absturge. He really can't get to target. I think he runs over there, and Flop just kind of dive bobs in for the double leg sweep. WizK, we'll have to see what happens to him. He gets Ring of Peace away. There's the double leg sweep. What happens to WizK? gets Cheap. polymorphed, and that's just so unfortunate. That was really nicely done there by Flop with that Ring of Peace, with the double leg sweep, with the touch of death. Uh, really good plays. Yeah, that's, that's some MVP coming out from Flop there for sure. He gets the double leg sweep. He sets it up, you know, as you said, with the Ring of Peace, knocking them, you know, together, stacking them up, and then he just quickly just jumps in there, gets the double sweep. And Wealthy Man as well, again and again, finding those uh, key moments there, gets the Polymorph right there. And uh, you really could tell, you know, the Golden Gardens were not expecting that Whiskey. They string it up in like five seconds or something when the game ended. So he would have had that trinket swap, you know, guaranteed basically save. Um, and I don't know if he had a, a fade right there or not, but uh, definitely felt like there was a way for maybe Whiskey to avoid that. If he expected a little bit more, uh, he probably just didn't want to trade because he knows, okay, all my teammates are just going to dispel me if I get a full sheep. So there's no point, you know, using anything here. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, they get that perfect setup as well. And, uh, you know, I feel like that was really the last ditch effort as well there. Um, you know, if they didn't get the kill right there, they had no more ice blocks. You know, it was looking good for the Golden Guardians. Mana was dwindling as well uh, for flops. So I, I feel like the Golden Guardians, they found themselves in a perfect situation. And I kind of expect them to just lock in the same thing and just be more uh, respectful of that situation happening. They need a hunter. They need a, uh, they, they need a hunter here. Hunters love mages. <laughs> uh, I would really like to see them uh, yeah, the bring beans. that in in this match. Yeah, I'd like to see Jelly Beans tagged in for this one. Um, bring in the BM Hunter. You could even play like a Ret Hunter on a small map. I, I it, it's good. Like you can stay on yeah. target. You have a lot of support for the Hunter. Eventually, you kind of win with that Perma Dot that you're talking about. So I feel like that could be a solid <laughs> option here for the Golden Guardians in this particular matchup. Um, maybe they don't. Yeah, maybe they haven't practiced that composition very much, or maybe they think the RPS can win. But I, I really feel like having that kind of ranged class that Jelly Beans can play uh, would be really s solid in this match. 
Yeah, I mean, that was kind of a comp that got tossed around a lot when we were anticipating some of the stuff that we'd see these teams playing, Golden Guardians bringing in that uh, Red Paladin alongside the Hunter. So, yeah, maybe it, maybe it's just a matter of them not having it prepared. Who knows? Uh, but this is the final hour here for Golden Guardians going into Dalaran Sewers as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious if they decide RPS if they decide to play RPS once again. But, I mean, where's Gordy? Super solid on this composition. This is one that could for sure take them out of this lower bracket, especially with how they're playing. Uh, there are quite a bit of teams left in North America. If they win this one, they're going to have to face Luminosity. So I, I'm curious how that, this comp, if they do end up winning, I don't want to count Golden Guardians out just yet, but if they do end up winning, how far this comp can take them because they're just looking really, really strong right now on it. Golden Guardians continuing to use their full delay timer, which I feel like is a bit unlike them. They're kind of like an all-out team. They seem to lock in pretty fast, confidently locking in what they're oh. doing. And we are seeing Jelly Beans come out alongside WizK Zico on the Red Paladin. Yeah, so they're going to have that permanent dot, the BM Hunter, uh, and they're going to have WizK, you know, offering a lot of support here. Habsters as well, you know, a lot of disruption, and um, they have a small map to work with as well, so really everything in their favor. But again, if the game drags out, if Wealthy Man gets to free cast too much, all of a sudden, they could find windows uh, where they could potentially burst somebody down. We saw it happen in game number one. Uh, obviously, a little bit different matchup, but still definitely a possibility here for uh, where is Gordy. So it's going to be interesting to see. And uh, this is, uh, you know, heading into this matchup, this is kind of what I expected to see right up the get-go uh, from the Golden Guardian. So I am happy to see that they're kind of, uh, they have been practicing it and they are willing to play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a bit, a bit of a risky move because we know that they, you know, we have never seen them play it in tournament so far. So we don't know how confident they're feeling on this, but I guess they felt like they were in a situation where they weren't able to, in their minds, win with any of the other comps that they previously played today. So we'll see how they do in, in this third game. But Ven, I mean, what does this look like for you for Golden Guardians? What, you know, we haven't seen them play this. So what's the move here? That joke was not on purpose. Uh <laughs> Should have just taken credit for it. I should have just gone with one. it. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think for the Golden Guardians, it's going to be about shutting Wealthy Man down, especially if he's decided to play uh, just regular Blink. His mobility is actually quite limited in this match. And even though he can Blink out of stuns, I feel like WizK and Jellybean should be able to have uptime. Um, I played this matchup quite a bit, and I feel like the way that the Mage Lock should win is just by trying to survive as long as possible and eventually getting Absurge out of mana. It can be really difficult to actually close out the game. Uh, prior to that, with the amount of like support that a Rep Paladin has with the Resto Shaman, they have a lot of longevity. So um, I think this is going to be difficult for Where's Gordy. They're going to have to survive a lot of damage, uh, kind of bring the game to the late stages, um, or, or try to make it work that way. But for Golden Guardians, I think what they want to do most important things are survive Tyrant. So Tyrant is going to be the, the scary situation. You're basically going to have to leave Cubsy to free cast quite a bit in this game. Uh, but as long as you pay attention to when the Tyrant is out and you kind of avoid that damage, then it's not going to be you know that big of a threat. And if you can stay on top of Wealthy Man and really limit his ability to like generate uh, Frost Bolts and Shatter combos, I, I think they'll be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, so it's just about, I mean, controlling that, you know, Cubsy on that lock, because that's just so much pressure that could come in from from both of them, to be honest, with a wealthy man coming back on the Frost Mage as well. So just so much pressure and damage that Where's Gordy is capable of. And Golden Guardians, I mean, you know, WizK, we haven't seen him play on a Ret this season. I, I'm not sure if I remember him playing it before. I'm sure he has, but do you guys remember? Yeah. Yeah, he used to. They they have played this in the past. Uh, I think mm. in Shadowlands, this was their uh, kind of counter to a lot of the melee cleaves that we okay. saw back then. With uh, I think they had Holy Priest, Absturge, and then Red Hunter, uh, and that was like kind of their go-to pick. And they had mixed results with it, but I, I do feel like they were actually pretty solid on that. So. Um, I think that this is something that they probably have been practicing now, like during uh, the kind of little break since the AWC Cups as well. And since they didn't have to play in the gauntlet, they also probably had, you know, a decent amount of time on their hands to uh, just to try to practice this one. And I feel like Whiskey on the red looks solid in uh, today's game number one. So we'll see what he can do here in game number two. And they also have, you know, two mains essentially on uh on their uh, roster right now, you know, Absturge getting to actually play his Shaman. I feel like the meta has been kind of unfriendly towards Absturge. You always have to play, you know, other things, <laughs> Priest, Paladin and stuff like that. So having him play on the Shaman is definitely a nice for him. And of course, it's always a joy to watch Jelly Beans. This guy is just a monster on the Hunter, always has been. He's just a specialist on this class. He's one of the best to ever do it. So uh, I think the Golden Gardens definitely have a shot in this one. 
Yeah, the uh, shamans have definitely, the rest of shamans have been a little bit down bad, but this is for sure their season. <laughs> so we'll see if this is the game for Golden Guardians. Can they turn it around? They brought out Jelly Beans. Are they going to get a victory here in this third game on Dollar End? Oh, we'll have to wait and see. Jelly Beans on that hunter is going to be able to put out a lot of damage. WizK is going to be basically the main tank, the Crusader, just charging in on Wealthy Man, but cannot overextend without his team. So I feel like Golden Guardians are going to be moving in as a total unit here, just really trying to get aggressive. Beautiful double leg sweep coming in. Flop on that Mist Weaver Monk has just been so impressive with his ability to support his Wizards in this match, just sitting max range. And the thing is, this is not the positioning you want. This is not what you want if you're Golden Guardians. You do not want to be stacked up behind the pillar. Potentially, they're just trying to weather the storm of the Tyrant, trying to recover a little bit wait for some cooldowns, maybe wait for the Divine Protection and the Shield of Vengeance once again. Kind of a slow start for them, uh, but it looks like they just don't want to take any risks at this point in the game. Yeah, you know, it's the veins, it's the Tyrant, but the thing about the Tyrant is as well that uh, it's pretty short cooldown, you know, if the, you want to wait out the veins, you're constantly extending the duration of that veins as well. If you're a wealthy man, you know, getting your ice lenses out and just extending it a little bit, and all of a sudden, look at that Tyrant, 40 seconds. So now they have a 40 second window to make their push. So I think if you play too scared, uh, that can definitely come back uh, to haunt you later on. But here comes the push. Jelly Beans pushes in, gets the freezing trap there out of that intim stun scatter shot, and they're pushing in over onto Wealthy Man. And Wealthy Man's altered time, I think, was purged there by Absturge. So good pressure coming out here. They need to try to ride this wave of momentum. That will be the life cocoon traded out there for Flop and Flop's mana already dwindling a little bit. But Flop in this matchup has the potential to get drinks anytime. You know the melee cleave goes back and resets. That's Flop's uh, Q to drink. As you can see right now, he instantly jumps down to, to go for that drink. And Jelly Beans could potentially stop him there with his pets, but he's not going to be able to. They're just getting frozen. They're getting CC'd. Uh, you can see them there in the midfield, and that's going to allow Flop to have full mana. Absturge, however, never going to be able to drink ever in this matchup. Anytime he tries to sit down for a drink, there's going to be, you know, the Warlock pets chasing him down. There's going to be Blizzards, Frozen Orbs, you know, uh, Imps, things like that, keeping him in combat. So... Um, very unlikely, I should say. It's maybe not never, but it's definitely unlikely that he gets a drink. Whiskey now in a stun, looking to make this push here once again over onto Wealthy Man. Then, yeah, let's see if they can get an ice block here. And I almost wonder if Golden Guardians is playing this a bit too conservatively when they sit back and basically allow the like the 45 second cooldowns to recover for where's Gordy, you know, the mortal coil. It just makes it difficult to make a push. So they're constantly running in and they're on full diminishing returns where they can actually get CC'd with Polymorph and Fear off diminishing returns. And uh, it's just not a great look. I kind of feel like Golden Guardians might need to kind of push the pace once they get the Life Cocoon, just go for it. Because if they just pull back and wait, then Life Cocoon's off cooldown, like you can see right now. But, but this is a big damage on Wealthy Man. They get the Ice Block, so... Now, what do I know? <laughs> Good push there by Golden Guardians. Jelly Beans incredibly low, though. Could go down. Needs to be very careful. Still has his aspect of the turtle, but going to try to hold on to that one as Wizkate makes a push, but might have to fall back to the pillow. This is going to be the blessing of freedom. Cubsy getting really aggressive right now. You know, the hand of Gul'dan's going for a fear. Is it going to be a, a tyrant here shortly in 30 seconds? He's going to have that big burst cooldown. So that's going to be the really scary moment for Golden Guardians. But surprisingly, Absurd is burning through his mana really rapidly in this Whoa. game, and Jelly Beans could just go down. I mean, this is absolutely insane damage from Where's Gordy. Yeah, Jelly Beans definitely having a close call there, but he doesn't panic. He holds on to his aspect of the turtle and now pushing in, but WizK as well, getting a little bit blasted there in the midfield. Has to trade out his Shield of Vengeance, but nothing too crazy happening. As outside of that, it's still going to be Jelly Beans on the back foot here. Nice Ring of Peace there, kind of splitting them up for just a second. There comes he looking for the Fears. They get the Paralyzed there onto WizK. They're just kiting WizK, slowing him down and hitting him at the same time. You know, uh, Flop and Wealthy Man doing a great job here together. And Cubsy trying to just set up a, a 2v1, basically, uh, between Jelly Beans. Jelly Beans and Absters there. If you can find that fear, it would be huge, but he's going to have to abandon that push and just go back over onto WizK. Death Call comes out. Big damage coming out here for Wealthy Man. He's got the Icy Veins active. Big Frostbolt damage coming out here onto WizK. He's going to need to respect this damage and duck for cover, and that's exactly what they want here on the side of the Mage Lock. Already managing to drag out the game here. We're already in dampening. Absters already losing quite a decent amount of mana here. Jelly Beans caught up in a stun into a fear. Obviously trying to just extend that lockout with that fear right there out of that uh, fell stun 
and it will be another a full HP kind of reset coming out there. But here comes the Tyrant Whiskey. How is he going to react to it? He might need to try to stun it here or crowd control it in some way. It's actually casting onto him. Can't see exactly what's going on, but Tyrant is getting a lot of work done there. I do believe He's not getting CC too much. Whiskey might need to trade here on his Divine Shield. He manages to duck out of line of sight, keep chasing Cubsy, and it looks like they've kind of abandoned the chase there onto Wealthy Man, going after Cubsy a lot more right now. You know, Frost defensively here, around the corner, allowing Flop to kind of reposition. The shield comes out, the life cocoon comes out there onto Wealthy Man as well, as they continue to chase Cubsy here on the side of the Golden Guardians. That Whiskey getting feared away, still has a lot of his defensive cooldowns. He's going to pop that Divine Protection, as it does look like they do want to go after Cubsy a lot more. I think this is good. Just kind of hit who you can. Wealthy Man's been playing very, very defensive in the back line. He has his Icy Veins up. These Frost Bolts are absolutely deadly. Frost Bolt after Frost Bolt onto Jelly Beans. He's got Turtle. He's forced to trade it out. And it's not ideal here for Golden Guardians. They're falling apart a little bit. Uh, Absur still has his Trinket and Spirit Link if he needs it. Whiskey getting low on the Retribution Pallet. And Wealthy Man, does he have a knock? He does. He knocks him away into the open. Blessing of Freedom from Whiskey as he's struggling to reconnect. But. Might be able to take Wealthy Man down. Let's see if he can. Shield of Vengeance does get popped, and he still has that Blessing of Spell Warding. So another key defensive available. Flop's mana is actually going down quite rapidly at this point. I don't know if he's going to be able to really drink if Golden Guardians can continue to push the pace. It looks like Absurge actually wants to try to sit down for a drink. Can he do it? It's a root on the Felguard. Abster is just sitting in place, trying to follow the combat, but Flop. doesn't look like they're going to be able to uh, allow him. In the meantime, Flop is just sitting down. He recovered 60% of his mana. This is not good for the Golden Guardians. Yeah, that one kind of sliver of hope that they had right there uh, just kind of got stolen away from them. Flop, once again, able to recover a decent amount of mana. Whiskey in a lot of trouble here. Has the Divine Shield, trades out the Divine Protection instead, and gets that Wake of Ashes there to stun those pets. We, uh, Jellybeans now getting set up down here behind the pillar. Big trouble for Jellybeans. He has no aspect of the turtle. Finds himself behind enemy lines. Blessing of Spell Warding coming out there by Whiskey, but uh, Jellybeans uh, might have been oh, honestly fine there in that situation. Absturge not going to be able to get any drinks here that Felguard doing a lot of work Jellybeans now trinketing out of one of those axe tosses from the demo warlock and things are definitely spiraling out of control they need to just make a push I think they need to go after either Cubsy or Flop I think Wealthy Man at this point he's gonna have two ice blocks essentially so it's gonna be really difficult to actually take him down they need to find that big pressure the happening is ramping up they're going after Cubsy Life Cocoon gets traded and they find some CC onto Flop here there's the Hammer of Justice finally connecting Scattershot onto Wealthy Man didn't have any follow up there for Flop does not appear to be the case. This K now going to be in trouble finally as Cubsy manages to get a little bit of distance. What the man free casting in the back line. Icy Veins coming up here in just a few short seconds and he's going to immediately pull the trigger on that most likely and there it is. Icy Veins coming out and now Wealthy Man is going to be an absolute menace to deal with. How are they going to stay alive? Absolutely basically has no mana left. He has the spirit link totem. I need to drop it right now. He's going to be the divine shield instead. They're going for the all out one hit wonder. Can they connect onto Cubsy and take him down right now? I'm just not sure if Whisk has ran out of time here or if he's actually going to be able to close that gap then Ooh, is Kane a stun this could easily be the end of the game Absurd has no mana left full ring of frost here lands by wealthy man but they're going for it Wiz K is just deciding to continuously make a push. Can they actually take him down? Big heals coming in from Absurd with that Spirit Link totem equalizing everybody's health, and maybe Cubsy could actually fall. Can they oh, do it? Are they actually going to take down Cubsy? This is so close. The Frost oh. Bolt's coming in, but Cubsy's just so incredibly low. Oh. Can do it? Golden wow. Guardians with the impossible. Wealthy Man, can he actually get the cross kill? Wiz K in a little bit of trouble right now. Absurd in desperation trying to keep him alive, but I think they may have done it. I think they're going to be able to hold on. And even if they do manage to take down Wiz K, I feel like this is a winning matchup for Golden Guardians. What a close game. I can't believe that they were able to come back in this one. Golden Guardians with an absolute miracle push there at the end. Stay in it. <laughs> That is the Golden Guardian way. If you are a Golden Guardian fan, this is pretty much how they win all of their games. It's always closed, nail biters. They always give all of their fans just heart attacks as they decide to make those final pushes. And uh, great call there, you know, going after the Warlock, going after, uh, you know, the less mobile target that doesn't have all of those immunities that the mage still had available. And, you know, at some point, even if you're on 20% HP, 30% HP like Whiskey was, 
you have to go for the kill because if you don't, you're just going to slowly lose the game. You have to go and try to make that game-winning push, and they're able to do it. And, I mean, look at this situation. It's so scary for Whiskey. He's so low on HP here. And they decide to trade. I think this is where they, they use the divine, sh uh, they use the divine shield they have for Whiskey, and then they just use it to make a push with it, and he just runs through that ring of peace right there to connect onto Cubsy, try to get his mobility out of the way. Cubsy doesn't have his unending resolve, so it really is a good opening here as well for them. Absolutely has the ascendance. He's powering through the heels, and they just have to kind of tank Wealthy Man right now with Icy Veins. Such a scary situation. Upstairs, trinketing out of that Ring of Frost. They finally connect here onto Cobzy. Beautiful damage coming out. Nice dispel, tr a trinket dispel there from a Flop. And look how low Whiskey is. But finally, the Spirit Link connects. And that is a max range Spirit Link right there by Absturge. And look at this knock, man. Absturge really putting the team on his back there. Just knocks him perfectly, lines him up there for his teammates to just uh, go at it and just have a great time. Time. And of course, Jelly Beans there as well, immediately realizing Flop has used his trinket, punishing that uh, with his uh, Intim stun there. And, uh, you know, this is just absolute on that shaman. You can just tell. This is what we were talking about, you know, with all shamans and mains. These are just the small, small little things that those main shamans know how to do. Absolute knows exactly the range of his spirit link totem. He manages to connect it perfectly on max range. And then he manages to get that knock there as well. That knock was just crucial. Goes into Ghost Wolf to make sure that he can kind of cut ahead of Cubs, you know. And uh, to position him perfectly to line up the shot there uh, and actually, uh, you know, get the goal essentially. I, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I, I mean, just look at this. <laughs> this is just insane. I mean, look at that knock from Astor, just beautifully done. I mean, I, I feel like people were counting out Golden Guardians at this point. It just looked like the game was not going in their favor, but a miracle push at the end. At forty six percent dampening, for, you know, forty percent dampening, uh, and they are able to get the win. But I mean, just looking at Absurge's face, like I think he was a, as surprised as all of us that, that <laughs> happened. You know, so I don't know if they're going to be going with that same composition once again. Uh, you know, if they're going to be mixing it up, like what exactly are they going to do? Because I think we will be going to a large map, um, and that leaves a few different options. I, I think uh, Wiz K could get off the Rep Paladin. And, and instead of being kited, he could play like a Shadow Priest. But the problem is, is Shadow Priest good into Mistweaver? That's the thing about Mistweaver, right? Is Mistweaver has very high single target healing and just really high healing overall. So if Flop is able to drink and stay away in the fight, I don't think that Absurd, Jellybean, and WizK can play kind of like an attrition composition because I think Flop will be able to deal with that on the Mistweaver Monk. Yeah, definitely a definitely a tough choice, you know, when you even even in a situation like this when Golden Guardians they have the potential to reverse sweep, you know, they get the the one of a game win which puts them on the right path. It's kind of like, well, what do you do for game number 4 where so often we see someone look like they're going to figure it out and then they end up just losing 1 to 3. Um Looks like Golden Guardians, and I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but they're in danger of that. But Golden Guardians are locking in that comp once again. Where's Gordy? Uh, it is now their turn. So let's see what they can do. But it looks like they're they're kind of sticking to their guts here, Zico, for this last game, for this for this fourth game. I'm not trying to count Golden Guardians out. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> they keep using words that sound like it, but for the fourth game, Zico. Uh, well, yeah, it's their turn, and it's also their turf, Imperium Domain. Uh, a map that is very large and bright, just like when Rookie's uh, smile uh, brightens our days. And uh, mm. we're going to see. <laughs> You're hurting me. Unlike my future. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah same. Uh, but yeah, where is Gordy? Uh, like you said, Aya, they're going to be uh, they're going to be picking up the mage lock once again, and they're going to be going into that same matchup now. You know, a big a big reason why they were able to get that win was obviously, you know, kind of the MVP knocks, but also I feel like that's only possible on those smaller maps, you know, with a ZY axis, a short distance for Whiskey to travel, you know. On a map like this, if he's kind of hiding behind the pillar, trying to recover, and then he has to bubble, there's no way he's going to make his way to all the way to the Warlock before that bubble runs out. You know, on a map like this, Cubs is just going to keep running back, keep running back, and Whiskey is just going to find himself in the middle of uh, no man's land, essentially. And uh, it's going to be really tough for uh, Whiskey to actually close those gaps and actually get to his target here. So I think uh, where is Gordy? They have a lot of advantages here, but for the Golden Guardians, you know, this is a team that, you know, they they uh, thrive off momentum. And as soon as they pick up that first win, they're just immediately like, let's go. You know, RPS is back. 
uh, or in this case, you know, Red Hunter is back and they're just going to keep running that, that momentum and uh, potentially uh, be able to bring us to a game five. I also like can imagine it's a bit frustrating to be in a situation like where's Gordy, where you're in a position where, you know, you're just one game away. You're just, you know, you're so close to closing out 3-0, but Golden Guardians or that your opponent has found something out. Like, I, I just feel like for me, that would kind of like screw me up a little bit potentially. But hopefully, whereas Gar G Gordy has been in this situation enough times that they don't let this affect them. But Golden Guardians heading into Imperium Domain, can they tie it up and... Yeah, I feel like at this point, all these players are experts, right? Like all the people on Where's Gordy's, all the players from Where's Gordy's, all the players from Golden Guardians. I mean, these guys are tournament veterans. At this point, if they can't take a loss, then I don't really know what to say. So <laughs> hopefully Where's Gordy can shrug, shrug that one off because, yeah, they, they were definitely winning for a majority of that game. They were right at the finish line. Absurge had no mana, no cooldowns, nobody had anything. And unfortunately, just a bad string of events. So I think after a game like that, that's where you kind of just shrug off, um, you know, that loss and just, you know what, go next. Just forget about it. You know, we played well. I don't think there's anything that they, I could really point out uh, where the mistakes were. Uh, my big thing is I wonder what Golden Guardians is going to adapt here because I do kind of feel like at the beginning of the game, they were playing a little too passively uh, for my liking. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really like giving the Mage Lock um, room to breathe. I don't like Flop being able to sit down and drink and, you know, blizzards being put down and just you know full cooldowns uh resetting for the mage lock because there's a lot of short cooldowns that you know, mist weavers and demonology warlocks and fire mages or sorry frost mages have available to them um with like alter time and coil and if every single time you make a push you're met with those cooldowns uh it becomes increasingly difficult I, I feel like the best thing golden guardians can do is kind of just go for it um so they keep up the pressure you know and where Gordy slowly runs out of those short cooldowns yeah, you have to kind of get through that first layer of micro CCs to then actually get to your target, to make them use their mobility, to then finally close the gap and actually get to the target and force those big cooldowns. So there's multiple layers here. You know, have to get through the micro CC layer, then you have to get through the mobility layer, and then you have to actually get onto the target. And if you're healthy at that point, and if you can actually stay on the target at that point without, you know, being forced off of, you know, because of a tyrant or something like that, that's when you're going to be able to find that pressure. So I completely agree with that, Ben. I, I think... Uh, for Golden Guardians, they needed a little bit of confidence. Hopefully, that win actually got them that confidence that they needed, and you know they kind of uh, you know wake up a little bit here because I, I do agree with you. You know the gates have just opened. There's no dampening like really stacking up aside from you know just the ten percent that uh, you know is there by default and uh, just uh, immediately playing passive and maybe respecting your opponent too much. Uh, that can definitely play into their strategy because before the gates started, uh, you kind of mentioned that. You know, where's Gordy? They want to get to the late game. They just want to survive, 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 and then navigate through and get that win. So uh, I feel like it just plays into that win condition. Yeah. In my own experience, the, the scariest Cupid Cleaves are the ones that literally just are full gas the entire time. They just run you mm -hmm. down, keep you on the defensive. So I'd like to see that from the Golden Guardians in this one. We'll see what Where's Gordy can do as a response or how exactly it's going to play out. This is a very large map, so... It, with K, I could honestly see him on the rep out and kind of struggling to get to his target. Um, if he's getting knocked away and ring of pieces and tiger's loss uh, onto wealthy man, it can be really difficult. So I think swapping between both the mage and the warlock is a good idea for Golden Guardians. Um, but I think a lot of this is just going to come down to how much uptime can Wiz K get in this match. Yeah, and uh, that's going to be, you know, the, the the name of the game for Where's Gordy as well. How much can we deny Whiskey in this match? Whiskey is just not going to have a great time uh, on that Retribution Paladin. He's going to have to, you know, kind of navigate through fire and frost and uh, try to make his way to his target and actually be able to uh, make sure that he sticks there. And if they can, also shut down some of those drinks. Uh, that will give them, you know, a potential win condition later on, you know. It's hard to do because at some points you kind of just have to reset a little bit against the Mage Lock. But if they can make sure that Flop doesn't get those big mana resets that we saw, well, all of a sudden Abstage actually wins uh, the mana fight because a Shaman is more efficient than a Mist Weaver. But the Mist Weaver obviously paired up with the two Wizards. They're going to have more windows to kind of drink. We saw them shut down a couple of those drinks uh, in that last match, but... 
We also saw a couple sneak through. And if just one drink sneaks through at the at the wrong time, it can be absolutely devastating if you are the Golden Guardians. So those are definitely some of the things that they're going to need to uh, keep in mind here uh, as we are about to enter here on Imperial Domain. Yeah, hopefully Excited soon. for this one. You guys are watching from home. I just want to let, interject and say, like, you know, these two, these players do have delays if they want to use it. So usually we're just waiting for the games to actually set up. But go ahead, Ben, take us away. A wealthy man's actually making a little bit of an adaptation here with his build. He wasn't mm. playing Ring of Fire, um, mm -hmm. or so loses some of that poke damage. But finally, he's going to be locking that in, which I think is a good decision. They can keep them back at the pillar. I, I, I just think having that extra damage. It is a lot of damage. It can be like one of your highest damage in the arena. Uh, it's definitely worth it. So going for a little bit more overall damage, but Absurd, Jellybeans, and Whiskey, they are going in. They are getting aggressive very early on in the match. And it looks like they've changed targets. They want to go after Cubsy here uh, in this match so far. Yeah, uh, so uh, Wealthy Man was playing Netherwind Armor and Precog. So most likely he kept his Precog and dropped his Netherwind Armor. Uh, or actually, the, yeah, I think since he's playing against the Shaman, he kind of has to keep the Precog. So uh, Wealthy Man probably going to be a little bit more squishy, but he's going to have a lot more damage, you know, when they're at the pillar. And also when uh, Wealthy Man's making more food here for the boys, uh, kind of just getting ready for a feast here. And uh, last time he made that table, they were able to get the win. So maybe it's just like a lucky ritual that he does. Not quite short but they do finally get a trap here onto flop into an intim stun there and they do have a decent cc chain actually going after flop quite a bit here as well just poking him a little bit and Waterman, i think making the right call there with his build changing over uh, to more offensive talents as he is completely free in the match Cubsy so far actually feeling the pressure from whiskey and uh, whiskey so far is having a good time you know uh, staying onto that warlock and if they can remain on the warlock jelly beans just kind of staying at the pillar letting his uh, pets do most of the work and uh they can continue this you know for a while they're gonna run flop out of mana or cubs out of cooldowns it's a very effective strategy so far and uh, if they can push in and get some crowd controls as well that would be fantastic they go for the hammer of justice on the cubs but no crowd control on flop so he just dispels that for free Demonic Circle placed for Cubsy. Stun on the Whiskey, kind of around the pillar. Absurd's not going to be there to be able to get those heals out. Caught up in a paralyzed double leg sweep by Flop as he repositions. Actually, they just tap target real quick to Wealthy Man to get themselves a nice life cocoon there. So good pressure so far from uh, both sides. And I would say so far, Golden Guardians having a much stronger opener here. They can shut down Flop's drinks, and I can see them winning this game. Yeah, playing a lot more confidently in this matchup. Full Hammer of Justice lands on a Flop. Well, it's gets caught into a stun himself, but it looks like he will be okay. Scattershot comes in from Jellybean's Beautiful Fears from Cubsy. Shuts down a lot of that incoming damage. And this is what you do is Mage Lock. You just run on run in circles. Just try to create space from the Ret. If you sit there and tank the Ret and the Hunter, you will inevitably lose. So it's just all about making space, running away from the Ret, fearing him up, keeping snares on him, knocking him away, doing everything you can to survive. Whiskey trying to get uptime once again here onto Cubsy, but he gets Mortal Coiled away, but a full Polymorph lands on Absurge. This is where Whiskey could be in a little bit of trouble, but looks like he's just going to trade the Shield of Vengeance. That should be enough for him to survive as they continue to make this push onto Wealthy Man. And there's just so much more pressure in this match from the Golden Guardians. At the same time, though, Whiskey's getting low as the Divine Protection, opting not to trade it just yet. It just got off cooldown, getting feared up once again here by Cubsy. Wealthy Man on the other side of the map going for Shifting Power, but looks like he will be able to survive nice altar time and barriers finally getting in line of sight of flop who should be able to top him off here uh, on that misweaver monk yeah and flop really wants to drink at this point he's already down to about 35 percent mana and abster still has plenty to, plenty to work with wealthy man trying to pressure them off now with the icy veins but not finding too much pressure just yet whiskey actually does drop quite a bit here shadow fury coming out there onto whiskey and jelly beans earthen wall totem trades for absturge whiskey trying to push in here but still taking a lot of damage not feeling too confident flop did try to sneak down for a drink there but jelly beans does send his pets over over onto flop and now once again jelly beans though finding himself in a tough situation here behind the pillar absurd has a lot of catching up to do he actually just loads up the stormkeeper and goes for some damage here instead of healing uh, up his boys but now finally they go for that push as flop is threatening with the drink once again more alcohol coming out into the axe toss whiskey gonna be trinketing out of that one there with his human racial trees out the shield of vengeance but is that gonna be enough here no big overlap right there the spirit link comes out for absturge and the divine shield for whiskey that's gonna be a big opening here they swap over onto absturge as well get the astral shift so don't think absurd is going to be a great target here usually just astral shifts like that after
after the Spirit Link just to save some mana so he doesn't have to heal himself back up too much later on. But that could be an opening as well. But Wiz K right now going to be a very exposed target. Having to trade out that Divine Shield so early is definitely going to hinder their offense. He has that second bubble as well. So he does have the blessing of spell warding. So that is like a, something he can keep in his back pocket as long as he can stay on target. And you look at Flop's actually burning through quite a bit of mana with this strategy. So he's trying to stay ahead of the damage, getting up those enveloping mists, but that can be quite costly in terms of how much mana uh, you actually expend. So let's see what the Golden Guardians can do. If they can keep up this push, they're just all nonstop. And this is exactly what you want to see. This is what I was talking about. Constantly looking for damage in the match. Never really giving Where's Gordy a moment to breathe in the match. But Wealthy Man still has both of his ice blocks. Comes to putting a lot of work right now on that Demonology Warlock. Jelly Beans in the back line. Just trying to avoid the fear if he can. Uh, the fear lands onto Absturge and once again, Whiskey is getting kited. He gets caught into an axe toss. Wealthy Man and Flop just kiting as far away as possible. Beautiful root there by Absturge with that Unleashed Shield. But here comes the Tyrant. This is what they need to control. If this Tyrant gets a lot of value, it's going to be lights out here for Golden Guardians as they line a sight. And this is exactly, I think, what they need to do. This is the moment of the game where I actually fully support <laughs> being scared of the match. Uh, the Demonic <laughs> Tyrant is basically a fourth member of your team. It does a lot of damage, um, so you have to avoid oh. that. But... When you're sitting here at the pillar right now, you can see Flop is able to recover some mana, and that is the, the added advantage that Flop has in this match. If we see the Golden Guardians ever pull away, Flop's going to drop combat, recover some mana, and put his team even further ahead. Yep, and that's really the moment that they needed right there. Just get a big, powerful push like that. And honestly, if they still had that Divine Shield, if they still had that Spirit Link Totem, they could have stayed and pushed through that Tyrant, maybe CC. They've been Whiskey right now. It's Blessing of Spell Warding coming out there in the nick of time for Whiskey. He's got no cooldowns left right now. Mana lead for Flop. No cooldowns onto Whiskey. Absolute with no Trinket. I don't think it's looking too good right now. They still have Life Cocoon. They still have Trinket on Flop. They still have Cubsy with a lot of mobility left. He still has Unending Resolve as well. well with two ice blocks there really isn't any opening right now for where uh, for the golden guardians and i think well where is gordy just a couple of setups away here potentially from getting the win here and moving on to the semis knocking the golden guardians down it's match point how is the golden guardians navigating through the situation still have you know 45 seconds or so left on that divine shield for whisk they need to get a cooldown before that happens so they can use that to actually close out the game but they also don't have too much mana to work with who are they going to go after they go after wealthy man right now he's caught in the back line whisk stunned up right now cubs are pushing for the win can he find it he whisk pulls back here to his team and that's immediately going to be a drink for flop as soon as they do that and right now, he's going to be feeling very confident there. I do think in the back line, he is already sitting down. His mana is going up a little bit short, slowly and shortly, but they do manage to shut it down. And he will be using uh, that uh, kind of Mistweaver cloak as well there in that exchange, kind of anticipating a potential swap to him. Now, Flop going to be repositioning. Ring of Fire is down, and they have them pinned at the pillar. Stun onto Abster. Jellybean trades out the turtle. Oh, and the Golden no. Guardians might just go down right One here and now. Ball. It's it going to be risky. Oh, that is so unfortunate. He was going to have the bubble there in just a second. But at the same time, I feel like the Golden Guardians, they just kind of ran out of steam there. Even if he gets it, he's going to survive with it. But it wasn't looking too good. Like, where's the offense, you know? When you look at the right side of your screen there, they just still had everything, basically, on the side of where is Gordy. Where is Gordy? They dampen him. They bring it to the late game. They get him out of mana. <laughs> they get all the cooldowns out of the way. I mean, these guys have just been doing this. For such a long time and uh the frost mage demonology warlock is looking good i mean uh, both both the frost mage and the demonology warlock are just pretty tanky to this composition um especially when you have a mistweaver that's able to kind of back you up it's just so much healing right now with that mistweaver monk and they just slowly but surely get the cooldowns out of the way from whiz k i do like the way the golden guardians played this one playing a lot more aggressive in the match. It's just so difficult for the rep out and it actually have uptime against this particular team, uh, which really, really limits the amount of damage that they're able to do. And uh, slowly but surely, Golden, or sorry, where's Gordy pulls ahead in this match. And it's at the point in the game where all three of you are just behind the pillar. It's just, it's worst case scenario, right? It's the ring of fire. It's the orb. It's the blizzard. The pets are cleaving you down. And you can see this is just absolutely devastating for Wiz K. I don't, I'm not sure that they would have won in this position, but having that Divine Shield come up and just won, I mean, look at this. Wiz K, yeah. his shield is right right no! oh. It's like exactly as the game ends, but I think that was going to be a rough one for them uh, either way. Yeah, whereas Gordy was actually stuck in, in, a, in a match before because he damped in so hard and he's here now.
That's where he was. <laughs> Just stuck uh, in a, stuck in another match that was dampened. He's looking great, at least uh, on the mage. Now that we're finally seeing him, uh, not replaying those arcane mages. So uh, wealthy man, aka Gordy, definitely a, a big player, and uh, uh, he kind of had a quiet season. You know, it was mostly uh, Cubsy and Chan doing uh, most of the work there on the DPS. But now that he's back. Uh, on the well, I'm not gonna say back on the roster, but back you know in the game at least being tagged in. Uh, he's definitely just been, yeah, he's definitely been very impressive to watch. Yeah, most definitely, and that just goes to show you know, a lot of these teams, some of them don't have a fourth player, and some of them, you know, the fourth players that you don't normally see kind of get meme for never playing, but it really shows matches like this how important those members are. Golden Guardians also bringing out Jelly Beans, their fourth member. He doesn't see uh, quite as many games as the other three, but I mean, teams can really make or break it when you have such a well-rounded roster like Where's Gordy does and Golden Guardians as well. But Golden Guardians, they will be moving down to the lower bracket. They're going to face off against Team Liquid. We'll see that game tomorrow. It's going to be the first North American game of the day. Uh, we're seeing NA second half of the day as well. EU is going to be first. But Where's Gordy moving forward here and well done to them. I mean, they, you know, they've always been a really strong team, obviously. Um, in the the cups earlier this year, Ven. But did you expect them to perform like this? This just feels like kind of a new era for Where's Gordy right now. Well, as soon as they found Gordy, they did really good. Correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they won. They won the last yeah. cup with Gordy. I mean, mm -hmm. on the Rogue. So I feel like they've been kind of building uh, building up momentum throughout the mm -hmm. cup stages. Uh, as soon as they actually did find their fourth member, things were looking really good. Of course, they have Chun-Li on the bench too, one of the greatest to ever do it. So this is a really solid roster. I feel like in this particular meta, um, Mistweaver Monks have just been getting better and better, and Flop is one of the best Mistweaver Monks in North America. So it's nice to see that they're actually able to implement that. And I, I've been kind of surprised at the diversity in healers. Um, I think a lot of people thought that going into this, it was going to be all about Resto Shaman, all about the Mistweaver monks, but we're seeing preservation vokers in Europe. We're seeing the casted Mistweaver monks uh, in North America. And maybe we'll see uh, you know, something even different um, coming up tomorrow, but it's just been really interesting. And uh, yeah, definitely where's Gordy to answer your question. Uh, they've, they've been super impressive and I feel like this is a solid meta for them. Definitely. Yeah. And, and also, uh, you know, if you look at the, the the score between these two teams, Golden Guardians and Where's Gordy, they played each other three times in the AWC Cups, and it was Golden Guardians that won two out of three games. So Where's Gordy kind of beating the odds in that sense as well. But here is the bracket semifinals, Luminosity mm. versus Where's Gordy, um, where the winner of that, of course, will be moving to the Grand Finals that we'll see on Championship Sunday. But we do get to see this game, the semifinals, up next. So got two very big teams here luminosity gaming incredible weekend so far along with where's gordy who's just coming off the back of that w so a lot of momentum from both of these teams to be honest heading into this matchup zico yeah absolutely and i, I think uh, this uh, is kind of luminosity's chance here to get a little bit of revenge you know they were winning every single cup up until that last one where where is gordy finally snuck in that win so i think where is gordy they are uh, starting to really show you know how much of a top tier team they are and at luminosity gaming we already know this is kind of the team with a target on its back this is the team to beat it has been for a while here in north america so this is going to be a very very interesting game this could easily be you know the finals as well later Later on, uh, depending on you know if one of them drops down to that lower bracket, and I think mm -hmm. the matchup that I'm gonna be super excited for as well tomorrow is uh, you know we got Liquid up against the Golden Guardians, just two powerhouse teams. One of them is going to be knocked out. You know this is a very very uh, dangerous bracket for everybody right now. You know you can see already how strong the teams are, and they're already on the chopping block for tomorrow. Yep, they certainly are. So make sure you're not only tuning in for this next up game, it's going to be the last one of the day, but for Sunday's games as well. So Luminosity Gaming, can they bleed? We've seen them lose series before, but it's kind of rare. But where's Gordy? They could just be the team to do it, considering how strong they're looking right now. So find out soon. We're going to head to a break. We'll be right back.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are now at the very last series of the day before we head into Championship Sunday. Tomorrow, we're ending the day with North America. It's Luminosity Gaming versus Where's Gordy. Neither of these teams have dropped a game so far. They both have some excellent series as well, Super Tease. What's your take on this? Who do you think is going to come out on top? Uh, well, I mean, the last time these teams met in cup number four, where's Gordy actually won. They were the first team to send Luminosity Gaming in a second place position. They usually get first in absolutely every tournament. Uh, obviously, things have changed. The meta is a bit different here. Um, but where's Gordy seem prepared to deal with this rep meta? And they're dealing with it with these kind of like oddball double ranged comps. They used a lot of Mage Hunter in the past, now Mage Lock. Um, and the Mage Lock looked very confident in that last series against the Golden Guardians. So this might be a series where we don't see a rep paladin i'm very curious to see what luminosity gaming decide to pick in a game number one out of respects to the opportunities and comps that where's gordy have available yeah i think i'm i'm curious as well i mean uh you know we just saw that series from where's gordy they were able to uh, you know beat golden guardians playing the red and luminosity was playing a, a red earlier but quite a bit different tactic though in utilizing that spec fan do, do you have a an opinion i mean what do you, what do you think that luminosity gaming is going to be able to handle mm, so I, in my opinion i feel like mage lock is always able to kind of get away with dominating na well not always but like if it isn't like a rogue shadow priest that's beating the mage lock na has a serious lack of ele elemental shaman so mm -hmm. i think elemental shaman especially paired Ooh. with the warlock is a really good matchup into mage lock so potentially luminosity gaming use that the other matchup i'm a bit curious of is uh, if Rhett is going to work, I feel like Rhett could potentially work with a Demonology Warlock, depending on the size of the map. Um, I spoke to some of the competitors, and they feel like uh, as that composition in particular, um, the Resto Shaman, Rhett Paladin, Demonology Warlock, you do have a fair share against the Mage Lock, so uh, a fair a chance against the Mage Lock. So I'd be curious to see if they do decide to go with that, see if they can win, and maybe they can just stick with that one composition for the rest of the tournament, or maybe they do bring in something like an Elemental Shaman to uh, uh, counteract the Mage Lock that Wars Gordy's playing. Yeah, it is It is weird. That, that, that Like, I'm trying to think of... There's no... Why do you think that is, Ven, that there's just no Ellie Mages in North America? Is it just like an, a, a coincidence, or I don't know what you can credit that to? Ah, uh, I think it's a mix of things. I think one of the reasons why there's not a lot of Ellie Shamans is because they're so like in the traditionally in North America, there's a lot of like rogue shadow priest, like a lot of rogue shadow priest shaman, rogue shadow priest paladin that kind of just runs down the elemental shaman, right? Like, so you don't get full value out of actually practicing that specialization. But I think right now in this particular meta and even going forward, uh, Ellie Shaman is going to be really strong, I would imagine. So. Uh, especially in a situation like this, it would be good for uh, people to have that picked up. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons why you see way less Ellie's in North America is because there's just so many assassination rogues, plus the Shadow Priest, plus the Shaman slash Paladin uh, that you don't really see as much of in Europe. Makes sense. Well, if you want to make your name in the AWC as a, you know someone known for Ellie Shaman, sounds like there's a space open for you. But Let's see what these two teams bring to the table. Game number one, the Grand Arena, last of the day. It's Luminosity versus Where's Gordy. Okay, who's gonna secure the first spot in North America's Grand Finals? Where's Gordy leading with their main composition? Demonology, Warlock, Frost Mage, Mistweaver, and Luminosity Gaming as well, keeping the Rep Paladin in. Drake and Prev on Demonology, Warlock, and Brain on Restoration Shaman. This first game could decide the entire series, given the compositions that are available to both sides are so diverse and ranged. So Drake is just immediately charging in, maybe a bit of a bait on his mount here. Wealthy Man not gonna find the Frost Bolt. Drake immediately goes back to the pillar, dodges the Frozen Orb, and actually navigates around it gets stunned up in the middle of the map. This is the Grimoire Felgar Tyrant go here. Drake moving towards the Tyrant, gets coiled away from it. He's going to use that Wake of Ashes to stun the Demonic Tyrant. Is he even trying to kill the Demonic Tyrant right now? Is it just attacking at the moment? Rebukes its cast. Just crowd controlling the Tyrant, taking it out of the match. Flop repositioning away from Drake. Drake is chasing him down. Hammer of Justice will ultimately connect. And it looks like that Final Reckoning activates onto Cubsy. Drake needs to make sure that he's connecting during that Final Reckoning, getting a bit of damage out here, forcing the Dark Pack. But it's really Prev, surprisingly, on the back foot as it looks like he's portaled back to brain at the pillar and trying to recover drake trying to be a menace here on wealthy man having a tough time though making it to a target yeah definitely let's see what they can do right now wealthy man's doing a really good job creating space he's got that icy veins up just throwing frostbolt after frostbolt after frostbolt Kevin brain just going to be sitting in the back line throwing in the heels throwing in the damage 
Uh, we got a full blinding light finally coming in here from Drake, but he's just getting spam feared by Cubsy. Cubsy doing such a good job shutting down the Rep Paladin, really limiting what he can do in the match so far. Flop's going to be rolling away, wants no part of the fight. They're continuing to just basically play keep away from Drake. Just don't let the Rep Paladin hit anything. And that's going to be, you know, kind of the keys to victory. Uh, whereas Gordy is not afraid. I mean, this team is not afraid to bring it into as deep into dampening as possible to, to give their team an advantage. All right, let's see if they can manage to weather it here and win the game before they get to that dampening point. Because initially, it seems like Flop's team is doing pretty well in terms of pressure constantly. Prev down and a half now, some damage onto Wealthy Man. Windshield on his cast as Brain is taking a bit more of an aggressive stance in midfield. Drake gets a hammer just as big swap onto Flop. Is he going to drop? Drake gets feared off of it, and Flop should survive as he starts to cheat Torpedo away to safety. Relaying his portal, paralyzing Drake for a moment as they actually find a polymorph on Brain opportunity to get a bit aggressive here another polymorph out of that prev ports behind the pillar and now a full fear out of the polymorph out of range of the sanctuary but not enough damage connecting onto prev the way i see uh cubsy and wealthy man winning this game is rep paladin in the middle of the map and deep dampening is their main kill target possibly a swap to brain if he gets into a good position uh, but killing prev as long as he's playing around his portal is going to be very difficult yeah definitely wealthy man blinking into the middle of the map Right now, Flop is in a Hammer of Justice and just good overall damage coming in here from Luminosity Gaming. They're not making it comfortable for Flop. They're not afraid to go after Wealthy Man, go after Cubsy, just keep the car targets pinned down. Drake doing a good job so far, just playing really, really tanky, staying in range of brain when he needs to, popping those defensive cooldowns early on in the match, but the game gets a lot less stable as it goes on. It looks like a Tyrant's going to be summoned here by Cubsy. Drake is going to use his Divine Steed to get over there, putting a lot of pressure on Cubsy at the same time, though. Prev is forced back to the pillar. Large amounts of damage incoming. Looks like Prev should be okay. In terms of mana, both of these healers are relatively even, and that's definitely something to pay attention to in this match. So it can matter a lot, and I think it's going to be difficult for both of these healers to actually sit down for a drink. Flop is playing Night Elf, so maybe wanting to drop combat right now is going to be sitting down. If they can't shut this down, that is uh, a win condition that might slip away from Luminosity Gaming. All right, let's see if it does. As you see a blinding light on a flop, a good opportunity to start going after Cubsy here as they get his dark packed with this Hammer of Justice, cutting through that shield. But Prev is not really winning the trade. A little bit ahead here with his own dark pact as he gets back to the pillar, repositioning his portal. Really has to be aware of where Brain is and keep that demonic circle on the same pillar so that they can move around the map because they're going to get kited quite a lot. And they're getting cleaved at the moment. Dreadstalker pressure. Flop rolls in for a double leg sweep. Prev trinkets immediately, but they might even be able to snipe Brain here around the corner as he's got a healing tide totem ticking. No one's able to snipe that. He got huge value from Brain in this position. Really good totem placement to avoid it being killed off. Drake, Ring of Peace, preventing him from connecting. Does get stunned. Wealthy Man blinks out of the stun. I think he dodged the final reckoning of Drake with that blink. So he's going to reduce a lot of damage from the Red Pal. And he's just going to attack Cubsy immediately. Running towards Flop, Hammer of Justice. Prev is still the one actually falling behind. He's in the Earthen Wall totem. Is that going to be enough to keep him safe to stay in the midfield? He gets counterspelled here on his fear. Now going for the Vile Fiend. Drake gets knocked back on his Avenging Wrath. And Flop's just immediately going to activate the Life Cocoon on Avenging Wrath and make that equal trade. Drake gets intercepted in midfield. Double Felguard on him. Big pressure right now from Cubsy onto Drake. Shield of Vengeance to respond to it as Drake is just marching boldly forward here. Double stun onto Flop and Cubsy into a full fear onto Flop. Good crowd control from Prev in this position. This is a great opportunity to get an unending resolve from Cubsy. They're so close to getting it. Another fear onto Flop into the Shadow Fury, but Flop trinkets out of that and immediately will be able to begin to pick up Cubsy as long as he can avoid being interrupted, which I think Prev is likely saving his interrupt to stop crowd control. I guess he could use it on the Mistweaver. They're winning on mana at this point. Prev going to replace his portal. They do spell lock the Song of Chi-G there on the flop to stop crowd control, but they get a leg sweep anyways, and Wealthy Man is cutting down Prev at the moment. A surprising amount of damage. Here comes the Avenging Wrath Final Reckoning on Cubsy. Cubsy pre-coils the Hammer of Justice and manages to trinket port away from it, so Drake's forced to swap onto Wealthy Man, but he is crushing him at the moment. Wealthy Man looks like he pre-alter timed all that damage, though. Great Great denial from Wealthy Man and Cubsy in that position. Drake got totally shut down, and now it looks like they could go after Prev on the pillar if they want to. Valfine comes in, comes in from Prev onto Cubsy. A lot of damage there. He's trying to kite it, trying to avoid Drake as he's doing a lot of damage. And Wealthy Man's just one between Brain and Prev. Gets a Ring of Frost that's trapping Brain. They might go after Drake with Brain stuck in the middle of that Ring of Frost at the moment on the other side of the map. It looks like Prev is still their main focus as the Valfine comes across onto him from Cubsy. Axe toss onto both Warlocks, shutting them down. Wake of Ashes on Cubsy. Drake trying to ramp up damage, but he's the one falling behind. These Ice Lances are doing big damage for Wealthy Man. 
Yeah, this is one of the most typical strategies for whereas Gordy goes back all the way to the Cloud9 days uh, with Channel, where basically they just try to get as much crowd control on the melee. So whoever's in the middle of the map, like Drake, he's just going to get spam feared, spam polyed, really limit his damage, and then Prev is going to be the main target. So anytime he pushes off the pillar, he's going to be eating counter spells, spell locks, axe tosses, just really limit uh, Prev's ability to get off the pillar and uh, that way you just have a lot more overall damage but at the same time Luminosity Gaming has been doing a really good job actually getting pressure in this match. Flop sitting down for Drake. This is not what you want. Oh no. A good stun there by Cubsy but Drake realizing the situation he's just going to trade out his everyman for himself uh, in order to um, break the stun and keep Flop in combat to avoid the Drake. At the same time though Prev is forced to port away. Beautiful damage here by Cubsy and Wealthy Man. This is what I'm talking about. Just get Prev in the middle of the map Blast him back to the pillar. Don't let Drake get any damage out by spam fearing and polymorphing him. And this is looking like a pretty good strategy here for Where's Gordy. Fears on Wealthy Man. Cubsy falling a bit behind. Gets a coil onto Drake. Gets a fear onto Drake. Taking the Red Paladin out of the match. Really important right now to get into that dampening stage. Flop is ahead. Seven minute mark. We're getting to critical mass here. Uh, where the Red Paladin is not going to be as durable with these off heals. Already that Shield of Vengeance has been cracked and broken down. And they're even going through Divine Protection here. Avenging Wrath, Final Reckoning onto Wealthy Man. Drake needs to connect some damage here with these cooldowns. Alter time from Wealthy Man. Bounces him back in just a moment. So really good timing on that. Flop rolls over. Gets the leg sweep onto Drake. Are they going to swap to him? Looks like there's crowd controlling him for now polymorph out of the leg sweep they really want to focus their attention on prev here uh, but he's just at the pillar it's so tough for them to finish him as that double caster rain playing back with prev as well making sure his totems are protected at the pillar and drake gets feared as he's looking to try and reconnect now into a polymorph just crowd control the red get out as much damage as they can on the prev sniping that healing stream totem in the middle of the map really good to put brain a bit behind here and get him to expend more mana and drake suddenly just blasted Whoa. This is the dangers. If they can't close out the game, the Rep Paladin in midfield is going to be really exposed to these Wizard Cleave compositions. Now he's on forbearance. He's still low. He didn't recover. That could be it. And this looks like a game one for Where's Gordy. Drake is so desperate. Preen manages to get there just in time to get the Spirit Link totem. But now he's caught in a fear. He needs Sanctuary. Where's the Sanctuary? Sanctuary comes out. Shield of Vengeance is broken down. And Drake just can't connect to anything. He's trying to get back to the pillar. Maybe go after Cubsy. Uh, it's not entirely certain where he wants to commit his damage. Double cap totem from Brain. Brain is trying to play offensive for his team. Team. needs to protect Drake here. He's got Grounding Totem available. Blizzard on the pillar going to start pinning them down. They're trying to finish Cubsy. Can they do it? He's got no one any resolve. Big damage coming out from Drake. Stunning up Cubsy. But Life Cocoon from Flop should be enough here for Cubsy to recover. Drake needs to... He's actually getting aggressive. He's running after Flop. Is he going to try and make a little bit of a swap here onto him? Doesn't look like it just yet. He's just trying to survive. Brains in a polymorph. Drake is below half health. Likely forbearance, perhaps. Now he's gotten to a full fear onto his healer. He's still down below half. Is he just going to die to damage? Cubsy lobbing in those demon bolts off to the side here. And Brain has finally got back to the pillar with him. But they're just going to get cleaved. They're going to get AoE. They're going to get whittled down slowly but surely. Where's Gordy? Are chipping away at Luminosity Gaming in game one. Ooh, Drake, he does have the Blessing of Spell Warding. So there's one last chance here for Luminosity Gaming to get aggressive. If they don't win in this next push, uh, I fear for them in this match. His brain is basically completely tapped on mana. Flop is able to recover his mana. Drake's just going to go for it, though. He's got the Blessing of Spell Warding. He's got the Divine Protection, the Shield of Vengeance, everything he needs to make a final push here on the map. Cubsy, how is he going to handle this? We've seen him fall in the past in these situations. It can be really scary, these all-ins. They're actually just going after Flop. Can they take him down? A huge all-in here from Drake. Lightning Lasso is going to follow it up. Can they take Flop down? Diffuse Magic as well as Dampen Harm. Flop is out of there. He's across the entire map. And now if Drake wants to reconnect, he is going to have to cross the entire map to get there. Not an easy thing to do on that Retribution Paladin. Now going after Wealthy Man, but he's got an Ice Block. There's a lot of answers here. Big damage here on the Drake, and I fear he might have a, you know overstayed his welcome here in the middle of the map. Big Shatter Combo's coming in from Wealthy Man. Drake forced back to the pillar. Flop is there for the touch of death, but he ports away. Does not want to mess around, but he gets sniped by an Ice Lands. And that's going to be 1-0 for Where's Gordy. Really close game there, but... I feel like uh, this is this is a close matchup, and I do think Luminosity Gaming stands a much better chance on a smaller map, but winning this game number one for Where's Gordy is just so important. We're going to have to start calling Where's Gordy the exterminators. They're just taking out all of these rets. It, it seems like you're not going to be able to lock in a rep paladin into this team, especially on bigger maps. Like, this is like an average size map. Perhaps it would work for them on, like, the point or something, but... They're going to need something else, some some type of wizard cleave composition. I think their main problem is that Prev in the past has played Ellie, and he seems to be the Warlock as well. 
So yeah. while it would be nice to do Warlock Elemental, you can't really do that because he's playing both of those classes. So m maybe Drake on a different melee, even that doesn't seem entirely Mage guaranteed. Mage Ellie could be good. You really Bring think Mage Ellie? Allium. Mage Ellie could be okay. Into a lock. I, th I think so, yeah. I mean, an Ellie Shaman and a Frost Mage, I feel like the, the amount of damage you're going to be able to do... I mean, we can take a look at the replay and we'll, we'll table this conversation for one second, but this is just Drake trying to make a push and they do a good job. Luminosity Gaming, they kind of know their win condition and this is what you have to do on the rep out and is when you really don't have any cooldowns, you have to kind of play it safe. So they realize they kind of have one final push that they can make, but there's no divine protection. There's no shield of vengeance. They do have the spell warding. So they kind of wait They get the life cocoon out of the way. Now they have a bit of a time. Uh, well, this is a bit fast forwarded but they did wait for the shield of vengeance they waited for the divine protection and then they try to make an all-in play by stacking divine protection shield of vengeance as well as that blessing of spell warding but unfortunately unable to get the kill flop handled the situation perfectly using all his defensives getting across the <laughs> the map as fast as he possibly can until he was safe and uh, at this point drake there's just no way he can really recover um, so I think Luminosity Gaming, they have a few options here. They can go to a small map, which I think will give them a much better shot in this match. Uh, it's going to be much more difficult to actually kite the Retribution Paladin. Or they could try to maybe bring in Seralium. Maybe Seralium could play Frost Mage, Prev on Ellie Shaman, something like that. Um, I, I do kind of feel like Ellie is, is the key to these wizard matchups. Who, who do you expect to play the Ellie if they switch? Prev. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, well, that is uh, another game completed. Here's the damage breakdown as well. And uh, this, is, this is proven to be a tough one so far. Lots of really long and grueling games. It's, you know, it's the last one of the day as well. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we've are we seen both of these teams play today uh, already, earlier today. I mean, what do you feel like that does to sort of a player's mentality, Sid? Uh... I mean, it might be rough. Uh, I think right now, like uh, Luminosity Gaming, they're experienced though in these dampening games. Like they used to be the team that dragged you <laughs> around true. the map every single game. This is like the first time where that didn't work out for them. So if they can find a comp that can drag the fight out better than uh, where's Gordy, then I think they'll be in a really good position. They just, they can't mirror them. Uh, they could actually mirror them. Would, would a Shaman mirror be better than a Mistweaver mirror? If the, it did ultimately come down to that then? Uh, what shaman? What shaman, shaman mage, mage lock, lock versus mistweaver mage lock? Uh, I don't know. That, that's hard to say. I'm not. I feel see? like as the as the as the mistweaver monk, you'd have more longevity in the long game potentially. The shaman might be able to get a little bit of extra offense. You have more disruption. Um, I, I feel like if the shaman version played really aggressive, um, you actually went for crowd control and you really utilized your early game advantage with instant healing and. Or control i could see that winning uh so yeah maybe that's something luminosity gaming does maybe we, have we seen seralium once in any of the cups <laughs> I, I know he's here i was talking to him the other day i was like dude are you gonna play he's like they don't let me play i was like oh. <laughs> they don't let me play <laughs> yeah something like that i don't know but i, I feel like if there's any time to bring in seralium it's got to be now like they could mm -hmm. play mage lock themselves or they could play ellie mage which i think is good On on hook point though, I mean, do you think they've they're planning planning something else? No. Mm. Hook point. Hook yeah, point I think it's worth trying this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, it's worth trying this on the small map. As from what I understand, I talked to I'm not going to say who, but I talked to someone who plays this comp, and he was saying in this matchup on a small map, you have a really good shot of winning. So, I okay. uh, I believe it. All right, well, we'll see if Luminosity can pull it off. I mean, we've said it many times before that uh, with this team, Luminosity, with Kawhi, they're the team that is able to adapt in situations like this. They're able to make those changes um, even mid-series. So we may just see it yet again here on Hook Point. Seems like they kind of just always have a plan. They may stumble a little bit, but they sort of find a way to catch back up. So we'll see what they do with this composition. Where's Gordy already up 1-0? However, Luminosity is the one that locked in Hook Point. Um, and you know, lots of lots of casting classes, range DPS, super T's here on a really small map. I mean, is it going to be a little bit chaotic, or are we going to have another dampening game? Do you think? I mean, it, it, 
It's Cubsy. It's wealthy man. I think it's gonna be a damn game. I feel like it's unlikely, that even if it's a if it's a small map, that oh, this dude, team is me. one that will will die so early. Um, the main reason that I think they're gonna be able to extend the match is their usage of Alter Time and Life Cocoon. They're just immediately trading them on Avenging Wrath. They're not even thinking about it. It's like a reaction time thing. Avenging Wrath happens. Alter Time is up, negates all the damage, rewinds back to full health. If he swaps off of it, Life Cocoon hits Cubsy instead, uh, and they just make that trade over and over and over. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering is if they are going to be able to connect to flop because uh, I feel like that was where they got the closest to a kill a few times in the game uh, was going after the Mistweaver. This is a harder map to avoid being attacked as the Mistweaver. So I I'm imagining Luminosity Gaming. I, I really want them to just be more aggressive. I feel like Brain played a really passive game, stayed back with Prev. I feel like maybe playing on top of them, hexing the mage, taking him out of the game. There's no D curse. Go after the lock, go after the Mistweaver and, and play a little bit more aggressive uh, and the matchup might look better for them. Well, if you guys are, uh, if you get a little bored during this the, the this long game again, Sid, just just uh, start cat start rapping or something. <laughs> I mean, we might we might have to hold we we'll to hold on the to rap that God. for for a special moment. We need it is a very special <laughs> moment for that, I think, or maybe we need approval. I'm not sure, um, <laughs> but. The gates are about to open here in game number two. Uh, this is going to be map favored to Luminosity Gaming. If Where's Gordy can win this here, man, like they might just be able to 3 0 Luminosity Gaming. It would be twice that they send the lower bracket, twice they've possibly eliminated them from the competition. This team has definitely been leveling up. They prepared for the meta with a counter answer with this Demo Warlock Frost Mage. And Prev's already getting blasted here in midfield, really feeling the pressure as Wealthy Man's going to blink away from Drake's Avenging Wrath here. Flop repositioning, doesn't want to get stunned up, managing to avoid Drake and navigating around. Hook points. We see both Wealthy Man and Flop split up and try and get as much distance from each other as possible. Wealthy Man alter times back from that Avenging Wrath, but Drake was waiting for him on the other side of his alter time. Kind of like that Riddick movie where Riddick is waiting for the guy to teleport back with a dagger or something, but doesn't manage to plunge it into Wealthy Man's skull in this position as Brain is crowd controlled. And where's Gordy? This is very interesting. They're also playing way more aggressive. You see them getting crowd control on Brain and putting Prev behind. So maybe they're the ones that are going to flip the switch here on the small map and be aggressive looking for crowd control on the enemy healer. And they might have to. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be able to ever really recover their mana. So maybe they realize they need to win earlier on in the match force pressure early on in the match is dampening isn't going to be you know as big of a win condition for them on the small map big tyrant going to be summoned in here by cubsy though doesn't look like it's actually did it actually go off i thought he got the cast off but it doesn't look like it's actually there i'm getting blasted back to the pillar once again forced to trade out the unending resolve this is just such a good start here for where is gordy a lots of damage here on the prev these frozen orbs and blizzards one of the nice things about the frost mage is every single time you lay down one of those blizzards on uh, you know these piles of imps you can see on your screen it's gonna slowly but surely or quickly oh big hit it on wealthy man uh, as he's forced into the ice block but yeah the blizzard on pets allows you to reset your frozen orb which gives you a lot of consistent damage in the match but this is such a good push here by luminosity gaming can they just take down wealthy man there's no life cocoon available for a moment that's gonna be the restoral from flop a big heal but this pressure this map is looking a lot better here for luminosity gaming yeah, they're able to connect and they're able to get a ton of pressure out here as Wealthy Man is really in a tough spot. And I think he might still be on hypothermia and he's still down at half. Brain is laying in with these lightning bolts from that Stormkeeper. Uh, Drake gets knocked away into a fear. So good crowd control on the Rep Pal and his flops looking to reposition. He gets stunned on his cast. Wealthy Man gets sheared. Is it going to be the second blocker? Oh, whoa, Just death. Luminosity Gaming coming back hard in game two with a quick win. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens when the Rep Paladin has uptime. And that's the power of these small maps. But the thing is, that game one victory for where's Gordy uh, puts him in a really prime position if we do end up going back and forth on big and small maps. Luminosity Gaming is going to have to figure out something on one of the large maps, uh, but this is such a good match for them. Going to hook point, bring it to the small map, making it a lot more, uh, a lot more successful for Drake to actually hit his targets. Uh, you could see the pressure difference in this particular match, although Prev was forced back to the pillar and had to trade some cooldowns at the end of the day. If Drake can actually get to his target, uh, they're going to be able to close out the game. I feel like this is really impressive to be able to end the game against Where's Gordy so quickly. Even on the small map, I wasn't expecting this one to be over. So what could Flop have done towards the end of this match? He gets stunned. Oh, and it kicked him on cast. So because he's interrupted on cast, he can't drink at Life Cocoon. So just that one exact Brutal. moment, just choosing maybe not to cast, holding a global um, in that one position. He probably wasn't expecting it because usually, you know, the Demo Warlocks, they want to stun their kill target. Um, but you can also use that stun as an interrupt. So Prev 
using that multi versatility, switching that axe toss to the healer right at that key moment, but just enough time to finish multi man off uh, in that moment. So really nice play on Prev's part here. I really like that Luminosity Gaming played more offensive. You can see Brain and Prev like in the middle of the map with Drake, uh, as opposed to kind of like sitting back and like, all right, Drake, you go try and do something. And we're going to sit here at the pillar while you're miserable and polymorph the whole game. Uh, so I, I think this is a much better uh, coordinated assault from Luminosity Gaming overall. Might just be that they need to adjust to the matchup. I don't know how much practice they have. I feel like not a whole lot of teams uh, are running the mage lock. Uh, in competitive play right now. I mean, where's Gordy is going to be the most polished one, if not maybe the only one uh, at the moment at this level. So uh, I can only imagine Luminosity Gaming is just going to get better and better as this series progresses. Unfortunate too. I thought Wealthy Man was on hypothermia, but it actually faded. So he had ice block there. Um, they definitely could have extended the game for quite some time. I mean, Wealthy Man either gets his ice block or Flop doesn't get kicked and can life cocoon. You start rotating through those cooldowns for a long time. So Illuminosity Gaming going to be happy to pick up that win. Um, but I do expect, you know, future matchups to go a little bit longer than what we just saw there, even on smaller maps. Yeah, I mean, Super T's kind of already said it because now we're going to be able to see where's Gordy pick a map and they get to kind of make the uh, set the tone of this next one. So it may very well go to a game number five. So if Luminosity has any hopes to win this series, you're going to have to win a swing match, which is, I think is really going to be uh, the the point of discussion here for this team. What are they going to do in that situation? Because uh, it was the it was the big maps that they were losing already. Um, or they could I mean, they could turn it around on here. What do you what do you think their their move is? I mean, can they play that composition on a large map, Super Tease? I just I'm wondering how it plays out. Do they just all sit at the pillar? Because that doesn't sound too appealing. If they play all aggressive, it's probably the best for them. Um, mm -hmm. I just feel like they should bring a different class than a ret on a big map. I feel like there's got to be a better class, um, even if it's maybe possibly a rogue, like roguelock. Um, if they don't have an elemental shaman prepared for this type of situation, I just feel like a, a step kidney is going to be way more threatening than the ret paladin on a big map. Um, chasing Cubs and Wealthy Man flop as they're just all really mobile uh, with lots of snares preventing you from moving. You're going to get feared and polyed on your freedom. Uh, it's going to be really tough for you to connect during those moments. So personally, I would like to see them make a make a comp swap. And they're making a swap, but the Rhett is staying in. So, oh man, this is kind of BM. Not because he's playing Beastmaster Hunter, but because... BM, yeah. but, but, but like... But like you're playing Rhett Hunter that just lost. Like Rhett Hunter just lost. So if they win as Rhett Hunter in the gold, like Golden Guardians see it, it's kind of like a, and it's on the hard map too. It's not the easy map for Rhett Hunter. <laughs> oh, I, I like it. I feel like Prev, like the thing is with the way they're playing this match, Prev is just so, he's having a difficult time. Like I said, you did this spam crowd controlling Drake who's out in the open. He's not getting dispelled. And then you just have Prev on the Demonology Warlock. All of his pets are getting nova and rooted, and he's getting spam counterspelled and locked out. I, I would much rather be a BM Hunter. You don't have to worry about casting. You just kind of, you know, do your damage. Um, you're going to be a little bit more vulnerable. So that's the one downside of the BM Hunter is you're actually going to take way more damage than the Demonology Warlock. But I think in terms of offense, uh, this should go better for Luminosity Gaming. I... I we did just see this composition lose, um, that's for sure. But I, I do think out of the two options, if they feel like they either go with the Demo Rat or the BM Rat, uh, I would rather, I think, see this composition. Interesting. Well, in your mind, Ven, if Prev is the most vulnerable, then what do we want to see Luminosity do to sort of protect for uh, protect him? Ah, I, I think they just have to they just have to go for it. I mean, Prev is more vulnerable, so I do think Drake is going to be a target. But basically, I, th I feel like Luminosity Gaming is going to play it different. Instead of you know Brain and Prev sitting back as their made Shaman combo, um, they're just going. Or sorry, as their Shaman Warlock combo, they're going to have to play a little bit more aggressive, uh, push in, keep the, the you know the pressure up in this match, go after multiple targets, uh, potentially just run down Wealthy Man, make swaps onto Cubsy. Uh, but I think they just have to kind of stick together as a unit a lot more in this match and uh, assist Drake, keep him out of crowd control, and uh, just try to get pressure rolling. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we are on quite a large map. Super Tease, how much uptime do you expect Drake to have? Is he going to have difficulty catching up to Cubsy and Wealthy Man? I mean, fortunately, he's got a lot of freedom effects. 
um he's gonna have two between the hunter and and the rep paladin so like getting up time i don't think it's gonna be too big of a deal as long as the team is playing together it's just at what moments do you retreat i feel like you need to be aggressive as the rep hunter like you got to be mm -hmm. running down the other team if the game goes long you're gonna lose uh, but then there are certain moments in the game like the tyrant if you can't crowd control it you probably need to run away from it um but i do think playing aggressive is going to be very important against this mage lock um, i'm wondering if there's any like in the past we saw like enhancement shaman from seralium and i actually kind of feel like enhancement shaman would be better in this position um than a rep paladin specifically like they used to play enhancement shaman warrior those types of compositions i feel like an enhancement shaman into a caster cleave is actually really good if there is a time to bring it i know i'm sure someone in the chat's gone super is recommending enhancement shaman question mark yeah. but like i've been playing a lot of it i'm remembering a lot of it in the past and whenever you get these wizard matchups it's, it's just a lot of pressure a lot of disruption at the same time so i actually kind of wonder if at all this meta evolves to the point where seralium could be useful the fact that they're getting prev on bm hunter before that point is a bit surprising to me all right here we go let's see what they can do Venocity gaming can they step up the pressure here with this bm hunter prev really showing you know his flexibility in terms of multi-classing here normally playing that shadow priest and moonkin and playing, you know, we've seen him play the Elemental Shaman. We've seen him play the Demonology Warlock. I mean, at this point, he can just play everything on that BM Hunter. They are getting aggressive. Drake is pushing in. They want to get damage rolling here onto Wealthy Man. Beautiful stun onto Flop. What are they going to be able to do? Wealthy Man just sitting there going for Frost Bolts. Do they find an interrupt? Might be able to just one-shot him down and 10% out. He gets interrupted. That's an immediate Ice Block coming in. And for Luminosity Gaming, this is exactly what you want. But Prep taking some damage right now will get topped off here. And those are the kind of pushes you need to do if you are Luminosity Gaming. Wealthy Man already down a block. Yeah, gas pedaling the mage is really important. You never want the mage to just be stationary casting Frostball. That's going to be when the game becomes tough. Crowd controlling the Mistweaver and just running down the mage looks really good right now. As Flop's finally out of crowd control, but he's got two ranged interrupts possibly from both Brain and Prev to deal with throughout this fight. But Brain actually gets fully polymorphed. Bit of a, an error in positioning, potentially. So Drake is trying to run, but he's getting feared on the corner of the pillar. It does get out of line of sight. So Brain should be able to pick Drake up here behind the pillar without having to trade any major defensives. Actually just decides to run out before getting topped off. A bit reckless here by Drake. Brain's just trying to use instant healing to pick him back up. Doesn't want to deal with all the interrupts as he's going to be soaking basically every interrupt in the game. Ultimate repositioning. Drake gets stunned, having a tough time connecting. This is a bestial wrath uh, out from Prev. Ultimate's trying to drop a blizzard. It's going to hit the corner here. Brain's pushing forward, purging off some hots, and be trying to fish for that altar time. Uh, altar time not getting too much value, but just playing the edge of the map. Drake is charging over towards Flop. Hammer of Justice. This is the big moment. Can they connect to their target? Tremor Totem onto the Fear of Drake, but Wealthy Man is so far away from Drake at the moment that I can't imagine he's going to be forced into a block on that trap. He's down at half. It's just Prev doing damage at the moment, but actually kind of... Uh, might get oh. the block. It's the Life Cocoon. Surprising pressure. Prev just solo forces the Life Cocoon here as Drake was unable to make it to his target. Yeah, really good pressure coming in here by Prev. Saying you can't counterspell this <laughs> and just blasting Wealthy Man into the life cocoon, but still has that one ice block available. Wealthy Man just playing the outskirts of the map, but Drake is finally there. All three members of Luminosity Gaming are closing in on Wealthy Man. There's no life cocoon. Do they have any crowd control here for Flop? They're playing on top of him, and this is not what you want. If you are Flop, Wealthy Man blinks away, trying to create some space, but still Prev is all over him. Scatter shot now onto Flop, but it's actually Prev taking most of the damage. Oh. Wealthy Man getting really low. A huge hit of damage here from Drake. This is just such a scary situation. Flop connecting some big heals. Wind shear onto Wealthy Man. His health is just is he gonna up get and down, up and down on that mage. If they get the ice block, that would be absolutely massive. I'm not sure they're going to be able to. Wealthy Man doing a great job kiting so far in this match, but the amount of pressure he's been under in this game has been quite high. And look at mana here, Sid. I mean, Prev is just carrying right now. I feel like Prev is like solo forcing all the cooldowns. Look at Drake. He's finally hitting his target uh, here, interrupting the polymorph. He can't blink away to safety. Drops a blizzard down on Drake and Prev. Ring of Peace bounces them away as Wealthy Man blinks across the field and finally gets a moment to breathe as he is topped off. Cubsy's trying to get some pressure out onto Prev. Decent damage from Cubsy right now. Prev is stunned up for one second and Cubsy closes it out here. Sick plays that trinket link just one second too late, and that will be it. The Luminosity Gaming now match point for Where's Gordy. That game looks really good. I'm, I'm I'm actually curious. I didn't get a chance to see. I'm not sure if you saw, but did Drake have anything? Because he had spell warding there. I don't know when they actually traded that out. He I feel like they had a lot of cooldowns. I'll be real. I feel like they just didn't expect to die. Like Wealthy Man blinked on the other side of the map. Um, not very often that like the Demonology Warlock is able to get that much damage out. But when we see, I mean, the that, replay, I think a lot. 
I, I actually everything. think a lot of that damage was wealthy, man. Like he, really? he went for like, a, yeah, he Frostbolt Flurried, Frostbolt Ice Nova, which I mean, if he had his Icy Vein stacked, which it looks like he does, that could easily be, you know, 200k damage or more. He's so a Trinket proc too, I think. Yeah, so there's a lot of damage available here. Let's they see exactly how this out. They have Trinket Link and they have Turtle. So Prev gets stunned and he can't Turtle is what happens right in a second. So Frostbolt, Frostbolt, stun. And Fear on Drake, he can't spell warding. So, I mean, you could Tremor the Fear on Drake and he spell wardings, or you could Trinket Link. Trinket Link is kind of scuffy Double in that warding. position. Uh, yeah, but I feel like you lose later if you do. I feel like Tremor spell warding probably was the move. It's just not something that's really intuitive, right? I feel like as the shaman, you're usually thinking of tremor to like protect yourself from fear. <sighs> but in this position, if I he feel... was in range, that ring of peace really just messed with everybody. It pushed everybody apart, got a lot of distance. Maybe Prev overextended at this point. Like right here, this fear on Drake. If that gets tremored, he can he can spell warding. Um, but they're just split up because of the fear oh, as well. No. So just really it's unfortunate so much. timing. Every, I feel like that was, I don't want to say that's a lucky by Where's Gordy, but that's definitely, the game was, it didn't seem like it was going in their favor. I mean, you take a look at this, look at Prev. He still has his Exhilaration, he still has Turtle, you have Drake, he's got Divine Shield, he's got Spell Warding, you see Brain, he's got Trinket, he's got Spirit Link, every cooldown. Pretty much every cooldown you could have is available here for Luminosity Gaming, and uh, unfortunately a surprising amount of damage coming in from wealthy man with some big frost bolts a beautiful axe toss with the fear on drake brain is just unfortunately out of position and uh i, I do feel like brain could have saved the day there uh, i like honestly if he just he could have done a few different things if he just tremored then all of a sudden uh drake could help him out with a blessing of spell warding like i feel like that there's definitely an opportunity there for brain to save the day Okay, well, we're taking it to another game. Van, do you, I mean, just with those few things that they kind of could have tweaked in that last game, do you want to see them try that composition once again? Uh, I think on a big map, that's what you play. But I think we go to a small map, Dalaran Sewers, you play Ret Demo again. Um, I get you could honestly play Ret BM. You could play the Cupid on, on Dalaran Sewers if you wanted to. They, they look really polished with this composition. So I, I would not, you know, I wouldn't be sad to see them do that. Um, mm. But I think. No matter what they do, it's going to be a small map and uh, it's going to be some sort of rep paladin shaman uh, plus prev on whatever he's kind of feeling. In your mind, if we go to a smaller map, then what what are the advantages that we see with the demo? You know, Luminosity is, is locking that in. So what are they hoping to gain with this comp um, versus playing the hunter on a smaller map? Um. Well, I think the big advantage for prev is he's a lot more durable, like I said. So at mm -hmm. any point... Uh, a, a nice little benefit for warlocks is they can just portal behind the pillar, right? If you're getting blasted by Cubsy and Wealthy Man, you just press portal. You're behind the pillar and you're safe. So, and plus, you're just you have more uh, damage reduction in general. Uh, your defensives are up more often. I, I just think the warlock is going to be a lot, uh, you know, more tanky in this matchup, which makes it more difficult for Where's Gordy to find this kind of miracle kills like we just saw. I'm looking if any of them are playing Volpira. We're seeing like a, a huge increase in them today. Golden Guardians like playing completely Volpira across the board, but at least in that last one, no, no one was playing that. But I don't know. Is that something you'd recommend, um, Sid? Uh, I mean, in this matchup, I think there's going to be a couple of Volpiras at least, probably Prev. Um, mm -hmm. If Rep Paladins could be Volpira, then maybe Drake um, would also be. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really good for the damage. I don't know if I agree with the Resto Shamans being Volpira. I feel like you get more value out of some sort of crowd control reduction as the Shaman, whether it's like Orc or, or something like that. I feel it's a little bit overkill to have your Shaman also be Volpira. At that point, you're kind of just aesthetically doing it to try and play <laughs> Star Fox Cleave or something uh, on your team. So I, I don't think the Shaman should be. Uh, we haven't seen Shaman targeted like at all. Um, so that, that would be the only case that you'd really want it. Uh, on the shaman i think having some crowd control reduction is a bit better the axe toss is a little bit shorter so you can get out a clutch healer or a link at a key moment um but yeah the warlock is way more durable than the hunter and you can use defensives when you're stunned so if that moment ever happens where it's like whoopsie hunter's in a bad spot and stunned and can't use the aspect of the turtle warlock's like dark pact i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> so you're not, you don't have any whoopsie moments uh with a warlock comparatively <laughs> to a, a hunter in this type of matchup 
Yeah. And, you know, we've seen even today uh, within this series just how tanky they can be. So this could potentially be the final match for Luminosity. But, you know, we've seen them in a situation where it seemed impossible for them before, and they've certainly turned it around. But they're going to have to reverse sweep. We've seen a reverse sweep today, uh, and maybe we see it happen once again. But Warriors Gordy, uh, this, this comp is uh, proving to be very difficult or Luminosity Gaming, but they uh, certainly have the capability to rise to the challenge. So they're swapping back to that Warlock, which we've seen already in this series and hoping to make a comeback with a tie here. And uh, it's, you know, it's it's great when we have teams like this go head to head and we may just see it go to a game five, but it's been an incredible day of game so far and it'd be a, a great way to end it, Ben. Yeah, I mean, definitely. We've, we've talked about Luminosity Gaming in the past. When they're down in this situation, this is when they, they're full power. So we haven't seen them full power until this moment today where they're down, they're on match point. This is where they level up and it's the most difficult to take them down. That being said, Where's Gord is the only team that's been able to beat them, I think, in the Cups. They were the only team that actually managed to beat them in a series um, and take away you know, them winning first place four times in a row. So uh, I think that's um, that speaks a lot to Where's Gord and their strength with this composition. But that last game was incredibly close. And I feel like if we maybe saw it play out just a little bit different, that could have been a win for Where's Gore or for Luminosity Gaming, and that could have been the swing match to put it in their favor. Um, so this is a really close series, and I, I still feel like it's going to go the distance. I feel like we're going to be going to a game five with this one. Yeah. No. I mean, throughout the the cups leading into this weekend, Luminosity Gaming they had a pretty insane win rate. They played sixteen series overall, and I don't. I don't know if you guys can hear that beeping. Sorry, something's going off in my kitchen. But uh, 13 of those, they ended up winning. So that's an 81% win rate. And that's just, that's huge numbers. That's unprecedented in AWC. But where's Gordy? They're just, they're facing them straight on and, and really making it happen in the series. I mean, where's Gordy? has been really impressive uh, over just the past couple of weeks as a team. Like, uh, I feel like we were just talking about in previous turns, like Flop broke his arm. He had to figure out how to play again um without his arm and like heal over time uh to get back into form and and now here they are in the in the grand finals for north america and, and they're holding you know the debatably the best team in north america for a very very long time luminosity gaming on match point potentially sending them to the lower bracket before they make it to the grand finals so this would be a, a very impressive feat if they are able to pull it off however dalaran sewers will be a very difficult map uh to do that on since it is so small so narrow we saw the golden guardians they pulled off a win against where's gordy on this map so and Luminosity Gaming, I feel like they, they understand this matchup. They know what they need to get done. They won so quickly on hook points. So they're going to be really aggressive here. This could easily be a game five between these Titans. Uh, no doubt about it. Five seconds left before the gates do open. Can where is Gordy close it out? Close it out with the three one, or is Luminosity Gaming going to be able to battle it back here and tie things up with the Retribution Paladin on the small map? Let's see if they can do it. Right now, going to be connecting on to Wealthy Man. Keep in mind the way that they did win was taking down Wealthy Man uh, in game number two. But they kind of fumbled. They had a lot of cooldowns. Wealthy Man had his Ice Block. Flop had the Life Cocoon um, available to him. So we'll see if Where's Gordy can clean up their defense, bring the game to the late game, which I think is where they're really going to sell. All right, here we go. Cubsy in midfield. Tyrants are out. Drake getting spam feared, trying to make his way over to Wealthy Man. Rebukes him on Frost. Dodges the Wake of Ashes there with that blink. Really good blink by Wealthy Man. Uh, Drake is next to Flop. He's going to go for a stun on him. And then just jump right on Wealthy Man, chunking his health there for a moment. But he's got that Ice Barrier up. He's used Greater Invis for the damage reduction. And he's going to be able to tank the rest of that quite easily. Flop repositioning. Cubsy playing bottom side, trying to bait Drake to jump off line of sight. He does get leg swept here. I wonder if Ring of Peace could be good on this map for locking the Rep Paladin off the side on maybe one of these staircases uh, in the near future. Get a really good position there. Because that is that Ring of Peace is one of the reasons Flop's team was able to win earlier. There's that Ring of Peace preventing Drake from connecting, blocking off that entire corner as Drake's trying to bounce between it, but it buys enough time for Wealthy Man and Cubsy to reposition. Definitely. Let's see if Drake can actually get to his target right now. And uh, one of the really good things here for Cubsy on that Warlock, we haven't really talked about it that much, is it's something you can't really tell. You don't notice it, but one of the good things about Warlock in this match is having that Amplify uh, Curse of Weakness for the Paladin. So when Drake wants to get burst down, if Cubsy's able to actually, there's a bit of a mini game where Cubsy wants to get that curse up. And if it stays up, it's really difficult for Drake to actually get 
burst out on that Retribution Paladin as it completely removes this critical strike. Uh, but if it's an immediate dispel by Brain, then Drake can actually get that damage going. So just a little mini game in the match with that Amplify Curse uh, available to both Cubsy and Prev in the match and making sure you're getting those decurses uh, as soon as possible. Prev right now getting blasted here in the midfield. Cubsy putting a lot of damage out with that Mortal Coil. But it looks like for now, Brain will be able to stabilize at the same time. The Wealthy is really low. You do not want to greet it. You got both Ice Blocks. Oh, overlap. He's going to make the trade, but that was a big overlap. And that's one of those situations where somebody just trades earlier you completely avoid but reading is not always good and unfortunately that is not good for where's gordy yeah they're in a tough position it could be match point or potentially the end of the match if he can't survive to the hypothermia a couple seconds away from it curse of tongues up a wealthy man decursing that as much as possible spell stealing off some buffs potentially trying to grab an earth shield uh, for himself in the future drake gets stunned here in midfield both man just lobbing out ice lances. Here comes a coil from Prev. He's got precog, it looks like. He actually walled offensively. Prev's going for the win right here in game number four, and they forced the second ice block with that offensive push, but it did cost the unending resolve. Perhaps Prev will regret that in the near future. Comes he gets a double shadow fury going for a fear. Gets the fear. I think there might have been a second to get a tremor totem down there, but uh, Drake's into a polymer. Prev is isolated. Is it going to come back to haunt him? That unending resolve usage. He's in a good position right now to take zero damage, though. Brain's going to come out of the polymorphs. They're swapping back to Drake, but he's got shield of vengeance. They're chasing down Wealthy Man. They know that he's got basically nothing if they crowd control flop. Wake of Ash is connecting into a big final verdict combo. Wealthy Man ice barriers, tries to reposition. He's trying to stack up that icy veins, try and get some distance with the frozen orb, pinning that staircase as well. Blizzard now on the top side, managing to escape Drake's clutches. Yeah, well, let's see. Right now, Flop's mana down to around 50%. This is about in, it's even between these two teams, and we have seen it come down to mana in the past. So I'm mentioning it. Drake right now reconnecting here onto Wealthy Man as he's looking across the map once again, getting the Tiger's Lust from Flop, giving him that extra bit of movement speed, making it extra annoying for Drake to actually connect. Frostbolt, Ice Nova from Wealthy Man, causing a little bit of burst damage, but there's a Hammer of Justice. Wings from Drake, you know, a lot of pressure out, but this Alter Time Ooh. putting in work. A big swap, though, on Flop! Can they drop him? It is so close! And that is it, Drake, with a huge amount of burst there. That was such a good setup, and that's the thing. I mean, if Wealthy Man's going to preemptively kite all of these setups, you just make a swap, you go after the Mistweaver, he's not there to actually peel, and uh, all of a sudden, Luminosity Gaming ties things up. Very impressive swap there. I love that they saw that opportunity. Everybody else too far away. Close target. All right, we're going to go after you, Flop. Uh, you're in this position. So really good punish by Luminosity Gaming. It gets them to a game number five. It gives them a second chance uh, on this big map to try and correct the mistakes that they made the previous time around. Because offensively, it looked like that BM Hunter Rhett was looking good. They're getting a lot of cooldowns, playing really aggressive. So just coordinating their defensives a bit better could definitely allow them to win this still. Go 5-2, or sorry, go 3-2 in advance into the grand finals for North America. Uh, as we saw Prev playing really aggressive in this matchup, just pushing the pace onto Wealthy Man, making it feel like Wealthy Man was going to be the target for this match, and then just switching gears and going uh, after Flop. This was that overlap um, that almost cost them the game because then Prev went all in. This was after that fact. This is where Flop's caught inside of Fear. Uh, I think they just run in on top of him here at the pillar and just completely KO him. So if he had a trinket here um, from that trinket usage earlier, then he would likely be able to survive uh, as they just start running him down. He Chi torpedoes around the corner. Drake's moving in. Uh, does Prev lay a gateway down at this point? Yeah, he puts a gateway down and offensively gates in. And is Wealthy Man's altar timed? All right, I'm not going to hit you. I'm just going to stay at the pillar. Lightning lasso with brain. Monk got left behind. Nice. 10 seconds away from the trinket. And they're able to secure the kill. So really good awareness. I feel like a, lot, a, a big mistake that a lot of um, lesser experienced players make is they kind of tunnel the kill target. They say in their heads, like, Mage's kill target, I have to kill Mage no matter what. And they'll chase the target into bad spots or hit them into cooldowns rather than, oh, this other target is good right now in this situation, and I need to take advantage of this opportunity and swap to them. So really good awareness by Luminosity Gaming there. Definitely. I mean, this is, this is crazy because I feel like if we go to a large map, we're likely going to see the Hunter once again. And it, the Hunter was looking good. I'm not going to lie. Like, it felt like they were winning that game. So uh, I'm curious to see if they can actually come back in the series. Like I said, Luminosity Gaming, they only get better. Like, when they're, you know, when they're about to lose, they always kind of rise up. And that's when they play their best. So whereas Gordy, I think, is going to have their most difficult game ahead of them here. Um, no matter where they go on this map, as the Hunter like the Cupid with the Hunter as well as the Rat Pound and seem to be giving them some troubles too. Yeah, we made those charts for the, the specs. 
and they're with their strengths and weaknesses. If, if we made those for the teams, for Luminosity, it would definitely be like strength, Ooh. good under pressure. Um, but uh, yeah, here we've got the comms, we've got the maps as well. Sid, you sounded excited about this one. They're not doing Hunter. They're just doing Warlock yeah. on big map. And this is an even tougher map with the Z axis um, of the Robodrum. I'm actually kind of glad where's Gordy are doing this. I think this map is really good for them uh, overall Drake with the sad. verticality. <laughs> Drake uh, is sad. So what do you think about this? Like, should they have done the Hunter again? Are they just second guessing their ability on the Hunter? Because the Hunter was looking really good. Like, Prev was just soloing the game. They just keep him alive for like another two minutes. He's going to kill the mage by himself. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, it's hard to say. I, I, my my gut is telling me that maybe they're getting a bit too confident. Maybe it's just like a comfort thing, like that situation where basically nobody used anything and they had everything. Uh, maybe they don't want to be in that situation where it's like, oh, we're all playing alts and like I'm not really sure about this. Um, but this maybe gives them a little bit more freedom and comfort and safety. They're all playing, wait, playing, they're all playing alts again too, aren't they? Perhaps the first time we've seen Prev on You're a Warlock. You're not wrong. Drake's on like, a ballad and Brain's on a Shaman. Yeah, okay, in a high pressure situation where you're going to be the target, would you rather be a Demonology Warlock or a Hunter? Like, I think most people would rather be the Demonology Warlock, but <laughs> I just... In this matchup? You're going to get spam kicked all game as the Warlock? I don't... I feel like the I don't know. a little bit all more right, chill. Trying to figure yeah, out I feel what... like Sid is the yeah. wrong person to ask that question to, but that's what uh, Hunter's, the Hunter's pretty thing. chill, I feel like. It's kill yeah, command, Hunter's cobra shot, chill. kill command, cobra shot, barb shot. It's just chilling. I feel like it's not really <laughs> that bad in this t in this matchup uh, to play a Hunter. But Frozen Orb all on all of those pets with a blizzard for reset. Drake gets stunned as soon as he's trying to move in. It's game number five. This game decides who will be the first team to make it to the North American Grand Finals. Will be Luminosity Gaming looking to reclaim their throne that Where's Gordy stole from them in cup number four. Will Where's Gordy continue their domination? They're swapping to flop behind the pillar in the Hammer of Justice. Is Drake going to be able to bust through this? And it Looks like Flop has survived that he's rolling away. Now they're swapping back to Wealthy Man, who's looking to reposition, but they're on top of Prev's port. Prev actually portals on top of both Flop and Wealthy Man, so he gets leg swept, and Flop and Wealthy Man are immediately going to reposition, but Cubsy's getting left behind a bit here. Cubsy's actually just standing on top of them. Really surprised to see them just completely ignore him in that position, but now Brain's actually into a polymorph. Could be an opportunity for a counter attack here. Prev is probably the target. They feared at the moment. They're going after Drake, but he's not finding any damage, even despite that full polymorph. Ooh, Drake's oh, caught there in the open. Now. That's going to be Divine Protection. A little bit late, but I, I guess that is the perfect time to use it. He soaks the damage, uses the Divine Protection, and now he's going to be okay. And it looks like Luminosity Gaming, they're playing this a lot more aggressively. Um, I think the one thing about on the Grand is Prev wasn't really pushing the pace. He was sitting back with Brain, but now they're trying to just enable Drake a lot more in this matchup, push. And this is really stylistically similar to how they play uh, the Shadow Priest Paladin Rogue. Uh, where they go in, they get the instant crowd control, they do these setups, they just try to keep Drake super aggressive in the match, and it's looking similar in this one. So I really like kind of the strategy change from Luminosity Gaming, and perhaps this extra aggression will work out for them. All right, extra aggression seems to be the case here uh, for Luminosity Gaming if they're going to prevent Where's Gordy from just dragging this fight on to the point where they cannot stay alive any longer. Uh, but they're still having a tough time connecting here. This Drake's finally getting some damage. Nope, now into the Frost Nova. Curse of Exhaustion snaring him, but still taking a lot of damage. Both the man down. Is he going to have to block even without the Red Paladin connecting? Life Cocoon comes out from Flop, and that should protect them. But that was Trinket and Life Cocoon, which means if they swap the Flop, it might be the end of the match for them if they can get a little bit closer to him and have a stun available. But now it looks like they're switching to Brain even. Brain using the Astral Shift on this switch to himself as he should be able to recover with that. Flops it really far away from the engagement right now. I don't think they're going to be able to make any opportunities with that. Dropping the Unleashed Shield, trying to hold him in place, but not enough. Now the coils onto Drake, keeping him back by Cubsy. Cubsy's just constantly right on top of all of them. Really surprised they're ignoring him. Now they're swapping some damage to him pressure him away from brain luminosity gaming are actually ahead on mana if they can keep up this pace and make sure that they make their trades because they've still got all their defensives they seem to deny flop from drinking and the strategy could work for them yeah ooh, drake what is he gonna do it looks like he doesn't even make the trade brain is there and this is what you want to do against mage warlock you want to push the pace beautiful job here by luminosity gaming wealthy man is kind of struggling in this moment to survive. Flop is falling behind on mana. If they keep up this pressure, if they can stay on top of Wealthy Man, they deny his Frost Bolts. And that's where a lot of the damage is incoming. 
He can just channel out Frostbolt after Frostbolt. He's been building uh, Icicles and Fingers of Frost procs and just getting out a lot more overall damage. We can kind of just swarm the mage. Then he can struggle! Big damage on Wealthy Man. He's greeting it, and that's the Ice Block. He gets the first Ice Block out of the way. Now making a swap here onto Flop as he portals away. Wealthy Man's still in some trouble. He is not out of it just yet. Potential blinding light here on Flop. No, Flop rolls away. He's in a good position. Trades with the Life Cocoon. I don't know if that was needed, but playing it really safe, but now they don't have the safety net. Luminosity Gaming, this aggression is working out so well for them, and Wealthy Man just cannot get away from Drake. So this is looking like a rough game for Where's Gordy. They were they had the lead. It looked like they might be able to do it, be the first team to make it to the Grand Finals, but now things are starting to unravel for them. Flop looks like he was trying to drink there, but Brain is right next to him. He's not going to be able to. He torpedoes back into midfield, but Wealthy Man is still stuck behind. He tries to blink away here, rocking that uh, Alter Time now, knocking Drake away with it, soaking some hits, but I think Brain is going to be able to purge that off. Brain is just mashing purge, playing really aggressive, trying to push the pace to force this second ice block. Tyrant is available for Prev as soon as he can get that onto the battlefield it's likely going to be very scary but they want to make sure that Wolfman Man won't be able to easily slip away from it but Prev is now finally feeling some pain as Flop is rolling into the midfield looking for crowd control gets paralyzed he's not going to overstay his welcome though he avoids the fear but now they're switching their attention to Drake is he going to be able to survive here Shield of Vengeance is about to break as he trades Divine Protection he's charging in towards Wealthy Man Lasso holds Wealthy Man down but it looks like Drake is the one in trouble Whoa. Coil into stun and Divine Shield has been forced that push just put Where's Gordy back in the game yeah, definitely. So that was a really good push there by Where's Gordy. And uh, I think getting that counter pressure onto Prev, forcing him kind of back, and then kind of splitting up this aggression that we're seeing from Luminosity Gaming. I feel like if they can force one person to at least run away, then you leave Drake as kind of an exposed target as Brain is forced to go heal Prev. But once again, Luminosity Gaming there looking to make a push. Brain gets interrupted there by Wealthy Man. And this could be the damage they need here onto Drake. What does Drake still have available? Looks like he does have the Blessing of Spell Warding, but Forbearance is just for a little bit longer. So once that Spell Warding is available, Drake's going to be feeling pretty safe. Rain as well also has a Trinket Spirit Link, so there are answers. Flop's mana is doing okay at this point in the game, but as Dampening gets higher and higher, the instant cast from the rest of Shaman aren't going to be nearly as potent, and they get the Spell Warding from Drake. That is so unfortunate. Luminosity Gaming, they are falling further and further behind. And look at Wealthy Man Flop as well as Cubsy. They are just running in circles around the Robodrome. Ooh. Lap after lap after lap. Drake could potentially go down here. Here's the stun. Do they have any crowd control on Brain? It looks like they do. This could be the Spirit Link, Trinket Spirit Link. And all of a sudden, Luminosity Gaming has nothing left. They've used everything to get to this point. They still need to get through Greater Invis. They still need to get through Ice Block. They still need to get through another Life Cocoon. And Flop is drinking. He's chilling in the back. If he gets mana here, I think this could be easily game over for Luminosity Gaming. They could even switch to Brain and just poke some damage. He's struggling to heal himself here at 30% dampening the six minute mark. And Drake is going to have no confidence to make a push with no way to immune any damage in this position. So he's kind of just stuck at the pillar at the moment. He's, he's going to charge in right now. He gets intercepted, stunned on his Divine Steed. He's going to lose so much mobility now from that stun. Prev gets interrupted on his Tyrant. Cubsy shutting down the entirety, but maybe he's overextended. He's going to trade out the Unending Resolve, turn it around, get some Hand of Gold Dance, rolling Lightning Lasso onto Wealthy Man. He's pinned by that. Good pin. Now a stun onto Flop. Can they take out Wealthy Man here? They've got cooldowns to trade. It would be super greedy if they go down in this position, but Alter Time soaks all of those hits. Wealthy Man going to go back to full health, and now Drake forced to retreat, but Cubsy's on the right. Wealthy Man's on the left. They've got Drake cornered and pincered at the moment. He's getting cleaved down, down to half. Still Shield Avenger. Cubsy portals to the safety of the high ground. Now Drake is forced to retreat back behind the pillar. Flop repositions. Perhaps they're trying to set up Brain for a drink. He looks like he might be wanting to go for it here on the corner here of the pillar. They need to survive at least to the trinket of Drake so he can trinket Sanctuary. Maybe get a Nature Swiftness out onto Brain. He's trades the Shield of Vengeance as he's making the push here. The opening is quite high. It could still be very chaotic even despite the fact that they are so far behind. Cubsy getting swapped to again here on the top side of the ramp as he is looking to maintain that high ground advantage. Not jumping off just yet. Flop is going to charge in. He's looking for a triple leg sweep play from Flop. And is that going to be enough to overwhelm Luminosity Game? It's putting them so far behind. Earthen Wall Totem, Ancestral Guidance, every cooldown that Brain has left, he is making a trade with at this point in time. Prem gets stunned up. Drake is trying to charge in. His trinket's coming up in five seconds. He's got Divine Shield in 30. Cubsy has nothing here personally. He portals back up, but jumps immediately back down. 
around. Life Cocoon is going to activate. Drake is on the run. He baits the cooldown. He needs to avoid damage. Brains into a Polymorph. Prev gets swapped to in the meantime. He's going to Dark Pact. Cubsy repositions. Another Polymorph onto Brain. Drake just needs to stall. He's got 14 more seconds of that Divine Shield, but Prev is getting punished. He's tanking all the damage for Drake to wait for that cooldown, but is he going to be able to survive? He's still below oh. half. Drake is getting feared in the middle of the map. He's five seconds away, four seconds so away close. from Divine Shield, three seconds. I think with that Divine Protection, he's bought enough time. He's going to trade Shield Avenger, and this is where they need to make a push. They need to get the win in this 40-second window, but they're in shambles. They're all at half health. Are they going to have the confidence to make the push exactly when they need to? Yeah, this is the Icy Veins from Wealthy Man. Frostbolt after Frostbolt. Big damage coming in. Drake does not want to throw away the game. That's going to be the Divine Shield. A beautiful push here, but at the same time, Wealthy Man is low. He needs to be careful. He's got two Ice Blocks and a Rep Paladin on top of him. He's just going to make the trade. At the same time, Prev is getting blasted here at the pillar. Beautiful damage coming in from Where's Gordy. They do make the trade. Life Cocoon almost available here for Flop, but Wealthy Man might go down. Drake, is he going to push the pace? They're going for it. They just want to chase down Wealthy Man, take him down on this hypothermia. He blinks away. He wants to be as far away as possible, but they are just swarming him. Lightning Lasso on Wealthy Man, but Flop in a position to heal him up and also trade the life cocoon. This is just so back and forth, but I think Luminosity Game Link. may have ran out of time. Prev is in so much trouble. Here's the spirit. Where's Link Drake? They do manage to do it at the same time. Wealthy Man gets the life cocoon. Drake is not there, unfortunately, to distribute his health. Prev has not fully recovered. This Storm is so Keeper. dangerous, but he has his unending resolve. Unending resolve is available, Prev. Use it. He uses it at 5% oh, health. Some flop. people coming in for break at the same time. Flop's in trouble, but it is going to be Prev. I think Flop's dead. What a close game. Oh, Tremor and Tremor oh, Drake so out of the fear. Oh, man. Brain's trying to take him out with the Stormkeeper, but it's not enough here. I thought Flop was going to go down in that final second, but it's not enough. Whereas Gordy are going to maintain their streak against Luminosity Gaming, getting to the grand finals for North America. And now Luminosity Gaming in that lower bracket is a shark for either Liquid or the Golden Guardians on Championship Sunday. I mean, that was just such a close game uh, uh where's gordy they played it really well they didn't panic they didn't overlap there uh, at, at the end of that map I, I just feel like this this was such an incredible series between these two teams i feel like if they replayed uh, there's definitely opportunities for luminosity gaming to win as well but this is where dampening just gets so crazy drake managed to hold on to the vine shield for this final power play but unfortunately just wasn't able to get to his target and had to kind of use it defensively but there's just so much pressure here on Wealthy, man. You really got to give Luminosity Gaming a lot of credit for to continue to make these aggressive plays at this point in dampening. Drake does manage to get the ice block out of the way, and this is where I thought Wealthy Man might actually go down. And I wonder if Drake had just stayed in the open and stayed on top of Wealthy Man, if he would have been able to actually reconnect. But Cubsy just doing such a good job playing defense, getting the mortal coils on Drake, keeping him away, portaling in a position, and basically just doing whatever he can to keep Luminosity Gaming at bay. And at this point, Prev is just so low on health. The Spirit Link Totem comes in. Life Cocoon trades out. And even in Dampening, Life Cocoon is just such a huge absorb um, that really uh, Luminosity Gaming is not going to be able to push through. And Wealthy Man, you know, playing really aggressive with that absorb shield, realizing he's not really going to be in trouble. And there's just nothing left here uh, for Brain at this point in the game. But it was still so close. I mean, look at Flop almost going down here. Does how oh we're gonna skip it before we get to the the global where I was wondering how he how he managed to live. I think Drake gets feared for like a second. I'm like, oh my god, Tremor, he might die in the next global. I don't know how Rest of Shaman Rhett does into Mage Lock. Um at that point in the game, 51% dampening, but nonetheless, where's Gordy with a very impressive feat now? This is two times in a row they've beaten uh luminosity gaming so luminosity gaming they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board but this is usually where they uh, get their zenkai boost and they're gonna come back twice as strong if you don't completely finish them off so uh, whereas gordy might be hoping that they get eliminated by another team in the competition in that lower side yeah, I mean, you kind of already said it. There's they're going to be a shark down there in that lower bracket. You can see it right now. They're waiting for a, a opponent in the semifinals, Team Liquid and Golden Guardians. The winner of that one will be competing against Luminosity. So those are three extremely strong teams right there. Uh, you know, waiting to to have their chance to make it up to the grand finals to compete against Where's Gordy. So incredible teams right now. Um, incredible games coming up tomorrow for this region. I mean, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for every single one of these series. You know, we're gonna start off the the region with just an elimination round right off the bat, and then we get to see them play 
against luminosity so it's gonna be some i mean definitely if you're liquid or golden guardians you're not happy about this result i feel like you probably wanted to delay fighting this team for as long as possible but in the finals there's no easy games right like <laughs> every single one of these teams is capable of beating each other they all are very prepared They're all playing you know the best compositions so i feel like you want to win you got to beat everyone that's what it comes down to so uh, all these teams just need to kind of uh, walk in, get their practice in tonight, make sure they come fully prepared for tomorrow. Uh, but I, I expect there to be some really intense games tomorrow as well. Yeah, I think so. Especially, uh, you know, we saved all of the elimination rounds tomorrow. So uh, for tomorrow, we, st we didn't see any teams go home at all today. It's all still the, the four teams from EU and the four teams from NA that uh, we still get to see play tomorrow. Just some will be starting off in an elimination round. Here is the schedule. We have got EU first. It's my way versus Admirals Esports to kick things off in the EU region, Zico. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, an elimination series. We're going to be starting off uh, that way. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, Admiral Esports coming from the depths of the gauntlet. Can they make a deep run? Uh, can my way kind of find their footing here? They came in as the third seed in Europe, uh, kind of had a miracle run uh, in that last cup and managed to kind of snag that spot. And then, of course, the agents waiting uh, patiently. And, you know, in Europe, it was a lot. Of, I feel like in general today, there was a lot of surprises that came out, you know, a lot of compositions that really performed that we kind of didn't expect, you know, a lot of dragon healers uh, in Europe, you know, the mage lock as well uh, from Where is Gordy and, uh, you know, that NA lower uh, as well that we're going to see the first NA game tomorrow is going to be absolutely insane. Golden Guardians versus Team Liquid, you know, old time rivals going at it once again. Uh, fighting to you know the bitter uh, you know end uh, so that's going to be awesome to see as well and where is gordy bringing in the heat today and actually making it all the way to uh, to the finals you know the first team that actually qualified so uh, it's been quite a rise for this roster uh, definitely had a phenomenal season and i'm just excited to see all the games tomorrow for sure yeah, they certainly did have I mean, extremely well competing against teams like Luminosity even and sending them to the lower bracket. So uh, we'll see if that rain continues tomorrow, but make sure you guys are tuning in. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in today. Let us know which match you are most excited for in the comments. And with that, we are going to see everyone tomorrow. So make sure you're following us on WoW Esports if you'd like some updates. And we will see you guys here at the same time and same place tomorrow at twitch.tv slash warcraft we are also on youtube and we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m 